mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here today is evidence of that. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of DCF Live, a very special edition where I'm going to be painting for the next uh, probably close to eight hours. I'm going to be working on a anime character piece. Today, I have a pair of Dragon Ball themed Jordan 1s. Uh, the two shoes are entirely different, as you can see. I have four different characters. We have a character on each side. Um, I'm through two of them, about 99% of the way done. Another one of them, I'm about 75% of the way, but today I'll be working on this Janimba character, and all I have laid in is essentially the rough color blocking for the character. So thank you guys for joining us. It has been four years, four years, hard to believe, since our last painting live stream when I did a 10-hour stream and I was painting the Chunky Dunky Jordan 1. So again, thank you guys for joining and hanging out with us. Hopefully I am coming through loud and clear. Let me know if I'm loud enough. Let me know if you guys are able to see me, hear me, and hopefully everything's going good with our stream. Uh, I have my wife here with me today producing, so big shout out to her behind the camera, making sure that everything goes nice and smooth, just like she was here thankfully last time. And uh, that was a really fun stream. So I'm super excited to do this. We'll let everybody gather in for the next couple minutes. And then um, I'll get into the painting. So I'm also going to be working on a YouTube video for these. Probably uh, a lot of what we're going to be talking about today when it comes to painting a character and things like that. I'll sort of be condensing down into the YouTube video. So looks like people are saying we are... Sounding good, looking good, super exciting. If you guys don't mind, go ahead and drop a like on the stream, all right? Really helps. Uh, hopefully get the word out there today. And uh, looks like we already have 38 people. How many likes we got so far? 20 likes so far I see on the stream. Let's go ahead and drop one real quick and we'll get started in a couple minutes. So I'm gonna show you guys um, sort of where I'm at with some of the pieces. Would you mind going over to just uh, main camera, please, Brittany? Yeah. So here's where we're at with this shoe. I have, um, I believe it is like Super Boo Gohan Absorbed on the outside of the left shoe that you can see with this cool sky background. And then on the inside of the shoes, this is, that is either Gogeta or Vegeta. I can't remember which one. I believe that is... Uh, I want to say that is, oh, drop it in the oh yeah, let us know in the comments <laughs> if you know, it might be, like I said, it's either Vegito or Gogeta, and, uh, let me go ahead and get a little closer, so these are close to probably 90% done, and a little bit closer over on this one, Vegito, Vegito. oh, there we go, there we go. So really happy with how those turned out. So if that one's Vegito, that means that this one is Gogeta. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and here we are. I just have to do um, some touch-ups in the hair, and I have to get in his eyes, mouth, and nose. So he is progressing along nicely, and here's what we will be working on today, the Janimba character. The what character? Janimba. Janimba? Thank Janimba. Janimba. Crazy. Yeah, it's uh, it's unless you're unless you watch it, it's like learning all the Pokemon names, you yeah. know. It's it's funny learning them all. Um, so you can kind of see some of the roadmap on our line work stencil. Now that's a video that I made uh, last year. It was a two minute Tuesday for a, it was a Naruto character, and uh, the video on which I did the line work stencil. So definitely go ahead and check that video out if you haven't already. Um, and that essentially is how we got to this point so far. So really stoked with how this background has turned out too. Um, I feel like when I initially saw the source material from my client, I was really, really excited looking at the background just because it, it was something that, um, I just sort of enjoy creating very busy, very colorful, 
um, sort of just textures and cool patterns everywhere. So I'm really, really digging how those uh, turned out. And I know once I get the character completely set on there, that's when these will really, really come to life. So again, thank you guys for joining us. We got 50 people watching already with us on this beautiful, today's Tuesday, right? Beautiful Tuesday morning. Yes, March what? March 19th? March, March, March 19th? I thought that's the 21st. No, it's today. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought that was on the 21st. Happy spring, everybody. Yeah, happy spring. Happy spring. Um, let me know. Let us know down in the comments. Are you guys painting alongside us today? Are you going to be um, working on something, having us in the background? Or what are you guys, some cool projects that you have going on right now and things of that nature? These I have been working on for quite a while. Um, surprisingly, these have taken me... I'm just incredibly slow, so that's why even going into this, I am unsure how far, if I'll actually be able to complete the character today. I would love to, um, considering how far we are. But, um, you know, just when it comes to all of the cell shading and then the line work and things of that nature, who knows? It, it, it could be a little bit, but we will definitely make some progress today. But each of these characters probably end up taking me, if I had to guess, probably about 15 hours each. Um, so I've got uh, a lot of my paints beside me and we will get into mixing some of our, uh, cell shading different colors soon. Can you switch over to the character screen? Now, hopefully this looks kind of cool, but I should have, um, the character up here on the screen with me that you guys should be able to see. And, um, I'll be showing you how I mix, uh, some of the colors and whatnot. So right now I just have... A bunch of this main purple made and I'll show you how I'm gonna make those different shades of purple for you know there's a there's a darker shade there there's a lighter shade there and same goes for the reddish orange color and whatnot so Brittany will be uh, producing in the background she'll be able to pull some of your comments up on the screen when maybe we're talking about uh, a topic or anything like that for a little bit and um, yeah so if you guys have any questions I'll just be talking and uh, filling the air throughout the entire stream. So go ahead and drop any questions that you might have or anything like that down below and we will get started here shortly. And don't forget to drop a like on the stream if you have not already, folks. Let's see. What are people saying, Brittany? What do we got? What are people working on? So, Two Kids TV said, thinking about my next design to Sour Patch Kids for me. Oh, that's very, that's a fun theme. I want to see what those would look like. Yeah. I just want the texture of like yeah. the Sour Patch. Yeah, yeah, the sugar. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Was really cool. That'd be cool. Your dad said, Delilah's sitting on my lap watching. Oh, we've got Delilah and Dexter tuning in from their grandparents' house. That's <laughs> awesome. Last time we did this, um, funny enough, Dexter would have only been one at the time, and he popped on the camera yeah, for a little bit. Long yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get started working on my first color here. Uh, this was the main color that I laid down when creating this purple and whatnot. And now I'm going to create uh, my first slightly darker shade of purple for the cell shading effect. I need the color violet. Let's see.
I've seen somebody mention, what is the best type of paint to use when painting shoes? I have used Angelus paint for many years now. There's definitely some other brands that make a solid product, such as your uh, Jacquard, which is already airbrush ready, which is nice. Um, Alpha 6, I, I believe it's pronounced Tarago. Um, I might be saying it wrong, it might be Tarago, um, but that's another paint brand. But I have used uh, Angelus for many years now. It's, it's definitely not the, the first paint I ever used, um, just because when I started, the first pair I ever painted was in 2011. And just when you searched up how to paint shoes online, there wasn't even tutorials, there wasn't guides or anything like that. Angelus wasn't the first thing that popped up. So I just went to my local craft store, my Michaels, and bought whatever the cheapest brand acrylic paint was. I think it was something like Craft Smart or something like that. Those little paint bottles that are, I believe they're under like a dollar each at the time. Bought a few of those and that's how I ended up painting my first pair. Okay, still got to darken this more. More of this violet. Acrylic, yeah. So Angelus is leather acrylic paint. So it's if you're used to working with traditional acrylics, it's definitely a lot thinner than that. All right, we're going to add a little bit of purple now, and I'm probably going to need some dark gray just so that it's not overly saturated. And sometimes once I lay this color down, it's always going to look a little bit different um, in the cup versus once you actually start to lay it on the shoes. So as perfect as it may look inside your cup, sometimes you always have to tweak it just a little bit further. The whole screen. It's good. Okay. Oh, that was probably me when I was looking at my screen. Sorry if we went dark for a sec. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see where I'm at with this color purple. And I will see how much darker I still think I need to go. I'm going to start off working up here near his collar. And I still need to go quite a bit darker. You know, that's a human color mixer. Like those machines at Home Depot. <laughs> Once you... It's... Color mixing is truly just about repetition. And as unfair as it sounds, and contrary to sort of what you're taught, the more colors you have at your disposal, the easier it is. So I know that's so much easier said than done because there's 
so many different Angelus paints, for example, that you think, okay, if I just get red, yellow, and blue, I can make everything. Or if you're doing traditional oil painting, for example, um, and let's say you're painting realism, they'll tell you you only need, um, you know, red, yellow, blue, black, and white, and some type of brown or something like that. Um, and I just haven't found that to be the case when it comes to working with a lot of these types of paints. So it just becomes so much easier the more you do it, and truthfully, the more colors you have at your disposal. We saw a comment by, made by SC, started my journey as a customizer in 2010. As you very correctly mentioned, there weren't any tutorials back then. And that, that is so wild to think about. It's so true. And like from where we are today and how many videos there are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So many tutorials. And TikTok, now. too. It's a... Uh... A whole lot easier which is a good thing i'm obviously all for that i'm glad that it's that way all right we're getting close we are getting close with that purple you know i think if i were like going into cut like being a customizer like not knowing anything about it and like starting it i don't think that i would even take into consideration that i would have to learn like color theory and how to mix yeah i would think like oh i could just buy a specific the colors color. yeah no absolutely not because yeah. it doesn't even look like that when it no. dries sometimes yep. or maybe the color that you're envisioning doesn't even exist totally you know? so totally yeah. there's just so many factors and i mean just for example <laughs> angelus makes limited edition colors that are, you know, as you're mentioning, a very specific, oh, I need a, a certain shade of army green or vault that I want to paint my sneakers. So I just need this one paint. And, um, but it's just when it, when it gets down to it, when it comes, geez, when it comes to something like this, I have used every color imaginable. <laughs> yeah, so when I started, you know, being a broke college student, I definitely wasn't buying. Um, I was just buying what I needed for each project. So an order would come in and I'd say, okay, I need to get this color, that color, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, at the time, all you can really afford is, let's just say the one ounce bottles and whatnot. So that's what you have for a while. And once you know, okay, hey, I'm starting to maybe get some orders of this, or maybe there are certain colors that you use all the time. You're black, you're white, you're light gray. Um, so let me go ahead and instead of buying the one ounce bottles, let me buy the four ounce bottles. And over time, as you start to get more air or, uh, you know, more orders, hopefully you start to make more profit and things like that. That's when all of a sudden you say, okay, well, instead of just buying the four ounces let me buy the pints or let me buy the quarts and things like that that i know will last me quite quite some time and so that is definitely um what i started to do once i was able to afford it Pretty happy with the purple. I think I might want to make it a little bit more pink, though. Are you ready for a question? Yeah, please. From Music CMA. Is the paint compatible with all materials on the sneaker? For instance, I'm planning to repaint several Jordan 3s and 4s. I'm curious if that in, um, Angelus color could be applied to all parts of the shoe. Yeah, so there is different mediums that you might need for different parts of the shoe. So, for example, let's say you're painting uh, fabric 
maybe the sock liners of Jordan 3s or 4s, that's when you would want to add their fabric medium, which is called Too Soft. Um, and then there's other parts of the shoe. Let's just say the back tabs, for example, you know, a hard plastic. Those are able to be painted if you mix uh, another one of their mediums in that is called Too Hard. That's what that medium is for. However, at the end of the day, I still think materials like that, plastics and rubbers, even though they can be painted, I still believe those are much, much, much more susceptible to just your very basic paint chipping and cracking. So I always, even if you end up doing it, um, just be cautious or be careful or be aware that those um, could be a lot more likely to crack or chip a lot easier than if you were to paint the leather and things like that. I think that looks good with a little bit of that pink added. Can you shout out Street Custom Kicks PH from Phyllis, from the Philippines? Shout out to Street Custom Kicks tuning in all the way from the Philippines. We greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. JR Custom, keep up the great work. I appreciate you sharing your knowledge. Now to advance on the mission right here. Okay, yes. There was something there. <clears throat> should be off, so we should. Because I have the Ethernet cable plugged in. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Alright. Um. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Good. I think we're back. Sorry about that, guys. So, color is looking... I actually still wanted a little bit more pink. We need petal pink. Hey, thank you for being my inspiration to start my custom journey. I learned everything from your videos only. God bless you. That's so sweet. Very, very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate the kind words. Alan said, if I have to install airbrush in my basement, do I need to install an exhaust too? Yeah, so you ideally want the airbrush booth connected to, if you have a nearby window, um, something like that is, is ideal. Um, because then you can just connect it to, most of the airbrush, airbrush booths come with a, uh, a, a long hose. So I think it's, it might be six or 10 feet and you can just connect it to a window. Or I actually, can you switch over to, um, webcam you'll you've probably seen it in a lot of um my past videos but i have a dryer vent really long tube that is in the back of my airbrush booth and I actually had a, a build out in my basement connected outside because that's where they used to have some type of gas meter um, as those used to be in the house here so when i was uh redoing my basement and whatnot i was able to just get that connected thankfully because i knew that i would um want to connect uh at least one airbrush booth so it worked out 
really well for me, thankfully. But uh, in the past, just when I was working in a, uh, a spare bedroom at my parents' house, I connected it directly to an outdoor window. But surprisingly, even if you think that there's not that many, you know, if you say you're going to be careful or you're not going to be um, real messy with your airbrush and things like that, you're only going to be spraying at the shoe. Still, surprisingly, those paint particles and those fumes go everywhere. So I highly recommend an airbrush booth um, for anybody and everybody. Let's see. Let's try to lay in a little. I still need a little bit more of this pink. He said, how do you not have paint all over your table? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's all a mirage. Yeah, so right? <laughs> I have these, you can't see from the webcam angle either, but I have a flat. This is um, maybe four feet table. And I have these, this blue one that I'm working on. I have these in a few different colors and I bought them from Ikea. They're really cheap. Um, and they're about an inch thick, and I can't remember what they cost each, but maybe, I'm totally just throwing a number out there, but maybe like 10 to $15 each, and I bought them to have sort of different backgrounds and whatnot for filming and stuff of that nature. So I have a blue one, I think gray, white, and black as well. And so, um, believe me, I have paint everywhere, but I just have these little tabletop blocks almost that I can lay down. And I knew that um, this red and yellow shoe would uh, look pretty good for this stream up against the uh, the blue background there. You also can't know till it dries fully. I am. <laughs> I'm not pulling my uh, super straight lines yet. Jewel says, would you do a video on how to make stencils without a stencil cutter? Thank you so much for everything. I started customizing thanks to you. I just started customizing sneakers, but having big drinks. Thank you. What was her name? This is Jules. Jules. That's awesome. Thank you for that. Um, 
in terms of creating a stencil without a stencil cutter, I didn't have a stencil cutter for probably my first, um, maybe like five, six, seven years. And then when I bought one, I didn't use it for a couple of years because I was too uh, afraid to learn how to use it and whatnot. It's intimidating, it's intimidating when, you've, when you've never used it before. Mm -hmm. Um, so what I did all that time was I did a tracing paper method in which you can transfer any image onto your shoes. And for that method, we have two really good videos on it. Um, and it would be, they're titled something like how to transfer an image onto your shoes. So if you just head over to our page, search that up, you'll see two different ones. Um, the thumbnail for the video that I recommend is you'll see tracing paper on the left side. And on the right side of the shoes, you'll see it's an Air Force One with a very small painting of SpongeBob. And I definitely recommend checking that video out if you haven't already. And that's good for, again, transferring any image on your shoes. If you were trying to do something like maybe a complex or a detailed pattern where you were doing a pattern all over the shoes, that's where I would recommend. Um, that's where it would just be really a big pain to not have a stencil cutter if let's say you were doing like an LV print on your shoes because you want it to be very, um, what's the term, uh, very precise, you know what I mean, the entire pattern. Um, but otherwise, if you're just transferring even a, a character like this onto your shoes, you can absolutely do it with that tracing, tracing paper method. I remember I used to do that all the time. Yeah. There's tracing paper everywhere. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> um, I still need more pink, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Costa found you. He said, hey, Dylan, feel like I haven't seen you paint live in a long time. Excited. Costa, how you doing, buddy? Hopefully you're doing well. Costa joined us for the last DCF experience. It's great to finally meet you. Did he do a desert thing? Was he did like a, it was kind of, yeah, I know what colors you're talking yeah, about. Like, sandy. Yeah, it was sandy yeah. colored and then he had um, some some real cool stencils yeah, on there. Cool. Kind of like a combat theme. Yeah. Yeah, his turned out really cool. That was fun. I can't wait for the next one. Yeah. We got the uh, our, our course video, our course recap video of the last DCF experience is uh, that's going to be coming out soon. That video is well underway. It's almost complete. It has been a, a labor of love making that video as as awesome as possible. I'm really excited for you guys to see this one. Creative Works Custom says, revamped the line work tutorial, question mark? A revamped line work tutorial. Um, yeah, I could definitely see doing a, like another variation on that video just because it was a two minute Tuesday. So it's, you know, more condensed information. Um, yeah, definitely on, you know, when I have another big, big project, something worth doing that type of tutorial on, for sure. I know people want me to do that exact video only using Procreate rather than Photoshop. I know Procreate is a lot more user-friendly or maybe just less scary to open up. So I could definitely see that. Don Rock asked if we're having any contacts this year. Any contest I haven't done one in, it's been a couple of years to be honest, so it might, it might be time to uh, to bring it back. We've done five of them. We've done a, let me try to think of them in order. So the first one was a Halloween horror themed, then we did a Christmas one, then we did a floral one, then we did a video game one, and we did a heritage themed one. So I definitely have plenty of ideas for the next one. I could absolutely see doing an anime themed one. That one feels almost a little too obvious. Could absolutely do a sports team themed one. 
Why don't you guys drop in the comments what you guys want to see in yeah. the next podcast? There you go. One that uh, Jason and I talked about for a long time that would be quite the challenge would be like a line work contest. That's one that really excites me where it's about just utilizing creative line work um for the contest itself how can you create an amazing custom shoe based on uh line work i think that would just be a, a really fun challenge to see come to life City Edition, that's a good one. Ooh, an animal contest. That's a that's a great idea, Patrick. I still have a piece of vinyl from the line work here. Ooh, a 90s theme contest. I'm all for that. 90. I want to see yeah. all the 90s things. Yeah, there's so much you could do with the 90s. Ooh, an Ink Master style. Oh, mm. that sounds really cool, too. If I could just get... I've said it since I started YouTube. If I could just get a production company or something to give me a budget, I would love to do an Ink Master show. Like shoe edition? Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. I just think to do it right, to do it justice, it would need that type of production quality. Not just some fun YouTube video. It deserves, deserves more. Bearded Real Customs, what's up everyone? Hey Jay, how you doing man? Andrew Binder said, yo, man, still working on finishing your old seven-hour stream that you did. Glad I finally get to catch up Ooh, on my one. <laughs> that's awesome. Thanks for tuning in for this one. And I got, could be good or bad news for you, man, but there's a hidden three hours <laughs> on that one for you because that's a 10-hour stream. <laughs> that was such a fun video. It was so fun to do. I have zero clue how that was four years ago. Where did the time go? Truthfully, when you get, uh, as you get older, the time just dissipates. I still feel 18. I'm 16. Jules is wondering if you know of any good stencil cutters that are like inexpensive, someone on a budget. Um, so I would probably buy a used one. Oh, that's in that case, like these things are. I I have one that has been used every day mm -hmm. nearly for years upon years and made thousands and thousands of cuts for me, and. It works just as good today. All you have to do is replace the blades every so often. Um, so truthfully, it is a phenomenal investment. I'm a fan of the Silhouettes, the Cameo line. I want to say the more readily available and probably cheaper um, versions would be some of the Cricut products. I want to say Cricut is available um sort of at, like your local craft stores and silhouette isn't i want to say crickets are available at every michael's so i think they're just more popular um but i know a lot of people eventually end up switching over to silhouette 
So um, I definitely think you can get by picking up a used one. I have a Silhouette Cameo 2 and 3. I actually have a 4 as well that we take for the course. Um, but I originally bought the 2, eventually bought a 3 just when we needed another one so that I could run both machines at the same time. And they have worked very well for me. But I know things like your Cricut Joy and your Cricut, uh, Cricut, I want to say like Portrait. I don't know the names of all of them, unfortunately, but those are more, probably your more common ones that you'll see. Sure you could find like a good one like on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, totally. Like Mercari. Absolutely. <clears throat> I want to say, and also, um, you can buy the older models. So, for example, Silhouette, the Cameo line, it's either on Model 5 or 4. I know they're for sure Model 4 dropped maybe three years ago, maybe four years ago at this point. Um, they might have even moved on to a Model 5, I'm unsure. But you can buy the older versions, such as the Silhouette Cameo 2 or 3. And I want to say, like, the only difference between, like, the 2 and 3 was that the 3 was Bluetooth. And the 2 isn't. So it doesn't have to be right next, doesn't have to be plugged into your computer, which is nice. But I don't necessarily see that as a make or break feature when you're just trying to save funds. I think where it gets pricey is like buying the mat and then the right um, paper for it. Yeah. But if you're only cutting vinyl, yeah. you know, that can, um, that's not too taxing on the machine. I want to know, like everyone who's watching right now, where are you guys from? Where is everybody tuning in from? Let us know. Roll call. <laughs> we are broadcasting to you guys from the beautiful south side of Chicago. Andrew's at work. <laughs> I want to know what you do that you can watch this while working. Goes says in Montreal. Patrick, two hours from Chicago. Josh from NYC. Brittany and I just got back, well, two weeks ago now. We did a, uh, we had a trip in... <laughs> 
San Fran for our first time. We did something at the um, Warriors Stadium, the Chase Center. First time in San Fran. That was very cool. San Fran very much has a, a big city feel, in my opinion. It definitely reminded me of Chicago or New York, at least the, the part that we were in. Yeah, more New York. I wasn't prepared for how cold San Fran was. Yeah, we didn't get beautiful Cali weather when we were there. I didn't anticipate. I don't know why I just assumed it was going to be hot there. Yeah, no. <laughs> Nick Martinez is from, he's watching from the Netherlands. Wow, very cool. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks to Aber Ben Social. I don't think you have. Can you um I have not been to Texas. Nope. Patrick, um, for food recommendations, if you come to Chicago, you need to go to Rico Benny's, hands down, and get a breaded steak sandwich with their mozzarella and hot peppers. Absolutely. That's, it's a must. So don't order anything else. Just get that, and you're welcome. <laughs> yep. That's, that's unlike, you just can't get that type of sandwich anywhere else. All right, I gotta let that dry a bit and see where we're, I still think it needs a little more of this magenta, but it's looking good. It's looking good. Just a little too purple for me. Well, said, what would you say was your favorite event of last year? My favorite event? We did um, two DCF experiences last year. Number four and five. And that was, uh, that was a ton of fun. I worked a bat mitzvah for the first time, painting... Gosh, I don't even remember how many shoes I had to paint that night at this point. You remember the number I told you? Like 150-ish? Does that sound right? Yeah. Painting 150 -ish shoes in five hours. Um, so that was a crazy one. Definitely unlike anything I've done before. So those were three, uh, three really fun events from last year. Did you ever share any um, pictures from that event? I did. Yeah, we did a <clears throat> we did a video talking about how I uh, that month was just so crazy. It was the same month as my cause, my cleats, mm -hmm. things like that. So yeah, that party was wild. That party was wild. I I didn't. I don't. I guess I never knew much about that mitzvah. Yeah. And how extravagant they can be. Yes. And, you know, trying to be like this line of work that you do takes you to such wild places and it makes you experience different things. So it was kind of cool. Yeah, for sure. Be in their world. For sure. Uh, full on customs or just a little something? No, it was just a little something. Um, so basically, like the kids were, everybody had. Um, their sneaker size and stuff pre-selected. They had a box with their names on it and they would come up to us and essentially select 
one to two colors that they wanted and like some type of stencil pattern and things like that you know they might want a floral theme a graffiti paint splatter theme um uh, spider-man theme joker theme things like that so they could sort of pick the color and essentially like a stencil pattern um so that we could get them done on the spot and i mean yeah we had to do 30 30 pairs an hour between uh I had uh, three guys total with me. So it was pretty, pretty crazy. Diana said, do you have any um, design that you 100% want to do on a pair this year? Oh, that's a good one. Um, <clears throat> a design that I absolutely want to do this year. Let me think. You know what I need to do? Brittany, will you go grab them for me, please? Yeah. There's a, they're in there. Um, I think it's a black box, a white post-it note, and it'll say Frankenstein or something. Probably eye level. Okay, so... This is a funny story. You want me to give them to you? Please. Thank you, thank you. Um, I want to say maybe three years ago, it was the summer of 2021. I sometimes will... Can you switch over to um, webcam, please? Okay. I will sometimes search things like Jordan 1 Custom if I'm doing a... Let's just say I'm doing a pair like this where I'm painting these Jordan 1s, a Dragon Ball theme. Sometimes I like to look up other Jordan 1 customs just to see how people work with the silhouette. Different variations on color blocking and things of that nature. And, uh, you know, even how maybe people have done Dragon Ball Jordan 1s in the past so that I can maybe draw inspiration from them and add my own twist. Or maybe look at pairs that have been made and see things that I like or don't like. How I want to make mine different. And, you know, when you search something on Google, you get the, the shopping ads as well. For if you search something like Jordan 1 Custom, you might get Jordan 1s that are for sale on Etsy, eBay, and things of that nature. So, as I'm searching Jordan 1 Custom, in the shopping ads, I see a listing that says De Jesus Custom Jordan 1s. And I go, what the heck? I know him. So, I look and see what it is, and it happens to be a pair of Bride of Frankenstein Jordan 1s that I did like within my first year or two of customizing when I didn't even have a, a functioning airbrush. I didn't even know how to transfer images on the shoes well, things like that. And um, I just, uh, quite frankly, wasn't very good. And so I look and I say, wow, I did those. I see they're on eBay and they were for something like a, a pair of Jordan 1s is, let's just call them 100 bucks. They were listed for something like 50, 60, 70 bucks. And I showed it to my wife, Brittany, at the time. And I said, look at these. Do you, do you remember me doing these? And she remembered me actually working on the shoes and said, had a phenomenal idea on the spot, said, you need to buy them and redo them for a video. And right away, I just said, that is 
that might be one of the best video ideas I've ever heard. Like purchasing one of my old shoes just to redo the design. And so I will, I, I bought them right away on eBay. Um, and this is a Bride of Frankenstein theme. So again, I didn't even have a working airbrush at the time. And I tried to just do, um, you know, sort of like her hair there behind the swoosh. Um, I wish I could see more Switch over to um, just uh, main cam. Main cam. Go on, you're not facing. Nope. Well, because so you weren't holding. It okay. Over. Here we there go. go. Yeah. <laughs> so I tried to do, you know, like the hair behind the swoosh. I tried to do the stitches. That is so wild. There's like the bolt. <laughs> there was a period where I tried to do. I did this on multiple shoes. I'm not sure why I tried like to do black lightning, which isn't a thing. And I don't know why I was just fascinated by it. So here's some lightning on the toe box. I was able to do some clouds for not having a functioning airbrush. Like truthfully, my airbrush never worked for me when I started um, because I wasn't even thinning the paints. Um, those clouds aren't that bad on the toe box. But yes, I really want to take this design and redo it. At this point, it's probably been 10 years um, since I did these. So I would love to see, um, originally, I think our working concept was like to take this shoe and acetone all the paint off and redo it. But now I think I might just buy like another pair of Jordan 1s and even have, take some cool side-by-side -side photos with them and things of that nature. Look at the, I hope that comes in. Look at the, look at the Wings logo. Look at the screw. Of no, course, no, no, no. look at that. Look at those lines. Oh but look at the Jordan logo. Look but at that. Can we just do it real quick, a side by side with what you're working on right oh, now, sure. compared to what you did back then? Like the, it's just wild how far you've come. Like look at that, you guys. It's so, it's possible. You can do anything. Look at that. That's what? a good way to frame it. Are you kidding? Yeah. And I love the way you said that because I'm not a trained artist by, by any means, guys. So if you just put in the repetition, you can absolutely do it. So hopefully um, the concept, again, I think I bought these like summer of 2021. I wanted to put out like a, a Halloween video. And uh, then I said in 2022, okay, I'll make this my Halloween video. I think I said in 2023, I want to make this my Halloween video. And... Um, I still haven't done it so hopefully this year but i actually probably need to get started on that video soon in order to uh to make that happen but i i just right away um a, a great way to think about videos is like can you explain it in one sentence you know what i mean um can it be that simple and or a couple sentences you know the concept of the video and is that a cool idea and i actually and i absolutely think that I have such a a cool idea for for how we can do that. So hopefully that'll be a video we make this year. Nick Martinez said mine looks like those right now. Hey, that's all right. That's totally fine. Yeah. Clearly, you see. Yeah. The proof is in the pudding, right in yep. front of you. Keep working at it. Keep working. I'm so excited for you to do those. I've been dying for you yeah. to do the Frankenstein shoes. I know. And I think that you're stalling because you know you have to go hard. That Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I know that I need to go crazy. Well, you know what's what's crazy too is for speaking of contests and things like that, um, for our first Halloween horror contest, my buddy Chris, known as Repsy Banks, did an absolutely mind-boggling dope pair of Frankenstein, not Bride of Frankenstein themed uh, Jordan 1s. So just living up to those, let alone comparing to them or beating them, will be uh, no small task. Shout out to Repsy. Yeah, big, big Repsy shout Banks. out. Big, big shout out to my buddy Repsy Banks, man. Love that guy. That would be a nice contest. Redo an early pair of your customs for sure. Totally. I have been wanting for a couple of years as well to do a video <clears throat> with my lovely wife Brittany, where we, well, she reacts to some of my old work. 
<laughs> and so I just show her <laughs> pairs that I've done in the past and get her get her to react to them because she's been uh she's seen it from the start. <laughs> she saw me paint the uh the very first pair of shoes that I did. Would you want me to go easy on you? Oh no. Or should I be oh no. Oh no, I got thick skin. Okay. I won't hold back. No, nope. that's all right. I think the with those Frankenstein pairs, the first thing I noticed was that freaking screw. That screw. <laughs> I was like, why did you do it like that? It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> An unanswerable one. <laughs> oh my gosh. What would you say has been the most difficult part since Mickey Lee's pairs you're working on right now? The most difficult part of these. Um this the the background that I have here on the red shoes was much harder to figure out than the um blue one. You can kind of see both here. The blue one was just sort of like a couple different shades of blue. You know, there's more a, a greenish blue aqua color at the bottom. But I just laid down a gradient and then did different cloud patterns and stencils. So that one was a lot easier to figure out than this one. Because with this background, I really wanted to achieve, as I was working on it, movement kept sort of being like a, a word in my head. Um because it, as I was looking at sort of the source images, you just felt like you were stuck in this like whirlwind of all these craters. And I truthfully, I don't even know what these little colorful um, orbs or rocks are. Um, but there's all of these craters and some are, you know, there's all this depth achieved where some are closer and further and so trying to achieve that effect with some of the craters to really make some seem like they're in the distance and almost blurred in a way was a technique that i really wasn't sure how to do um along with achieving you know the colored lightning i, I think the background was probably the most challenging whereas the characters um i, I don't want it to come off as I don't want this to come off wrong, but the characters to me aren't that challenging in a way that I have uh, just like a system for how I do all of them. They're just very, very time consuming. So I'm not necessarily, I don't go into saying, I don't know how I'm going to paint those characters because I do. Um, it's essentially the same steps over and over. Lay down, you know, the line work stencil. It's, it's just time consuming to then create all of the different colors for the shading and then eventually doing the black line work. So the characters, you know, rather than being difficult, I just view them as time consuming. I'm also very, very slow. As I start to become more efficient and things like that within my workflow, I just start to... It's funny because the the balance is just always shifting. As I start to become more efficient, I just start to have more of a trained eye. So things just take longer because I want everything to be perfect. Shout out to Austin, Jar Customs. Miss you. What's up, buddy? He's got his... uh. Baby girl, maybe just turned one or is just maybe just turned one or is turning one shortly. So she's so cute. Happy, uh, happy birthday to baby Stella.
Austin did a Jar Custom did a great video on. Um, I, I've been wanting to share it on my community tab for you guys, but he did a really good video on creating the parquet wood floor for the uh, Boston Celtics. So I'm going to be, I, I need, just need to remember to share that video here soon. But um, he put out uh, just a great tutorial on how he does that technique. let's see i'm pretty happy with our purple i'm gonna make it uh, i have let me go a little closer i have um <laughs> most of it blocked in the different areas you'll see it looks much more purple this was sort of the first spot i put it would you mind switching to the uh, character one for me, please, Freddie? Um, good. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm I'm expecting the character to pop up here on my uh, camera's <laughs> yeah. viewfinder. Yeah, it's brain fart. Um, so this purple up here is much darker, much more purple, whereas right here. On his legs I'm much much happier with uh, this color so I ended up adding a lot more pink into my um, purple when doing that now there's gonna be an even darker shade of purple that's what you'll see in some spots mainly right here near his uh, his ribs and his chest so we'll get to that after we have this color blocked in and that probably already we've probably how long we've been going already at least an hour. What are you doing? I just think we started close to 1030. Oh. So I'm going to make that still a tad more pink. Just a little bit more of that magenta. Another dot of purple. Custom moving into a new place in April that has an unfinished basement that I can use for a makeshift studio. Excited to have more room to create and get out of my kitchen. Oh man, you've been there. That is awesome, Jay. Super hyped for you, dude. It's great to have more space, man. The more comfortable you are in your space, the better the uh, the better the end results. An unfinished basement too. It's an open can. Yeah, perfect. So I like to save all of these different shades and colors that I'm going to be creating today. So I use these little two ounce cups that have a lid um, just so I can keep them for the next a week or two that I might be working on a pair like this. You don't want to save these with just these types of lids for longer than, I mean, a week or two. Just these little souffle cups, they're called sometimes. Um, and... Um, yeah, because the paint will start to dry up. But for example, I'm going to show you all of the ones I have for another character here.
So for who, for example, here, we've got his pants, the different shades of orange in his shirt, his arms, a couple different shades of blue for his shirt, a couple different skin shade colors and, and things of that nature. So I know that if I have to do any touch-ups, you know, I won't be troubled to find that color. If I want to, you know, fine tune a shape or I need to make his, um, his arm a little bit more straight or, um, you know, more curved. Maybe I need to, maybe I didn't perfect the shape of his shoulder because maybe my stencil moved stretching across different panels, things of that nature. I want to make sure that I have that paint easily accessible. Is there anything difficult for you anymore at this point? Portraits, realism, things of that nature, because they're just, um, I don't know if this is a hot take, but it just feels like saying something definitive in art is a hot take in general. But in my opinion, like painting portraits and realism is the most difficult thing that you can do in art, in my opinion. Um, just because you can, there's there's so many different tiers and degrees in which you can get it correct. But if you achieve true realism, it essentially looks like a photo. It looks real. And I mean, you can get it 80% of the way there and it can still look pretty good. People could say, oh yeah, that looks like Scottie Pippen. That looks like Kobe Bryant, whoever you might be painting. Um, but to achieve true realism, I just think is such a difficult, difficult task. That, um, I can't say I look forward to doing, painting portraits in realism. I actually think I struggle with those because, uh, I feel it doesn't come as naturally to me. So I'm just trying to do it as precise and trying to break it down to easier to understand sections and, and things like that. And I think that's because I don't have an art background. I'm not a formally trained artist. Whereas I think that might be easier if I were. The last art class I took would have been sixth grade until I uh, got to college and had to take a watercolor painting class. Okay, I'm just going to blow dry this real quick or heat gun it just so I can make sure it dries exactly how I want it before I move on and do that color everywhere else. a little darker.
Could you pull up uh, Manpreet's comment and uh, just read it out loud, Brittany, please? Hey, I was watching a video the other day, and the guy said that you can get an angel shovel for customizing and selling mansions. Can you share some thoughts on that? So I think that's a, a good question that I'm sure you're not the only one wondering about. Um, and I just want to preface it by saying don't take my legal advice, of course. <laughs> You are not a lawyer. Not a lawyer. Um, but it is very much a gray area in our space of, you know, what is, what is allowed, what isn't. Um, but there's very much something in place called first sale doctrine, which you can look up. And that is basically that you, once you purchase an item, from a manufacturer, you are allowed to do with it as you please. Customize it, fine tune it however you like. So as long as you're purchasing authentic Nikes, you know, you are allowed to do what you want with them. Now where it potentially comes into a gray area is if you are to create brand confusion or do something that Nike themselves wouldn't want to um, be associated with. So that's why years back, I want to say 2021, there was a big deal with a, a little Nas X pair and I think Mischief where they had like human blood in a, shoe, in a pair of shoes or something like that. And, um, you know, Nike wouldn't necessarily want to be uh, associated with that. So Nike then says, okay, um, I don't really know what they did to Mischief, to be honest, but maybe send some type of cease and desist or something along those lines. Because they wouldn't want regular, um, let's just say, a mom down the street to see, oh, Nike's releasing satanic shoes or something like that. Let's boycott Nike um, when, you know, Nike actually had nothing to do with it. They wouldn't want that to happen. So, um, in terms of if you were, if you were painting your own original artwork on there, then you're totally fine if you're doing something like this um you know with dragon ball characters which are licensed and trademarked could something eventually could whoever owns the the rights to dragon ball i don't know the name of the company but could they um have something to say that is absolutely a possibility but um most of the stuff that you see from customizers falls under the category of fan art and um you know so it's not most of the time you're creating these pairs as one-offs. You're not mass producing them since you're hand painting them. At least a lot of people in this space are. So you're not, uh, they don't necessarily feel they have to come after you for that. So it's definitely a little bit of a gray area. But that is, uh, that is sort of the gist of it. Uh, Etsy. Okay, so yes. So I imagine Patrick, um, you know, I don't I don't have all the details. So I'd be curious then to know, did you have original artwork? Um, you know, sort of your own style and patterns and things of that nature applied onto the shoes? Or was it a matter of, um, you know, maybe you had something like this put on their Dragon Ball characters or something else that might have been trademarked? So yeah, hey, I'm, I surely am not going to pretend that I uh, study the law by any means. Hmm. What about copyright issues? Do you face any objections when working on character-based customs? I lost my nine-foot deer business on Instagram page owing 
to copyright issues raised by Marvel. By Marvel, interesting. Wow, I haven't heard of them being uh, one of the tougher um, companies with it. Um, I've definitely heard of like NCA, the NCAA being a uh, being a tough one for um, some artists. I can't remember who. Unfortunately, Jar Customs his Instagram if he's still in the chat. I can't remember which pair it was specifically, but his his Instagram was also taken down. I want to say it was the NCAA. Um, so again, there's definitely something a little bit to, in a way, how you market and portray it. So, I mean, just for example, I don't necessarily have shoes for sale anywhere, you know, so I'm not selling any product. Um, you know, there's no listing to purchase anything of that nature from me. Now, is that some way around it? I'm not sure. Um, but I don't have a listing that says Jesus Custom Footwear selling Fighting Illini Jordans and, and things like that. I think so. that's where it gets sticky and yep. really you get in trouble. Yep. Colorways. Um, I've gotten one season because that was for sorority. They are strict. Okay, yeah. yeah. I have heard of sororities and fraternities being tough. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I have How do they have the time to even look for stuff like yeah, this? They just have lawyers that are searching the internet. Yeah. I'm sure now it's even going to be easier and faster with AI and image recognition and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Patrick had a follow-up on the Etsy thing. <clears throat> I use original artwork like Marvel Dying and Galaxy and I made sure that the wording on my listings indicated I was there buddy and not associated with any brands. Okay. Crazy. Yeah. So with, um, uh, you know what, I would also bet there's something to it, Patrick, even though it was, you know, your original artwork. Just having Nike um, in the title and in the keywords, Nike and Jordan and things like that. Mm -hmm those in and of itself are, you know, Etsy, the platform saying, okay, how are you selling Nikes as a non-retailer, you know? It's unfortunate that it's not, um, it's just not more defined. I kiss customs. TikTok took away my live feature because I was painting shoes. That's crazy. Because I see like that, like those lives all the time where people are customizing like tumblers or yeah. just painting, just like yeah. you know, doing a live custom. That's that's such a shame. So wild. Such a shame. I've had a video idea for a long time of trying to get my attorney to do a video with me talking about all the legal aspects of customizing, but I just haven't, uh, one, could that potentially be, you know, trying to figure out how to make that video fun and, um, also just, uh, convincing her to, uh, to want to do it. Well, I think that she would be totally up for that. Yeah. And drop it in the comments. Would you guys like watch something like that? Yeah. Does that sound boring? But I, I kind of feel like that's like a hot topic. Like people. Yeah. People would want to know what they and can they, and can't do. Yeah. And why not hear it from the horse's mouth? You yeah. Know, like, what can we do? Yes. What are our rights? Yes. Especially if you're going to go like fully commit to doing this full time. Yep. You have to know some of these yep. things. Totally. said that would be amazing that video idea would be so informative I agree. free legal information right yep 
And I just feel like Amy, she's just so, obviously she's a lawyer, she's very informative on these kind of things. Super. She's funny and she's very talkative. Yes. So. She's great at breaking complex things down too into easy to understand information. I just got some that's a million video a million video. Everything legal you need to know about custom. I don't know the but, title uh, yet. Someone drop a title, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can't make the video until you have a title and thumbnail first. So drop a title on a conversation with Dylan's lawyer about logos and customizing. Yeah, I see some more people speaking about Etsy. Etsy, unfortunately, just is, you know, their own platform. So they sort of just get to have their own reign, do as they please. So there's definitely sometimes a lack of rhyme and reason to why things shake out the way they do on Etsy, unfortunately. custom or selling custom shoes illegal in all caps now don't take my legal advice well but for, for a time. oh for a time. i thought i no. i'm sorry 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 i thought maybe they just no, hopped I in the chat heard us talking about it and asked are selling custom shoes illegal yeah <laughs> just very straight to the yeah point. straight to the point okay. easy to understand Ace, uh, Ace Bribe, the legal way to customize kits. It's good. That's a good one. It's good. These titles are not easy. No. It's probably the, it's like probably easier to make the video than come up with the damn Oh my god, I have a lot more, uh, a lot more gray hairs or added stress to my life because of titling and thumbnailing <laughs> YouTube videos. Because it makes or breaks the video, unfortunately. For the last. You gotta get those I've been clicks. doing YouTube pretty seriously for about six years now. Oh my god, this is hilarious. Patrick, <laughs> the thumbnail can be you caning the lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh my gosh, this is good. I just got some. Was Dylan in a fake jail suit holding shoes as a thumbnail? Oh yeah, oh, you have to. The jail suit, because it's orange, so it really stands out. For sure, I for sure would be wearing a jail suit. <laughs> We'd have to hit up, um, what is it called? What's Halloween store? Party, Spirit Halloween. Spirit Halloween. <laughs> yep. Now, would you do stripes or orange? No, just the orange, because the orange stands out in the thumbnail. Okay. But, like, the stripes is, like, that's a classic. Can't yeah. go wrong. God. No, but the orange just pops. Orange pops. Um, Mantri. <clears throat> um, I saw your material list. What brush are you using right now? And what do you use Scotch Bright pads for? 
Can you read it to me again? Yeah, Sorry. I saw your material list. What brush are you using right now? What brush am I using now? And, and what do you use Scotch Bright pads for? Um, okay, so Scotch Bright pads are for the prepping process to rough up the material further. Um, that's the only time I use them during prep. And then the brush I'm using right now is a 10 over 0 round brush. Just the cheap detail brushes that you can buy in like the four packs from uh these are from michael's so they're craft smart brand i think it's like five dollars for a four pack so just the uh just some cheap detail brushes That's a fun act. Hey man, what time range would you give um, to a client for when these would be completed? I know it would be it would vary, but what would you what would be yours? Sorry, I read that really weird. Yeah. So basically, like, what time frame do you give clients? Yeah. Yeah. So when you're starting out, there's definitely a desire to be fast because you think that that will you know close the deal easier, lead to more sales. And, and it absolutely can, um, especially nowadays. Thanks to Amazon, everybody wants, um, you know, their product instantly. No, Instant gratification. Yes, nobody wants to wait. Um, so your client is going to be looking for the shortest timeline possible. And so when I was starting out, there was, you know, just a huge desire to try to do things as fast as possible. My time or, you know, my time frame is only a week two weeks, a month, whatever, you know. Um, and I remember starting out looking at guys like Mosh and El Capi say that their time frame wait list was three, four months, six months, things like that. And me thinking, oh man, that's incredible for them. I, I want to be at a point like that where, you know, I'm, I'm so backed up and so in demand that people are willing to wait that long and, you know, just to, to feel desired as an artist, of course. And so, you know, over time, just as you got busier, had to extend the wait time from, you know, one week to two weeks to a month to two months, things like that. And, you know, when you start to say these longer times, can that lead to frustration and things of that nature? So because I've been doing this for so long, I've had, you know, I think I can say like I've had a lot of different iterations of the business. So there was a period where after four or five years, I took on a business partner and essentially our goal was to then get the shoes to the customer as fast as humanly possible. So we wanted to be faster than Nike ID. We wanted to be under two weeks from the time you ordered on our site to delivery date. And um, we did that. We sold a lot of shoes like that. And we were trying to just sell a lot of everyday common shoes. This was when roaches were huge. So... I wasn't doing as many, I almost call these like trophy pieces or display pieces. Even if they can be worn, they're still just um, pieces that I pour. Not that I didn't pour my everything into those, but just pure, purely based off of how long they take. I, I just pour so much more into them versus a $200 pair of brooches that has a much simpler design. You know, there's no detailed character painting on there. Um, and so I, as I was able to prove to myself that I'm able to, you know, stay busy, stay in demand as an artist, realized I wanted to do more of this stuff, you know, the, the one of ones I didn't want to be doing as many as the, you know, our studio for a couple of years turned into a factory of trying to just produce cool designs that a lot of people would want to order at a cheaper price point. You know, we lived in the two to three hundred dollar range, but I knew when I did get an order for a one of one, maybe a five hundred dollar shoe, a seven hundred dollar shoe, um, 
I had way more fun doing that stuff. So I knew I wanted to get back, back to that. And so when I made that shift back after a couple of years, I knew, okay, um, I'm going to be doing more of the one of one stuff and I am going to extend my wait times um, because I'm now chasing just a different clientele, somebody who's willing to spend more money on the shoes um, and maybe views me in a different way might um, or should be willing to, to wait longer as well. And they were. So I would extend my wait times um, once you're an in-demand artist for a couple different reasons. And one of them is because I know from doing this for years now that just randomly I'm, I will get hit up for a random project or something that's needed where it has a definitive timeline. Hey, I'm hosting an event um, and I need this many pairs of shoes by this date, which is in two weeks. Can you get them done in time? And if I've already committed to having a bunch of other people's shoes done within that same time frame, then I am biting off more than I can chew. So if I have too many pairs that are due in one month, then I can't take on more stuff as it comes in and has a short time limit. But if I tell everybody nowadays, I probably have, you know, a four month wait or something like that. Um, I leave myself that wiggle room for when a lot of projects pop up. I mean, thankfully, uh, I have a really cool client here and Jesus who's getting these done. And um, he hit me up, I want to say back in October for these. So we're on, you know, close to five months now. And I've just had so many things pop up since then that thankfully he's been really understanding about. I don't even remember how long I told him originally, maybe, maybe four months, maybe three months at the time, something like that. But I had a ton of NFL stuff. I've had a few, um, I had a bar mitzvah in between there, just an event last week that, uh, came out of nowhere in San Fran with Google cloud and the warriors. So you know, I like to just leave myself that wiggle room so that I can still say yes to other things. But when you're starting out, um, and especially nowadays, just people are going to want stuff faster. There's no doubt about that. So it's a it's a balance. There's there's pros and cons to both sides. But, you know, as you start to sell more expensive shoes, you're, you're going to be speaking with a different clientele, people that'll be more understanding of a longer wait time. Which is good. All right. I think I got that. Purple down. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think my client Jesus is here in the chat. I think his name is uh, Rico Suave there. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Sure, there. I'm in the chat. Keep working on him. <laughs> Chipping away, man. Chipping away. That's so cool. All right, uh, I think I'll try to make my darker purple now. I think that's the plan. So what I'll do too is ideally I make enough of this color so then I can like access, then I can take some of that. And now it's going to be easy for me to create really nice consistent colors where I'm just going to make this one a little bit darker. I'll add a little bit more purple, some dark gray, things of that nature. I'm going to cover this up and we will label that. 
so that otherwise I'm not uh, trying to track down that purple later. Where's that shade? Quite a few questions. Alrighty. Creek. I have trouble thinking. I have trouble thinking of finalizing what design or what art I want to create on this shoe. You mentioned you are not a professionally trained artist. How do you begin your thought process? Um. So I I sort of talked about. Uh, I'll answer a few questions. I'll take like a couple minute break here, guys. Can you switch over to um, webcam for me, please? Um. So. I can see the question there. I have trouble thinking or finalizing what designer art I want to create on my shoe. You mentioned you're not professionally trained. How do you begin your thought process? So I will have, um, you know, how can I think of this best? I try to think of real world situations. So when a client reaches out to me, um, Jesus, for example, here, wanted a pair of uh, Dragon Ball Jordan 1s and... I believe initially early on, he talked about wanting like a the Janimba character that I'm painting today. I want to say that was one of the first ones he he mentioned. And so what I'll do from there is then I'll start to search up things that have... This is very much what I talked about um, uh, when I was referencing the Bride of Frankenstein shoes earlier for anybody who might have caught that. Um, I'll search up Dragon Ball custom shoes and see what people have done in the past and see how people have done character designs on different silhouettes, on Jordan 1s, on Jordan 5s, on Air Forces. Um, how do you do character design on a, a high-top shoe, a Jordan 1, versus how you do it on a low-top shoe, an Air Force 1, and things of that nature. And I draw a lot of inspiration from other artists. And then, you know, so let's say... Um, Let's say that is uh, one of the first things I'll do. Then I will look up stuff like Jordan 1 Customs. Let's say I know I'm going to be doing a, a Jordan 1. And then I'll just see what other cool Jordan 1s have uh, been made in the past. And they might be very unrelated to a Dragon Ball themed custom shoe. But maybe somebody did something very unique on a pair of San Francisco Giants Jordan 1s where I love how they did maybe the color blocking or they did a really cool um, something where the toe box and the collar were striped or they had a gradient on there. Like I can just look at, I can take things from other pieces and then think of how I can look at them and say, okay, what is it that I like about that? And how could I maybe reinterpret that onto this design? So that is uh, something that I'll do a lot, and I don't do incredibly over-complex mock-ups. Um, sometimes I really just need to get a feel for the general blocking first. So for this, um, for this type of design here, I knew that I wanted these characters, and I knew that I wanted them on a background, and then it was really a matter of figuring out um, how much of the shoe do I want to be this type of background? So for example, I did want a majority of the upper to be this sort of cool red, red and yellow, um, dusty sky background, but I knew that, okay, where can I break things up? So I'm going to have a solid color on areas like the swoosh and on the collar, and I'm going to leave, I think the toe box is probably going to stay white on these. I'm, I'm actually still a little unsure. I need to, uh, finish the sort of uh, finish everything else with my characters and then look at the tongue is also white on these. I'm going to look at the tongue and look at the toe box and say, do I want to leave that white or do I want to, uh, maybe test some other colors there? So yeah, that is, uh, a little bit of my process for how I'll go about things. And, um, yeah, I, I, I really just like to see what else has been done before and then sometimes I'll make a few variations in Photoshop or Procreate. And something that I like to do that I, that I haven't heard other people mention before, which almost seems counterintuitive, is I like to sometimes make bad designs 
um, or bad mock-up variations so that I can then internalize within my brain, why is that bad? Why do I like this one so much more? What is it about it? Okay, I like when I do much more of the background. So for example, one thing that I considered here was on the very first mock-up of these, the um, quarter panel here that is directly behind the swoosh, I was going to leave that as a solid color, just like the toe box. And it was either maybe going to, maybe I was going to paint it a solid neutral, like a light gray, or I might have left it completely white, um, like the factory shoe. So that was something that I definitely debated. And, um, you know, then I, I might say, what if I do just this dusty background thing everywhere? There's no solid color on the collar, the swoosh, the toe box. Maybe those are every everything. But then you start to lose some of those key elements that make a Jordan 1 so iconic, the collar, the swoosh, the toe box. So just that separation and things like that. That's how I'll go. That's how I'll go about things. So if I'm to like one, and it's funny, Um, we had a question earlier, what designs would I like to do? This year, I've funny enough for anybody who might be my age, um, growing up as a big Power Rangers fan, I've wanted to do an Ivan Ooze theme from the Power Rangers movie for, for many, many years. I don't think I've ever seen a single Ivan Ooze custom shoe. And um, so if I were to actually do that, I would create a bunch of variations um, just like that and say, okay, well, here's how I'm going to split up all of that uh, for anybody unfamiliar with the character. All these different shades of purple and and here's how I'm going to incorporate some of the texture from his his skin and his his costume and things like that and just play with those in different sections and you know different ratios of stuff so that's um it's a little bit of my design process so you want to pull up another one for us Brittany please find when working with larger brands that there's a lot of waiting for responses. Sometimes it takes months for a client to get back to me. Don't know if that's normal. Yeah, so um, working with big brands in the corporate world is, is definitely different than a client that you might just be DMing on Instagram and, and things of that nature. Maybe somebody who's just reached out to you via email. I would say that that's not uncommon, but being that it is the corporate world, I think that it's very fair to you to... Um, it's okay to follow up and, and things of that nature, you know, um, just sending uh, without being overly uh, uh, overly uh, aggressive, you know what I mean, uh, of just following up, hey, just checking back in, wanted to see, you know, where we stood um, with the, you know, with our project and things like that. It, it kind of depends a little bit if you're talking about closing a deal or, or whatnot, but I know there's a few things a, f a few of my biggest deals that I've ever landed I know I worked uh, Lollapalooza one year and I remember Lollapalooza is an event here in August at the end of the summer here in Chicago they reached out to us I remember in January so you know seven eight months prior and I remember that we ended up not closing the deal with them I want to say until April and there was definitely a couple weeks there where we weren't hearing back in, in terms of the negotiation and things like that. So I remember um, definitely following up with them and just wanting to say, hey, is there any you know questions that I can answer and things of that nature? And and nowadays with uh, you know stuff like ChatGPT, you can create the, the ChatGPT can help you create the easiest. Um, you know, sort of drafts and messages of, of how can I follow up with a, a client a client quite simply and ask, you know, where we're at here in terms of negotiations and, and things of that nature if you're trying to uh, to close the deal. So I definitely know what that's like and I can relate. Any other ones you want to do before I hop back in? Yeah. How would you go about reaching out to different brands? I've reached out to a few, but they said they're not looking to collaborate. Not sure if that's just me not looking legit enough or what? Yeah, great question. So looking legit definitely is one big part of it. You would want to look as, you know, you would want to look like a legit business, not somebody who just, you know, sort of has a, a personal Instagram that they're not even posting a ton of their work. You want to look like a legit business 
or a legit creator, you know what I mean? So having things like a website, having a clean branded page, I think goes a long way. I have a very simple website. Um, I don't even have, you know, I don't have a portfolio on my website. I don't have any listings of anything in terms of shoes for sale. Um, but it's just a home base that I know further legitimizes the business. And um, websites are always going to be super high ranking in terms of SEO um, when people search you up, you know what I mean? So you want that to look as legit as possible. So I definitely recommend that. Um, but then when it comes to working with brands, I, uh, to be in full transparency, have not successfully reached out to a brand for a collaboration. Any brand stuff that I've done in the past has been them reaching out to me. So I have um somebody who, who definitely has I, I guess a fear of rejection doesn't want to hear no um haven't done a ton of reaching out in the past but i have watched a lot of something that i i haven't necessarily conquered but i would like to here on youtube is is getting more brand aligned sponsors for youtube so i think even uh, uh like i know a company that does a lot of advertising with youtubers is, is somebody like squarespace and so I would love to have Squarespace, for example, as, um, you know, a sponsor for a YouTube video, because then in the YouTube video, I could talk about why having a, uh, a website is a great idea for a customizer and things like that. So I wouldn't, I've turned down a ton of random brands that want to, you know, advertise where I don't think it aligns with the videos or, or the page at all in any way. So I'd only want to take on a sponsor that I think aligns, you know, with us and, and has something to do with whatever we're talking about. So I've watched a lot of videos in the past on how to, it seems like actually most people on YouTube say that to get sponsors, you actually have to reach out to them. So somehow finding someone at LinkedIn or someone at Squarespace on something like LinkedIn who handles their advertising, marketing, and things like that of that nature you know, shooting them a cold email and saying why you'd like to work with them. And I think it's, you know, a, another thing is depending on how you're reaching out, I think the more definitive your idea and the more they can actually see that you've put in the work on developing what your collaboration would look like, I think that goes a long way. So if you just reached out to Nike and said, hey, want to collab? Nike's you know, that email is never going to get responded to. But if you reached out to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to throw it out there and say Angelus, for example, and said, Hey, here's why I'd like to work with you. I have, um, this many followers here on TikTok where I'm using your products in the videos. Guess what? That probably sounds pretty good to them. Um, and same thing with maybe a certain brush company. Hey, uh, CraftSmart, I use your brushes and all of these YouTube videos. Is there any chance that you would be interested in, in collaborating or sponsoring or, or anything of that nature. Um, so, you know, having a, uh, a, a concrete idea that you can present to them, I think goes a long way. So, yeah. All right. I'm going to work on getting my next color made. But can you switch to uh, character, please? Brittany, thank you so much. We, we gotta give a we gotta give a big shout out to Brittany for being here with us today, hanging out, helping us on this live stream, producing the show, making sure everything goes smoothly. Can't thank her enough. And shout out to the OG Mama and Papa De Jesus for watching the uh, the kids today, so that both of us could be. Uh, MVP. Yeah, so that both of us could be doing this. Big shout out Dana to them. And Papa. Couldn't do it without you guys. Yep. I'm gonna say it every so often throughout the stream, but if you guys don't mind, go ahead and drop a like. Alright. Okay. So after you're done with the with those mixed colors, after each project, do you discard them or keep them for a future project? Oh yeah, great question. So depending on you know how old the paint is, sometimes if I end up working on a project for a long time, which this is one of those projects, um, I the paint might start to thicken up on me a little bit, and I might not want to use that in the future. 
on a pair of shoes, but if I keep the paint in a nice sort of fresh condition, what I'll actually do is I have all of your main colors where I keep some paint bottles and I'll take all of my excess pink that I create um, for different projects and I'll put all of my pinks in one bottle, for example. So you might see, okay, so it is, I thought I might open up the lid and you might see a bunch of different shades of pink. Maybe on this one we'll see some different shades of green. It depends if I've shaken them or whatnot, but I'll just dump all of my green paint into here and, um, you know, eventually I might be able to use some of this for a future project or um, I could let my kids use the paint or whatever the case is. Um, but if it's thickened up a little bit too much, I might discard it. But yeah, that's what I, uh, this is something that I've only started doing in the last year or two where I'll just keep all of my excess green in, in one bottle and just throw it all in there and, and not worry too much about um, if it's going to mess up the color or whatnot. Here's just excess green that Maybe I can eventually use, or maybe not. I didn't know you did that. Yeah, it's, I haven't done it forever. I feel like I feel like that's not a good idea. Because then, like, what if you're mixing all those different pinks? Like, what? Are, yeah. Like, what are the chances you're gonna use? That? Look at this pink. This is not an ugly pink. This is that's not bad. A bubblegum pink. That's not terrible. Yeah, I guess. Can't so. you see using that potentially for something? I guess. Wow, there's a lot. There's a lot in Yeah. There. And so what I might do is let's say let's say I was um recreating uh this pink boo character. I might go over to my excess pink bottle and start with that and say, Okay, is that pink, the main pink of him, anywhere near what I currently have in this pink? And okay, it's not too far off if I mix a bunch of white in there. Let's see where that ends up. So can I sometimes start with knowing, hey, I have a bunch of pink here that I'd like to use. Um, can I get any use out of it? Very resourceful. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's just maybe like very, a very cheap of me. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say, but. That's all right. Um, okay. This is cool. I never thought of this. From Tro Warren Customs. Um, anyone looking to trade customs in the future? I want I want collection of artist work for display. That's really cool. Oh, I, that's awesome. Do you, I, I've definitely heard of artists doing that before. Yeah. Oh, um, really? yeah, I have, and I've seen it on Instagram. So, if anybody is uh, open to that. Go ahead and uh, you guys can hit up each other here in the chat. Or if, uh, if, if, if you guys aren't already, I don't know if it's linked in the description of this video. Maybe somebody, maybe Patrick, if you could add the, uh, the Discord. You can join us over on the, uh, the official Toothpick Gang Discord and chat with each other about that in the future. Doing a cool one-for-one -one trade. I'll make you a pair, you make me a pair. Whatever themes you guys come up with, film some content around it. Works out for everybody. All right, how's that looking? I think I still got to go significantly darker. question from Amanda. Okay. I need help. Because it is the Badger Patriot 105, a better choice than the Iowata Eclipse HPCS for shoes. Both are good airbrushes. I've been a Badger user for probably, gosh, uh, maybe eight-ish years. Um, but I know the Iwata is, is another popular model. So I definitely um, know that you can get by with either of them. I just started to uh, 
it's it's almost like pick one and stick with it so you can really familiarize yourself with um it's almost like a car you get used to a car how a certain car drives and then when you have to drive somebody else's car feels a little different you know um so if you can just you know pick one and um just really get a feel for it that'll go a long way for you so i was just able to get really comfortable using the badger and um I learned how to troubleshoot it very easily. So then I just said, okay, let's pick one and stick with it, you know? I think the customer service for Badger is really good. Too. Yes, for sure, for sure. We got to do a tour yep. at the Badger. We did. Warehouse, and it was really cool. Very cool. Big shout out to Ken from Badger. I like him because his uh what's it called like a you know your sig you know some people have signatures on their email. Yeah. And um you know some people have whatever their name and business info whatever. His instead of saying take care at the end, mm -hmm. it says take air. <laughs> and I just That's cute. I'm a sucker for a good dad job. Take Air. Take care. I love it. Yeah. That's really cute. He's a he's a quirky guy. Yeah. I feel like most um successful people and you know like entrepreneurs like yourself and Ken have like crazy looking offices where you just have like so much random like so many random things yeah lying around and when it, his office is probably the quirkiest i've seen oh yeah like, I was like, yeah he had, he, had, he had some goodies in there he had like his own like organized chaos going yeah. on in his office totally I, like, I loved it i just wasn't even paying attention to what he was saying i was looking around and everyone was like, what the heck? i loved it okay um i'm gonna go more Nisha, how are you? We've got another uh, another guest that joined us for the DCF experience. <laughs> Always great to see. And just a follow-up from Amanda. She said, thank you. What air compressor should I get? The one I bought, I remember if I ended up not being able to adjust the kit size. Is this a good choice? Badger TP908 Aspire compressor. That should be good. It's weird that the Harbor Freight compressors stopped um, allowing you to regulate the PSI. They did for a while, and then for some reason they removed that. I have no idea why. Um... So you can buy some, as long as there's uh, a gauge to adjust the PSI, you can get maybe a $100 version on Amazon. So if you look at our videos, um, we have a video that's called like, what airbrush does a pro customizer use, I want to say. And it's me breaking down the, the Badger airbrush and I show the Harbor Fade compressor, which it did used to have the pressure regu regulator. Um, but in the description of that video, I've posted like an Amazon compatible version. So you can get, I'm not sure how much that Badger compressor is, but, um, you know, you can get one that is, I, I tried to find one that was in the same ballpark as the old Harbor Freight ones. So I want to say it's, it's close to about a hundred bucks on Amazon. Okay, that purple's pretty good. I gotta let it dry. Oh, I feel like we just talked. We just talked about this yesterday. <laughs> From bearded bro customs, just a random movie question because I know you're a '90s dude like myself. What do you think of the curl remake? Oh man, it, it's I. I just asked Brittany if she ever saw the crow, and so. I don't know, Jay, all right, because there's some really bad crow 
sequels. And there is there's something eerie about the movie since for anybody who doesn't know brandon lee uh the star of the movie the crow passed away while filming due to a um gun i i guess maybe mel i i believe malfunction would be the right term in this case where there was uh something actually happened where i think there was i i don't know proper gun terminology but i think there was like decoy rounds and something ended up firing like a malfunction within the gun. And anyways, there's almost like a, a, a curse to the movie because they've been trying to remake it a few different times. Jason Momoa was attached to it. And even um, there there's footage of Jason Momoa as the crow online. So I'm not sure if they started filming or if that was sort of like screen test. Um, but I'm a big fan of Bill Skarsgård. And um, I like a lot of his work, so I think that he's a, a good pick for it. I mean, he was awesome as Pennywise. And the when they dropped the initial images, like a couple weeks ago, they the director came out and said, basically, well, online, the online debate was, how come he looks like, you know, essentially a, a mumble rapper? He has face tattoos, uh, this funky haircut. Um, and the director came out and said he wants 19 year olds today to be able to look at Skarsgård and say, um, and, and you would be able to see yourself in him. So, you know, a lot of people were upset at that, but the trailer, the trailer gave me a little bit more promise just because it looks like a crazy, bloody emo John Wick, which I'm down for, um, so the trailer gave me a little bit more promise, but I don't know. There's there's definitely something special about that original original Crow and, and Brandon Lee and that movie just has an awesome awesome feel to it. So I actually uh I'm I'm willing to give it a chance. I am. But I have a high tolerance for bad movies. So Aaron shows. <laughs> it shows. <laughs> Drew Jolly said no to that movie. Wish they would stop remaking 80s and 90s movies. Yeah. Uh, and something that just, it makes total sense that so many people, I mean, there's a lot of people who are just flat out against remakes, is remake, remake movies that failed, remake bad movies rather than remake good movies. And The Crow, obviously um you know wouldn't be heralded it as as a bad movie that needs a remake but if you could take a movie that had a cool concept and just wasn't executed well that's a, a better candidate for a remake <laughs> nisha said uh, a high tolerance for bad movie shows and bad dad jokes oh yeah that's you could put that as my uh my instagram bio Okay, I'm just going back to shoes. Um, Jewel said, um, how many people are interested in custom shoes? Because I think that for such a high prices, not many people are interested. And I'm just curious, like, where you're looking or, like, who are you trying to reach out to for, like, what, what, like, you know, what kind of people are you looking at? Because mm -hmm. I feel like, like, just for an example, like, let's say, like, uh, Disney fans, Disney lovers, like, I always come across custom shoes, custom bags, custom anything, you name it, custom ears, you know, that they're so prevalent in that community. I feel like once you find something like a niche like that, then you'll see them everywhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Th that's such a great point. I mean, I'm, I've joined a couple, like, uh, um, Facebook groups to like post some of my work for example like some random sports teams ones like let's just say I painted a pair of uh, Philadelphia Eagles Jordans in the past I might have joined a Facebook group to post them and potentially show diehard fans and um, you know just over the years like not leaving the Facebook groups I've seen 
more people post their work or other people post, Hey, I got custom shoes from some artists. Here's, here's them. And, um, but believe me at the same time, if I were to just hop in an Uber today, speak with the Uber driver, there's a really good chance. I don't know if really good chances, right? Tim, there's a chance they've never even heard of custom shoes. So, um, you know, as much as it may seem big or popular to someone who's uh, maybe in the niche, sees it every day, follows a ton of people on Instagram, there's still tons and tons of people who have never even heard of this craft. But that's not to say that they are that they wouldn't then be interested. It's because they just haven't heard about it, so they don't know it's a thing. You know what I mean? Make them want it. Yep. Create something that they can't resist having. Good question from Manpreet. He said, So I have a day job, but suit but super and shoes and customs. Now I know it's important, but I cannot post a create every day. Is that important? Or what process do you have to increase your presence online? Oh gosh, that's a great question. Um very hard to answer at the same time because you know, like the the algorithms and all that stuff. As soon as you learn it, or as soon as you feel you know it, as soon as you feel you've conquered it, it changes. So, I feel like the best blanket answer is do what you can. You know what I mean? Um, and then figure out how you can do more. So, how can I maximize every project? And so, something I know that I, I spoke with, that I've spoken a lot about with, people over the last few years with the rise in short form content and video content and things like that. And Instagram no longer just being a photo sharing platform and things of that nature is like, you're doing a disservice to yourself. If all you do for your content for a project like this, let's just say a pair of shoes is post one photo to Instagram. That is an absolute disservice. And, you know, most people think and people that I've spoken to say, well, I don't want to bog down my followers. I don't want to post, you know, an insane amount of the same shoes and have them get bored with it and, and things like that. But just because you post something, the way these algorithms work, doesn't mean that everybody's going to see it. They're just not. So you can absolutely have different posts that can then be seen by a different fraction of, of your followers at different times. And, um, you know, you can repost your old work too, if you don't have any new posts, because let's say you haven't, you know, three months down the line, you don't have anything, you feel you don't have anything to post. You could post something you made three months ago, because let's just say you gained a hundred new followers in that time frame. Those people might not have gone back and seen it. And maybe now when you repost that, maybe that'll, uh, that could lead to a sale of them seeing that pair because there's some rule, you know, there it's not a rule, but some sort of general guideline in, in business uh, of this type of nature where somebody sort of has to see or interact with your work something like seven times, they say, before they consider purchasing. So somebody has to look at your work as an artist, let's just say seven times before they finally feel convinced um, okay, you know what? I want to purchase something from, from Dylan or, you know what? I'm, I'm now I'm saving up. Now I want to contact him about my next project. Um, because I've seen so much of his work and it's, it's really cool or whatever the case is. So yeah, you need to, uh, just do what you can and, and try to maximize each project in my opinion. And then from there, try to start to increase your output, you know what I mean? So how can I go from getting one Instagram picture of my shoes to then turning that into how can I get five Instagram reels 
five TikToks, five YouTube shorts, 15 Instagram stories, one TikTok live, and um, all of that type of stuff with, with each project, you know what I mean? Because then there's just so much more room for people to potentially discover you. So do what you can, and then over time, just try to increase that uh, that sort of output. The purple's probably a little darker than I want, but I still gotta let it dry in some areas, but it's probably gonna dry darker, so. You know, I was just thinking, Brittany, about the question about, like, what do I do with the paint after? Mm -hmm. And I remember in, like, 2020 when I was doing a lot of live streams, I think somebody asked something like that. And, and what I wanted to do at the time was, oh, I have this excess paint that I used on these shoes. Could you switch over to the uh, webcam view real quick, please? Mm -hmm. You guys might be able to see. Are you able to see there, like, all of those paint cups back there? Is that kind of visible or not really? And that's the, your vitamin water in the way. Okay. There. Those back there? Mm -hmm. They're visible? So those are like all of the different paint cups from the, the characters that I've done so far. And what I was considering doing is saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm done with these. Um, you know, who would like them? And I'll send it out to you. And thankfully, as somebody who's been doing this for a long time, I have plenty of paint. And, um, you know, there's I love helping people starting out so who could use some of this and so for a while i thought about doing that um but i've just i'd never you know it's just one more thing that i then have to do after after every project of trying to put it all together and say okay who who might be doing a project like this and would want some of it or whatever um but but that came to mind as i was thinking about what do i do with them with the excess paint each time what do you guys think Marissa said I'll take them. <laughs> That's a good question. From EG3 Custom. What's the lunch? <laughs> it's a good question. Can't talk to the boss about that. <laughs> Can you go ahead and uh, switch back for me, please? Do you want to look at the character on this? Uh, yeah. You you let me know. Is it? Am I is like is my right arm no, it's fine. blocking the frame, or does that kind of look good? Okay. Is there any way to save this live so they can revisit your clips? Yeah, the once it's um give me a minute here. Gotta pull a good line.
Let's let that dry. Um, okay, so the live um, will be uploaded right to our page as soon as I um, end the stream. It takes a little bit to process, especially because this one's going to be a, uh, a longer one. But you will then be able to uh, watch back in, in double speed or, or at your own speed to uh, to get through it all. Let's go ahead and show a little, uh, to, I want to kind of do like a character side by side. Can you direct me if I should go left, right, up, down? Um, go up. Look, that's perfect. That's good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys can kind of see where we're at. Um, the purple, the darker purple that I did, I don't think I love. I think it's a little dark, so I think I'm going to lighten that up. But I need to see how much to lighten up, so I need to let that dry a little bit first. Um, can you switch over to uh, webcam and I'll answer a couple questions or so while that's uh, drying. Mm -hmm. I'm new to painting shoes and cleats, but just curious. Why do you use a toothpick rather than a small detail brush? Do you feel like you have a better paint control with a tooth with a tooth? I think I meant to see. Toothpick? Yeah. Yeah, so um, I do. Um, and early on, I um, would not, um, because I didn't know any better, I would buy brushes and I wouldn't um, have proper brush maintenance. I wouldn't take care of them. And so my brushes and my tools weren't working as well as I had hoped. And also just wasn't trained enough, didn't have enough control um, to work them. And so funny enough, Brittany recommended one time to do the, to, to use a toothpick. Do you remember what it was on? Like, was it on maybe a Jumpman logo I on something? Jumpman. Okay, so like I remember when I was starting for years, you know, I would be painting Jordan 3s. Um, Jordan 1 mids where the Jumpman logo is on the back, the embroidery real tiny. And I would be trying to paint this and it just would never come out. It, it just was really hard for me. And she recommended a, a toothpick. I have no idea why. It worked very well for me and I've been using it ever since. And so um, from time to time I will use a, a detail brush. I used it at one point earlier on these. Sometimes I'll use an airbrush needle too. Um, for super fine lines, but I love using a toothpick. I just feel I have great control with it. Um, if you've never done it before, it's probably going to feel very weird. It takes a little bit of getting used to. A lot of people say it's just too hard for me to hold. Hurts my wrist, cramps my fingers, things like that. Um, some workarounds that people do is sometimes they put them inside like drafting pencils in which you drop in the lead, um, but instead of putting in the lead, they'll put in the toothpick. Some people like to use longer ones like shish kebab sticks. Um, but I've been messaged every workaround for for toothpicks um, ever. And so um, some people think that I get mad if they say like uh, that toothpicks are, they can't use toothpicks or detail brushes, real artists use detail brushes, whatever. I, I promise it does not upset me in any way. I think what's most important is just trying to find what works best for you so that you can achieve the best end result. And at the time for me, with my skill set at the time, a toothpick lended uh, to better results for my clients. So of course I want to give uh, the best product possible. So if I'm able to do that with a toothpick, a detail brush, whatever the case is, just do what um, what works best for you. That's my uh, That's my mentality with it. I just have to, I have, I have to bring this up, okay? Anisha, she said, oh, Brittany will appreciate they did pass a law in Oregon for us to pump our own gas, but almost all gas stations still have lines where they will pump it for you. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We just, couldn't believe it. Yeah. Lines. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Thank you for uh, following up with that. Because now that's something that we probably only see in uh, movies. I that you know there's places where they that. pump your gas i didn't know that in oregon that you can't pump your own gas and i was just blown away by that so that's funny that's funny all right sorry <laughs> all 
Darren Smith says, uh, one thing this channel has taught me is the patience is needed for customs. Keep up the awesome work, dude. Absolutely, man. It is not, uh, it's not an incredibly fast process. I promise you that much. Customs to the max says, I am 12 and have my own custom shoe business. That's amazing. Oh. Look at that. 12 years old and, and, and doing that. You're going to be the talk of the high school when you get there. Yeah. You're in grade school or junior high now, so yeah, that's look out for you. That's amazing. What is the the youngest person we had at the DCF Experience, Brett? How old? Was it Owen? Owen. Yeah, I don't okay. know how old Owen was. Maybe 15, 16? 15, 16. 15, 16. 15, 16. Yeah. Came with his dad. Yeah. Um came with his dad. They were so great. His dad was like part of the team too. It was awesome. I think, yeah, I think Owen was the youngest. Um, so yeah, that's. I was not starting a business when I was twelve. I promise you that much. And Owen has come to create some yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah, things, he's doing some awesome work. He was just in the, on review your customs, right? He was on uh, the... Artist Reacts pair. Artist Reacts. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. His uh, foot pair or like a skeleton the X-ray themed, X-ray oh, themed, right? Did it for an yeah really cool really freaking cool yeah really cool Would you do me a favor, Brittany, mm -hmm. and can you pull up the um, character one again and direct me so I can talk through what I'm doing next? No, you're holding up your page. That's good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I look at my dark purple in this region, it is more... I, I think I ended up putting in too much dark gray, to be honest. So what I'm going to do is I want it to be... I can just sort of look at the color and know that it needs more violet. So the violet, I'm not sure. We'll have to see its value. So now if I look in my pink cup, and if I'm just talking about the value of the colors, the lightness and darkness, my violet is still a little bit darker than that color that's in there. So this would darken it even further. So what I'm going to do is add in a little bit of white as well. And that's how we're going to get a little bit closer to that color that I wanted. Jill said that she's 13 and she started a year ago. 13, my goodness. Good for you guys. And 13? Man, I think I was still playing with Barbies. <laughs> 13. Yeah, I was playing with dirt probably. What? 13? <laughs> Not starting a business. Amanda said, wasn't it a 10-year-old with the sugar skull cheese? Oh, Evan. Oh, I have those. You want to, would you mind grabbing them? Oh, yeah. Right down there, the vans. I can't, I think oh, Evan oh, sent them to me years back, so I can't remember how old he was or is at the time, but yeah, I think he probably wasn't far off from 10, so he sent me a really cool pair. He knows that I'm really into sugar skulls, and um, he sent me these vans. Look at how cool. 10 years old. I think that sounds right, Amanda. Let me see. Let me find out. I mean, he probably sent me these like four years ago. So even if he's 14 now. Yeah. Amazing. He's 13 today. He's 13 today? Yeah. Not today. Not today's birthday. Oh, okay. Like, I mean, like in present Dang. Time, like, yeah. So he was, yeah. I, I think these are probably close to four years old. That's crazy. 
Big KR Carter says that 13, I was playing kick can on the corner, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm right there. 13, so 2005, this is probably when I got my first cell phone. So, man, good times before the internet. Good times. All right, um, I'm going to still do a little bit more violin, a little bit more white. Yeah, Drew, it is Evan the Artist. Evan the Artist, yeah. Mm -hmm. I got my Uncle Al here in the chat. What up, Uncle? Alex uh, K. He's got an orange. Uh... Oh! He said hi, hi to you, too. Hi, Uncle Al. Thank you. Uh, Manpreet says, does Nike as a canvas has more impact for customs, or do you think... Any custom of any other lesser known brand makes same impact. So I think it's, I just think the reason you see so many Nikes is just because of their popularity that like, if you looked at the, the total market share, I'd imagine Nike has a very good percentage of, of shoes. Like you just don't see a ton of people who are willing to invest in spending a lot of money on shoes that are, you know, wearing, let's just say, um under armor or something like that that's not to say there's not under armor customs and, and things like that but just people who like to collect nikes and wear nice nikes are probably used to spending a good amount of money on shoes you know so that's that's sort of one way to look at it but for a while in like 2017 there's a huge boom of ultra boost when uh you know adidas came out with those and uh then for a while, you saw a lot more Adidas customs. Brittany, do you know what Adidas stands for? No, I feel like... Um... Trivia question? Yeah, wasn't it in that movie we saw? Was it in air? Do they mention yeah, it? Yeah, it was. Really? Yeah. I actually don't know if th like so this is what it stands for, or if this is just like how you remember to spell it. What? All day I dream about soccer. Is that what it means? I, I actually might be, uh, I might be fumbling that and it might mean something else, but I do think it's all day I dream about something, but no, I can't remember. Right, no. that's, not it. that's not it? Oh yeah, you're right. So, um, the sport of her company, Adidas Side, it's made from the acronym, all day I dream about soccer. Okay. So they started off as a big soccer brand. But then also on the, all, in the Adidas site, it says, um... The Adidas name came from the founder of Adolf Adi Dassler's name. Okay. Adi? Adi? Adi. Adolf Adi Dassler. I feel like I remember that. Okay. Interesting. I don't know. I don't... That was a good question. That was something called Ooh, Air. Ooh, it's called Air. And I, going into that, like, going to the, just like a little fun fact about us, you guys, like, they're like, <laughs> they came to the movies. <laughs> And he never tells me, which movie we're going to go see, he just takes me. So I always have, like, that fun task of figuring out what the heck we're going to watch. And he took me to go see Air, and I was like, oh, I don't know. I This sounds boring. It was such a good movie. I think we both, did I cry? Did we? Maybe. Did I, um, I can't I remember like if he did for sure. Maybe. It was like, yeah. Such, like, especially if you're an entrepreneur, I feel like it was such a like, great movie, an inspiring movie to yep. watch. Hello, great friends. movie great movie ben affleck <laughs> is batting 100 as a director in my opinion every okay. movie he's directed is and fun fact Dylan loves ben affleck he has a man crush on him <laughs> huge ben affleck fan <laughs> glad he got his resurgence after uh messy early 2000s Oh, your cousin Nick is here. Oh, what's up, Nick? Hi, Nick. Thanks for joining. Tell the kids we said hi. We miss you too. Give the kids all our love. Bye, Manfred. Thanks for joining us.
He had really great questions. So. Yeah. He had to go back to work. He said he uh, had to keep his day job. <laughs> hey, I get it. I get it. Patrick said, I'm guessing you're a Batfleck guy. Oh, What's man. That? Batfleck. Like, do you like uh, Ben Affleck as Batman? Oh, Bat yeah. Totally. Yeah. I can confirm that. Huge Batfleck fan. I, it is such a shame. He was going to get his own standalone movie that he was going to direct. Wish we could have seen that. And I know, I know people don't like Zack Snyder stuff, but I like Batman versus Superman. I want Dylan to dress up as Ben Affleck for Halloween, and I'm going to be Jeff Phillips. Oh, yeah. We did say that after we saw the Super Bowl commercial, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think, what do you guys think? Should we do it? <laughs> Dylan already has a beard. He loves I do. I do. I can look tired and stressed. He's going to have to have a fake cigarette. You need a fake cigarette, one. yeah. <laughs> All right, I like that, but it's still too dark. I know I'm going to have to do another coat, but I think I just overpowered too much, uh, too much dark gray originally. So I'm going to lighten it with a little bit of pink too. So sometimes I just, I know my process involves a lot of fine tuning the colors as I go too. Like I said, I know I said this very early on in the stream, but the colors can look a certain way in the cup, but once they dry on the shoes, it can be, uh, it can be different as well. I have a question for you. For Michaela. How do you make a sole of a shoe scratch resistant? What products? I don't see Rally scratch resistant cones for sale any longer. I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh, it doesn't. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, uh, you know, when there was a big trend for a while where everybody wanted to paint soles and would use, you know, scratch sealer and maybe put something like a sole saver on there. Um, I didn't know he stopped selling it. Um, I am... Uh, I don't ever paint soles, to be honest with you. So, in terms of making a product that is, uh, I like, I don't believe soles can be painted just because they're rubber. Paint and rubber don't bond, and even if there is some type of scratch seal on there, eventually they're going to chip. Just in my opinion, so I don't ever paint any soles. Um, I don't ever recommend any way to do it, really. So I don't. Um, I'm just like not a. Uh, a fan of trying to uh, recommend how to do it just because I think it gives a little bit of false hope that it's possible. Believe me, I would love to. And whoever comes up with a way, a true way that you can actually paint the soles, and I don't think it's uh, some type of finisher or top coat or whatever. I think it's going to need to be a, a different type of paint. But whoever comes up with that is going to be very rich from, from customizers when you can actually paint the soles and then be wearable.
Dan wants to know what utensils are you using right now. Uh, for which part? Maybe for the mixing? Ben, ben, for the, maybe the paint mixing? I use Q-tips for that. Why do you use Q-tips for that? Uh, just because I throw them away once I'm done, and they're just cheap. You can buy these packs, um, you know, from the dollar store. Buy as many of your supplies as you possibly can from the dollar store. So things like this, your cotton balls, your scotch Bright pads gloves whatever i mean sure you could buy in bigger bulk but um usually you know these are still uh pretty cheap so hopefully that's what he was talking about maybe he was talking about the brush let, me, let us know whoever uh yeah, might sorry. ask that can you just specify what you were talking said I'm struggling with promoting my shoes. Do you have any tips? Post, post, post. Post, post, post. I feel like too, like as an outsider. Yeah, give your outside tips, like, right? You know, obviously I'm not a customer here, but I'm a, a consumer. Yep. And for me, Adele made this good point. Like if you keep posting something, like right now, I'm just gonna give an example. There's a coach purse that keeps popping up on my timeline. <laughs> Great thing enough, coach is a really big company, but it keeps coming out. I'm like, I, the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, that's really cute. Yeah. Moved on. A couple yeah. days later, I saw it again. Right, like, right, right. That right. Is awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. And I keep seeing it, and I'm like, man, I think I'm going to pull the trigger. I really yeah. like this bag. You oh, know? oh, I didn't spend any money yesterday. Yeah, Today, I'm right. feeling a, like, I'm feeling some type totally. of way. And then, like, yep. and, you know, maybe going off a little bit of that, too, like, um, I'm, I'm a huge Disney fan, and, like, I always see um, some um, customizers do custom mini Mickey ears. Um, I love seeing their process, even if it's as simple as, um, like, when they're posting things like, oh, like, these are the fabrics I'm going to use today. I love seeing that. I love it. Even if, like, I don't even see them actually use them. Just like seeing like them shopping for the fabric, mm. you know, like that's always so cool to me. Like I want to see like behind the scenes of like how did you come to this point, like yeah. create this pair of like Mickey or Minnie ears. Yeah, you know, like I don't think that you should just like focus like it's like you have tunnel vision almost. Like don't focus so much and just like the end product. Let me see the whole thing. Yeah. I want to see it all. Yep, and that's just me as a consumer. Yep. You know, I'm I'm very easily influenced when it comes to like buying things, and I I, I know I'm not the only one. No. So, go from that perspective. Yeah. Show us like your whole process, even like you going to Michaels, like you said Michaels sells Angel's paints now, right? Yeah. Even to like buy their paint or to like what brushes are you gonna like look mm -hmm. for? Even if you aren't actually gonna buy it, like just go to the store and like pretend to put things in your cart. Like, <laughs> things I'm gonna buy today. Yeah. Or, what I'm going to be working yeah. on, you know? That's so true. Um, I think, personally, there's a huge... I know... All right. Dylan, don't turn this into a... a control me here, Brittany, so I don't go for a 10-minute okay. okay. runway. Yeah. But I know after doing the business for maybe five, six years at the point where it was, um, you know, I, I might have been a... a a 25 year 25 years old and trying to say okay like can i actually do this for the rest of my life can i turn this into be you know sustainable enough um to raise a family with um at the time Brittany and i weren't uh married didn't have kids yet or anything but i i have been with Brittany since i was 17 years old so by the time i was 25 we're definitely having these types of conversations and I'm trying to figure out, you know, as a man, can I provide for my family with this and, and do this forever? And so in saying, okay, I feel like I've already tested everything. I feel like brought on a photographer at the time. I don't feel I can make, um, I, I don't know if I can 
take much cooler photos. I don't know if I can do much cooler artwork. I don't know if I can do... I feel like I, everything that was in front of me that was controllable, I was trying to control and do to the best of my ability, but maybe I still wasn't getting to where I wanted to in one avenue that I said, okay, well, I, I haven't done this is really add a face to the brand. So prior to that, anything that was on the Instagram or Hayes' custom footwear social media channels was just about the shoes. I wanted just the shoes to speak for the brand and the, the artwork do the talking and um, why would anybody care about me? But once uh, discussing with, with my team and, and with Brittany and things like that, hey, let me try to potentially open up and, and join something like YouTube and create YouTube videos and let people see a little bit about the personality and let people see who who is who Dylan is, who's this person behind the shoes. And as Brittany was saying, just start to open up more, show people that there's a lot more to this than just the end product. There's so much more than just these finished photos. There's an entire process. There's so much that goes into it. And... Um, once I did that, like six years back, 2018, I know it's when, excuse me, started to take YouTube serious. That was a, just a absolute huge turn for the business. And, um, you know, I know that that's when things started to look a, a whole lot brighter for me. And, um, you know, I, I guess I could say that I just, I haven't looked back since then and know that, um, Hopefully, you people joining here would, would would feel like you in a way, um, if you've watched a lot of my videos, feel like you you know me in some way. You know what I mean? Uh, people reach out to me all the time and say, because I've, you know, watched these types of live streams or watch your videos, I feel like I can uh, reach out to you and ask questions or, you know, I feel like I, I know you in some way and, and that's really cool really to hear. Cool. And um, I just know that... I was able to charge a hell of a lot more money once people were able to see how much goes into this than previously, where they would just see a finished product. If you just see this, sure, you see a Jordan 1 that maybe you like or you don't like. It's cool. It's a near-finished product, but it's entirely different when somebody can tune in and see this and how long it actually takes and how much goes into it. You know what I mean? I think a lot of times too, people are afraid to like, you know, do the YouTube or, you know, put all their um, time and effort into that when they don't have a following. Yes. And that's totally understandable, but yep. that's how you gain a following, totally. believe it or not. Yep. That's how you gain them, by doing that, the extra work and doing all the content and, you know, just keep posting it, be consistent. You will gain traction and you will get followers. You gotta find your voice. Mm -hmm. Still adding more pink into this uh, dark purple here. And just following up with like what Don and he was asking about what you pencil you're using. It was when you were painting. Okay. It was just a brush. That I guess. Yeah. This is a. Let me see. I don't know if it will focus. It's not focusing on the yeah. brush, right? Okay. Maybe if I move, let's see. Well, it's going to be blue on a blue background, so again, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think... Oh, there it goes. There? Yeah. Yeah, so that's just a uh, Craft Smart 10 over 0 round. I think I have the pack. Value pack of liner set of brushes, 4 pack, and this is like 5 6 hours from Michael's. Patrick said, Dollar Tree is a godsend. I got a three pink, a three pack of paint bottles from there, and I just wanted to say, I, if I could go to the Dollar Tree every day, <laughs> if I could work at the Dollar Tree, I would. I, I love it there. Yeah. Yep. And now that they have, like, most Dollar Trees, Patrick, I don't, I think you said you live, like, a few hours away from Chicago. Um, most Dollar Trees have um, expanded, and they have, like, a $5 section. I can't believe too. they've done that. So, like, they have paint there now you know no, i wouldn't really recommend using their own shoes but like if you want to like practice and like just save some money like 
That's a good place yeah. to go. They have like really nice paint palettes there. Their brushes. They have brushes there. I just loved walking in and knowing that anything you grabbed is a dollar. Well, not anymore. It's a dollar twenty-five. Yeah, dollar. Well, either way. Yeah. Well, at yeah. least you don't have to think. Right. Now you have to right. look and see yeah. and. I'm going to blow dry this real quick. Patrick also said, um, that he was thinking about doing a mask shop for his brand. Oh, yeah, that's and a good idea. Thought, yeah, definitely. Yeah, totally. That's what she said initially, too. Brand recognition and stuff. Totally, yeah. yeah. Creating your own. When I first, uh, I don't know if I have anything around here that has the old logo. Um... Mm. But my first logo was essentially a, uh, I, I had a somebody that i know that went to school for graphic design designed my initial logo for me and i said i want a uh chicago bull wearing yeezys holding a paintbrush and so that was my first logo and then a few years in when i wanted to legitimize the business and get things trademarked and all that stuff my attorney said that it was way too close to the bull's logo that um it wouldn't pass so I had to uh, rebrand a little bit. And so originally, I just went by DeJesus Customs. And, um, you know, they just said, well, hey, this this name doesn't tell people what it is. I think we need to add shoes somehow into the title. And so DeJesus Custom Footwear was born. I'm trying to look to see if I have a picture. Of the original logo. I have something really funny that I could share. I know where it is. Give me one sec. All right, you guys will get a kick out of this. So, Days oh, of Customs, oh, Dollar God. General book, Aww. first stickers I ever bought. And this is how I kept track of all of my orders. Aww. So, January 1st, 2013, I sold two pairs of Freddy Air Max 90s for 500 total. I spent 90 on the men's pair, 45 on the youth fair, 365 profit. And this is what I would do to uh, <laughs> to write down all of my stuff and how much I made. So on the 8th of January, sold a pair of 49ers Jordan 7s. He probably sent me the shoes. I did them for $120. And uh, yeah, I mean, so that was a common price point between 100 and 200 for a lot of years. And so this is where I wrote down all of my orders for the year of 2013. So it's cool to look back on and see that. <laughs> I'm so glad you kept that. That's cool. Yeah. So, you know, when I sold my first shoe, where I made... A thousand dollars profit. I remember saying, "Yeah, that that guy right there, writing in this book, that he was doing stuff for a hundred dollars, would be pretty proud." Uh, add more of that magenta.
I really like these uh, tips that, you know, Angelus released a couple years back. Um, I think they call them like easy flow or something. I don't know, whatever the, the paint tips. Um, cause I used to work just directly from the bottle, pour the paint in the cap. But the only bad part about these is that they do, um, they clog probably just because I'm not doing the best to make sure that they don't closing them right away. I leave them open and, um, you know, then you have to pull the clogs out sometimes. Question. Sure. Creative work Hudson said, What do you think about Giancarlo Esposito wanting to be Professor X and Denzel as Magento? I love the sound of it just because you got two mega star actors. You know who that is, Britt? That's Which the guy one? from uh, Breaking Bad. What's his? Gus? Oh, no. Yeah, he wants to be one of the uh, X Men characters. I might Google him. I forgot what he looks like. Too. Yeah. I haven't seen all of the X-Men movies, so like I'm truthfully not that familiar with all of the um <clears throat> oh, that guy. source material and if he would make for a good Magneto and stuff, but he's just a great actor, so. Oh, Jesse Eisenberg said, Hey Jesse, what do you think about Brittany Murphy getting the role of Magneto? How high would you rank uh Breaking Bad and best TV shows ever, Brittany? Well, I think, because you know me, I don't ever finish series. Yeah. Like, I'm really bad at that. That was one that, that I actually did finish. Yeah. Um. So, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. Yeah. It was really sad. It was very, the, the, the last episode was so moving, and... But would you say it's, like, your top five all time, you think? Yeah, but it's, it's not something I could re-watch, okay. re because I feel like there was, it was just, like, an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. That I don't think I want to get back on it. Yeah. But it, it was something that it's it's damn it's up good there for sure. Damn good. Still got a clog here. All right, hopefully that does it. See, it's not always as simple as just saying, okay, I want this purple shade to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to add black. I mean, you can do that to darken the color, but that's not necessarily what you're always going to do um, if you're just trying to get it as close as possible. So I'm just working on this darker shade of purple here on his legs. And then this one I haven't done with this color yet. So we'll be able to, uh, I'll show you the comparison once I'm done with the leg part again. I got a question for the chat. I asked this one last time. 
it was a big hit for anybody who watched all of that stream they'll uh they'll remember but let me know your top three top three everything else gets deleted from existence top three condiments mm. i got hot sauce mine haven't changed hot sauce barbecue sauce and mustard hot sauce goes with everything mustard for your sandwiches <laughs> and barbecue sauce goes with a lot of stuff i feel like not everyone puts mustard on their sandwiches like when i know they don't mustard, i think of hot sauce okay see yeah i actually think of um i actually think of sandwiches because i think i like mustard on pretty much every type of deli sandwich mm. so let me find the chat so no one forgets this mustard and barbecue sauce <laughs> and what was the last one i've got mustard barbecue sauce and hot sauce but hot sauce is far and away number one that's yours yes Uh, we got <laughs> um, from Rihanna pepper, parsley, and salt. I feel like those are probably the healthiest. Oh yeah, condiments I've Smarter. ever heard anyone <laughs> recommend. Like, yeah, wow, that would be on my radar. Yeah. Of that. Usually, really you're gonna get I want chipotle mayo, Literally. mayo. You know, Ayana, I'm sure your diet is probably impeccable because. Sauces or condiments? Well, I mean, I guess a condiment. When I think of condiment, I do. I don't think of salt and pepper as a condiment. It is though. Are they considered I mean, a condiment? Table salt and yeah. pepper. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're always on restaurant tables. Yeah. I guess when when people ask the question, when I ask the question, I'm more thinking of sauces. Okay. You know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. But wow, that that answer <laughs> that made me feel really like wow. I need to rethink my diet. I know, right? Um, Patrick said, Harold, mild sauce, barbecue, and mayo. Mmm. Then Ayanna responded, wait, is this sauces or condiments? Yeah. I, I guess they're not the same. I guess they don't go hand in hand. I don't know. But yeah, I guess just to specify, we're looking for sauces. Sauces. And then the boy taste of ranch hot sauce, barbecue. Okay. Ranch I, I, I know people, I don't, I can live without ranch. You know, I know some people like ranch with pizza. They like it with chicken. I think the only time I use ranch is with some chicken wings. Yeah. I don't sure. use ranch that much. I I like ranch with um cheese fries. Is that weird? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, anyway. from Outback. Creative Work. Oh, shout out Outback. Sponsor us. Um, Creative Work Customs um, said barbecue hot sauce is a complete seasoning. Mm. I, def I don't think I've ever had barbecue hot sauce. Or I wonder if we... Hot barbecue sauce? So you've had that? Oh, with yeah, it's yeah. It's just, I, I, yeah. Yeah, it was exactly. Um, and then Ayana, um, she said, if you ask for sauces, honey mustard is my favorite, mm. which also sounds healthy. Mm. And mayo, and then sweet spicy sauce for shrimp. Oh, mm. so healthy. Ayana. That's good. I'm sorry that all those things are so healthy. <laughs> Mine is um ketchup. I only want barbecue sauce from McDonald's. Yep. And mayonnaise. Not what, mayo. I want mayonnaise. What was the sauce that McDonald's just had, Brittany, that was damn good? Oh my god. It was like limited edition. Yeah. Was it was it just called Wick Donald sauce? No. Okay. I think that, that was like the meal. Okay, McDonald's had this sauce recently. How can you describe it, Brittany? Because I'm terrible at describing flavors. Oh, it's a savory chili. Oh, man. Mm. It was really good. It, yeah, it's like sweet and spicy. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys know this about Dylan. Yes. Um, but he cannot... I cannot describe flavors. I, I. He thinks that like sweet is... He'll describe something tangy as sweet. I don't have a taste profile to... I just wasn't equipped. I must have missed that day at kindergarten or something where they taught you how to describe flavors because 
It's a huge gap in my logic and knowledge. Yeah, I don't know what went wrong in your childhood that you missed out, but um, just a little something about Dylan. Um, let's see. What a burger! Oh, this is from EG3 Custom. What a burger! Spicy ketchup. I don't, I don't know if I've had that. No. McDonald's hot mustard. I didn't know they had that. I've, I have seen that. I, I haven't tried it. And tartar sauce. I've never tartar had tartar sauce. sauce. That's for shrimp, I believe. It's really funny because I feel like that's really made me look, pop off in the comments. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sweet Thai chili. That sounds good. Oh, that's good. Thai food sounds so good. I can eat Thai food every day and be happy. Polynesian sauce. Where's that from? Is that from um, Chick Fil A? Yeah, they have a Polynesian one, right? I don't think I've ever tried it. See, I'm like a. I stick to what I know. Yeah, I you are like, for sure. Unless I'm like um like in a mood, which is not <laughs> something different, but like I, I stick to what I like. Um, just debating if it's dark enough. Now, I think it needs more dark purple. I guess going back to shoes, Michaela wants to know, what is your preferred finisher? Do you, use, do you still use dollar for your customs? Does that change with regular customs and cleats? Um, so I don't use Duller anymore. The reason that I used to use uh, Duller was because mm -hmm. even if you applied a matte finish, you still couldn't get the shoes very matte, unfortunately. Um, and you could add Duller to the finisher at the time, but um, it still just wasn't the perfect sheen in my opinion. So adding Duller to the paint helped you get that perfect sheen. But now... Uh, probably about three, four years ago, companies like Liquid Kicks and Angelus released new products that make getting a very clean matte look much, much, much easier. And so now the finisher I use is the uh, Angelus Matte Four Coat or the Liquid Kicks Matte Top Coat. Let me blow dry this real quick. question um did it, did it ever happen for you to for you to draw size i'm sorry i'm reading this so crazy basically did you ever draw outside the lines by mistake and how did you fix that <clears throat> oh so if i were to accidentally do something <laughs> like that where you did just you get seriously faint. just do that so all you need to do as long as you catch it which you don't always catch it take your q-tip what you actually want to do, can you switch to webcam? Yeah, hold on. Um, what you want to do is wet it a little bit, and then you can rub it right now. Switch back to uh, okay. this. Um, again, I'm going to wet it a little bit, and you can rub it right off. Now, that's not always the case uh, because sometimes you might not catch it. What if I accidentally have paint on my finger? and I am holding the other side of the shoe and I don't notice till a few hours later, um, that's a bigger hiccup. But um, if I were to just color outside the lines here, you can either try to catch it in time or you can eventually, um, for example, I colored outside the line 
because I had to reshape um, let me know if you are able to see what I'm pointing yeah. at, Brittany. Okay. Um, because I had to reshape the uh, the arm here. Right here, I just have like a temporary paint touch-up to refine where this black line was. But you can see how this yellow is much brighter there. I'm eventually going to color match, you know, this region and blend it right in. So... You basically can just paint right over the top, as long as it's not that bad. If it were incredibly bad, if it were incredibly bad, let's say, I don't know, I poured uh, a ton or paint spilled all over the shoe, you could acetone off the entire section or something like that. So there's definitely a few workarounds. Jules is asking what time it is in the U.S. She is in the Netherlands at 8 o'clock. It is 1.54 p.m. over here. So past lunchtime. Yep. <laughs> and the boy Tay wants to know, do you still do custom jackets? Uh, custom jackets. I've done a couple of them in the past. I'm open to doing custom anything if, uh, you know, that's what gets requested or that's what people want to, uh, you know, purchase from me. So I think I've done, I don't know, three, maybe three jean jackets, maybe more. But yeah, I'm definitely open to it. I want to do one for myself. I haven't done a custom jean jacket for myself. I need to. You know, it's a, going back to what someone asked, like, how to reach a different audience, like, for customs, because they, they seem like they, other people aren't interested in them. A really big market is in the wedding industry mm -hmm. for custom jackets, mm -hmm. like jean jackets. It says, like, bride, established 2024. Yeah. You know, like, adding embellishments on the jean jackets, too. Like, that's a huge market. Totally. So don't just, like... Limit yourself just to shoes, even though, you know, you could probably do wedding shoes too, but something to think about. Oh, Jules is a he. I'm so sorry, not a she. What did my my older brother Tommy um said something really funny to me one time. He said there's three things people never have budgets for. And I can never remember the third one perfectly, but it's weddings or three things that people blow past budgets for. Mm -hmm. Weddings, funerals, and the last one was meant to be kind of funny. It's either women's bridal showers, baby, baby showers. showers, or kids' first birthdays. I can't remember what the joke was, but it's one of those. Um uh are you do we have the character on the screen yes okay so you guys can see here near the ribs chest area that's where i have the paint where i added way too much of the dark gray down here i'm much happier with the color i'm still adding in a couple drops of purple and then that'll be ready to go um patrick said um he's been trying to get into prom Prom, okay. You know, you know, Patrick, I think yeah. you had a question about that earlier, so I think I missed it. Um, like trying to get like the, I guess like teenagers, um, yeah. attention of like to get in that market to create customs for that yeah. event, you know? Yeah. And you know what? I've noticed like the thing with the, what's cool with the kids these days, especially the girls, they don't wear heels anymore to prom. They wear Air Force Ones. Oh, do they? Yeah. And yeah. I think it's so weird. Oh, but yeah. Like, that's what they're into. But they want yeah. like the all white. Yeah. But still, like, But they sure would probably want their maybe a swoosh yeah. to match your uh, dress color and stuff. Or if you put the date on there. You know what I mean? The date, um, glitter. I don't yeah. know. I feel like they'd yeah. be all over. But if that. you put prom 2010 or whatever, you know? I'd be all over it. 
prom 2010 i just dated myself there but prom 2024 Nisha said, um, wedding shoots are my non-existent wedding. It's part of why I started doing all of this in the first place. There you go. <laughs> You'll be ready. <laughs> um, Tay said, as customizers, we never do stuff for ourselves. Nope. Huge problem. Or for lives. Huge problem. Um, <laughs> um, I think it's Trail Burn Customs. I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. Um, he asks, have you ever had anyone ask for Bredazzle Customs? I might dive into that one day. I actually haven't. I, well, I don't remember. Maybe somebody's reached out, um, but I, I haven't done any. My friend, um, Caitlin, she got, when she got married, she actually bedazzled her own Nikes. I, th I think she oh, okay. I, I can't remember. I think she had Air Forces. Okay. Yeah, what are the the ones that were really heavy I tried on at Nike? Air Forces. Yeah, those are Air Forces. Yeah. Yeah, she um she bedazzled hers, like yeah. the bush mm -hmm. and her wedding color. So there's and I've seen that um so like a lot of girls doing that to their shoes. There's definitely a market for it. Yeah, maybe a little bit more of this purple. Super close. <clears throat> if you guys don't mind, go ahead and drop a like on the stream if you haven't already. Lopez said, does it matter what brand, what paint brand you use to customize shoes? It does. I recommend using, uh, my recommendation is Angelus Paints. There's definitely other paints out on the market, but you don't want to, for example, just use cheap uh, acrylic paints or something like that. Those are just going to crack, um, you know, essentially as soon as the shoes are worn, regardless really of whatever prep you might do. So... Yeah, Angelus is my uh, preferred preferred brand that I've been using for a long, long time. Um, Michaela, how do you price your customs? What is the system that you use? It's a great question. So, um, I myself am uh. I kind of enjoy math, as weird as that sounds. I'm a math guy, and I wish that it was as simple as coming up with a formula. You know what I mean? I wish there was a perfect formula that you could derive and, um, you know, be able to perfectly price anything. But it's just not that simple. So, to me, you just have to consider the factors. And one of the main factors being time. How long do you think these shoes would take you once you know what the design is? And the only way that you can really do that efficiently is from doing a ton of shoes to where you can then say, okay, something like that, I've done that before, and that was probably a pair that took me three days of working 10 hours or something like that. Okay, cool. How much do I need to make for those three days for that project, you know, to be profitable, to, um, you know, to where I'm happy with the with the end number. And then there's other factors as in how in demand are you? Are you super busy? Um, are they asking for a rush order? Um, 
if you're just starting out, do you need to purchase some of the supplies, maybe some of the paints in order to do the project? You know what I mean? There's all of those types of factors for coming up with the perfect price. So, for example, me at this point, because when I do a project like this, I don't necessarily have a ton of supply costs. I don't necessarily need to go out and buy a new airbrush. I don't need to go and buy new paints. I don't need to, uh, I don't have a ton of supply costs because those are already things I've purchased in, purchased in the past, but they are paying to, you know, the client, for example, is now paying for you to use your supplies and experience that you already have after all of these years. So, um, you know, it, it would be wrong to say, oh, well, because I already have the paints, I don't need to buy no paints, so I don't have any supply costs. Well, no, they have to, you know, think of it as they have to pay to use your supplies for their project, you know? So to me, at, at this point, a, a large part of it is how long do I think something like that will take me? How excited am I to take on the project? is a factor, you know, because I, I say no to 90% of things that come my way because I can pick and choose what projects I want to take on, thankfully. And, um, yeah, so that's a really big factor. So I could look at this, this pair and say, okay, these are going to take me at minimum 60 hours or something like that. So let's just say, let's pretend I was working 12 hours a day. That would take me five days, you know, uh, an entire work week to do this one pair. So how much do I need to make, you know? All right, let's see. We're looking good. Surprised at how much purple I needed. Thank you guys for hanging out with us on this beautiful Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night, depending where you're at. When it's snowing yesterday by us, and now it's 52 degrees. Uh, that's Chicago for you. So weird. You never know what you're going to get. All four seasons, though. creative work has been lifted. How he started out, he said my base started out at 75 to 100 for the first year for simple color weight, and then 125 for images, and then the second year base for all customs went from $150 to $200, and then the third year current is $225 for the base. Yeah, yeah, you should be going up year after year. Totally. He said, guess what year I had the most orders? <laughs> uh, 
I'm going to hope for this year. Yeah, right? <laughs> sure. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, <clears throat> we got a comment from Christian. Hey Dylan, love your videos. I'm a diehard Arsenal fan and your Mason Ooh. Mount video inspired me to make my own custom Arsenal kit. Thank you. And thank you. My buddy Dave J is a big uh, Arsenal fan. Shout out to Dave. Shout out to you. Was it Christian you said? Mm -hmm. Arsenal fan. Very cool. What is that? Soccer team. Oh. Yeah. One of Chelsea's rivals. Mm. Now you got a shot Mason this Mount. year. Is that the That's who we went to Jersey for. <laughs> God. Yeah. Uh. So, Brittany, why don't you tell the story? I don't want to. Why not? <laughs> so we went to uh, New Jersey as uh, I made some shoes for Mason Mount. It had been a project that had been in the works for two years. Right after Chelsea won the Champions League, May of 21, I was in talks to do a pair for Mason, and they were sort of going to be a commemorative piece to celebrate winning the Champions League. And we were um, essentially waiting on a few different things, hopefully trying to deliver the shoes to Mason in hand, potentially in England at, at different points. And um, just due to scheduling and things like that, didn't happen. Time went on, more time went on, and um, the project was just sort of shape-shifting. And last summer of 23, Mason left Chelsea and joined Man United. And so then we were making a Man United pair for him. Because all along we were going to be doing two pairs. The second pair was originally going to be for um, a charity organization that he's a part of. But then when he switched clubs, the second pair became, okay, well, we need to make a pair to celebrate his new club. And Manchester United happened to be coming to the States to play a preseason game in New Jersey, which isn't close to Chicago by any means. So Brittany and I were flown out to New Jersey to deliver the shoes in person to Mason. And um, it unfortunately just didn't work out. We tried, uh, we were supposed to meet um, the night before the game, the day before the game, the day after the game, all these different types of scenarios where it, it just unfortunately didn't line up. Just scheduling conflict. And uh, so we ended up going to New Jersey and didn't even get to meet him and deliver him in person. But um, he did eventually get them. He did like them, from what I heard. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's unfortunate that it worked out. But hey, that's just the way it goes sometimes. It was definitely a learning experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And one for the books. So. Yeah, I mean, like, at the end of the day, I was paid for the project, so don't, you don't have to, nobody has to worry about that. We were flown out, it, it wasn't on our own dime, just hoping to meet him like that by any means. Um, you know, we were... It would have been a great video. If yeah, that yeah. Was, that was the whole point, was to get that cool footage. Yep, yep. And he's kind of a letdown yep. there, didn't work out, but... You know. I think it still made a really cool video because it just showed that sometimes things don't always go as planned. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Sometimes though, um when things go like that there are even more interesting stories. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Because it does happen. Things yep. fall through and like plans don't totally happen. man. And not everything is sunshine and roses nope. in this industry. Nope. And that's relatable. Yep. Patrick said, in the future, do you think we could do a video on supplies and display ideas for those of us that want to go to a vendor, to go to a vendor at events? Yeah, that's a good one. Good idea. 
Let's see who we are. Uh, Patrick. You know, I think one thing that um, I've learned to do when we do um, any kind of a event um, is to make a master list of everything that we're going to need and then add to it as we go along. I feel like there's always going to be something that you forget or you're going to need in the future, but it's not perfect. It's not always going to be perfect, but having that in your back pocket, that master list. Of all the things. Yep. Uh, all right. I think we're good <laughs> there. Now I need to make this lighter purple. Let's see. Let me do one more coat. Thank you for joining us, fellow customs. He's going back to work. Back to work. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the questions. I remember when we did the uh, Chunky Donkey live stream, you know, we would have been four hours in and, and people were saying, what on earth? You're four hours in and the shoe's still white. <laughs> so at least, uh, even though this takes a while, you guys get to uh, stare at some color. I was just looking at the comments again and you guys were talking about movies and I saw a TikTok yesterday of uh, this guy who was at the Dollar Tree and he was looking at the movie section ah. and none of them were like they were like knockoff movies of movies like the Batman just... in the cave oh like, wow weird titles like that yeah. or like the Scarecrow's Bride wow like, weird Titles just like straight that. the DVD movies, yeah. super cheap. <laughs> and then he's like, "Who produced these? That's like, who, awesome. Who paid to get this made?" And he bought a whole bunch of them, and he said he was going to do a review on all of them. That's glorious. And it just got like millions of views because <clears throat> the titles and like the yeah, you know the the movie pictures, like they just look so crazy. They look familiar, but they're yeah. not real movies. Oh, yeah, because they yeah. want to get your attention. Right. So you want to create something recognizable. And then I was thinking, like, man, Dylan would thrive in this. Like, totally. Because they were all scary movies. Oh, my gosh. And I'm like, he would thrive I in this. I need to see this. <laughs> yeah, I, sh I think I sent it to you. Okay. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah, I. Uh, that's, like, the worst part about not having video stores anymore, that that's how you used to pick a movie just seeing which one had the coolest VHS cover you had no idea what you were signing up for yeah that's weird right because like I don't know like the, do you remember if there was like a lot of like movie commercials on TV like did they promote movies that way I don't really know yeah there was trailers and yeah. remember movies because we're not physical media collectors we don't collect VHS and DVDs there used to be trailers for movies before the movies Remember? So when yeah. you popped in a VHS, there was two or three trailers oh, for other movies. Yeah. You yeah. know? Which is so weird to think about now because obviously that's going to be dated information. So, like, why did yeah. you bother? Yeah. 
But I guess that's like the only way for them to advertise. That's how they print them. It's the studio promoting their other yeah, movies, yeah. you know? That's so funny. I forgot about that. Because now you pop in a DVD. Exactly. Like, that doesn't exist anymore. Or you just stream and, you know? Just not the same. Misha just said, oh, hey, Mail just got here. My DCF friends will order has arrived. Oh, there we go. That's exciting. What did you get? Yep, I'm sad our kids won't get to experience the video store. I know. Well, there's still one left. There's still one blockbuster left. It's the only one in the world. And I believe it's in Ohio. Ohio? Yeah. So, okay. if we're ever feeling it, yeah. we can take a drive to Ohio. Ohio. Because I want to get on a plane ever again in my life. I hate flying. Ooh, that's a good question. I love these questions because um, I know you're all about it, and I think it's super important. Um, from Carlos the Masterpiece, he said, being a husband, parent, art, business owner, have you thought about how retirement would look like? Oh, shit. And we talk about this a lot, and... That's deep. It is deep, and <laughs> but I feel like it's super important. Yeah. To like, you know, let people know what your journey looks like because this is your career. This is your job. Yeah. And I think for a long time, we weren't really thinking about it. And it was not like a big, scary, hairy monster that we had to face. But when we finally did, and now we finally have a plan and, you know, we're working towards it. Right? Yeah. I, um, being that, uh, you know, I've never had a, uh, some people might call it a big boy job. So I never had... I painted my first shoe when I was 19. I never had any job where... Set up your 401k and, uh, you know, that's how you'll... That's how you'll have uh, retirement savings. So for me, it was, you know, starting out. Okay, I'm barely making enough money to get by. I can't be worried about... Um, retirement and, and things of that nature and i always just said well if i just make it big enough then i won't even have to you know i'm sure everybody thinks that way if i just make it big enough then i'll have plenty of money for retirement but as you start to get older and and you see more about finances and you learn more about the financial space which is something that i'm super interested in you just learn that investing in things like that it's not necessarily about just making uh making as much money as humanly possible it's about saving over um don't take my financial advice but saving over the long haul and and just investing over the long haul for for decades you know that's how you can have money saved for retirement and being that you know when you're your own business owner no one's going to do it for you you have to learn to do it yourself and um you know that can be as Brittany mentioned, scary, you know, if it's, if it's a new space, if it's not something that you grew up learning about things like that. Um, so yeah, I, uh, what do I want my retirement to look like? I don't know. It's very weird. And I, I know, um, some people are excited to not work and things like that, but I just don't even view this as work. So it's hard for me to, who knows where custom sneakers will be. 30 years from now and well, where, where is this gonna take yeah or where this will take me who knows 30 years from now i have no idea what type of involvement if any my kids will want to have um no pressure on them of course if they do or don't but if one of them wanted to be a part of the business take over the business in any way that might make things look differently um but i want to it, be there for my kids in a way that I can also help them. Who knows? Maybe they'll see, okay, my dad was able to start this business where, like, if you said to somebody, when I told all my friends in college that I was dropping out to start a custom shoe business, nobody had heard of that at the time. So who knows if my kids say, well, I want to start a... Uh, some type of business that isn't even a, a 
a trending thing at the time, I want to be able to support that to the, uh, you know, best of my ability. And um, hopefully I'll have learned a lot of lessons along the way by then of, you know, decades running a business, operating a business, that there's things about any business that will, will translate to other um, other realms. So hopefully I can be there for them like that. But um, I can't see myself not wanting to not wanting to work. You know what I mean? Maybe we'll want to travel later in life. But who knows? That's not something... That's really, I didn't expect you to say that, but I, because I have that mindset, like, oh, I can't wait to retire. Yeah. I do have a strong person's job. Yeah. And that's the whole point of this, right? <laughs> to love what you do. Right. And not want to retire. Right. And then not have to feel like, oh, I have to work for the rest of my life. You don't have that mindset. Yeah. And I always forget that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Truthfully, if I was <laughs> retired tomorrow, had enough money that I truly didn't have to worry, yeah. I promise you I would do the same exact thing. I would come down to my basement studio, yeah. and that's what I'd want to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure, I'd have even less stress because I'd be even less worried about hitting deadlines or whatever, <laughs> or needing to say yes to projects to keep the lights on. Thankfully, I don't necessarily need to take on projects right now to, to keep the lights on, so I'm very fortunate already um with where i'm at but you know i would i would still be doing the uh the same thing so who knows i'd be able to take more time off and travel uh or, or do stuff of of that nature and and travel without worrying about work you know what i mean now if i do any traveling there's still um business that i'm worried about totally at all times um so could i ever worry less hopefully hopefully i'll get to that point you know uh let's go all right final round a little darker here and then i'm set so there is a blockbuster and it's in oregon oh it's in oregon okay <laughs> And Nisha ended up getting the sleigh, the cheetah, and the nightlife. Oh, and nice. the Disney print. Oh, is that oh awesome? nice. Blockbuster in Oregon. Oh, let's see how far Oregon is from us. Driving. By the time video stores were phasing out, it was before I could, like, necessarily drive myself or had my own money or things like that but i wish i could have been a part of that time of just when that's what you did you just went to the rental store i definitely went a lot with my parents and things like that but i wish i could have uh just just done it even more myself and i still have really fond memories of it Can you click a uh, split screen, Brittany? And then let's uh let's see what they think of this. Let me know what you guys think if you want me to stay on the full screen view, what you think of because I don't know how it looks. So am I in the frame and the shoe? Uh, move a little bit to the right. Me or the shoes? Shoes, sorry. Shoes to the left? Right. Right? More. 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 Okay, now that your image is in frame. How about me? Yeah, you're okay. Let me know if you guys like that. If you want me to just stay on the uh, the main camera view, Brittany playing a producer. I just wanted her to have some some cool options depending on what I might be doing. I just like searched on Google Maps where a blockbuster where it is. Yeah. And a Blockbuster Express came up, and it's 30 minutes away. Blockbuster Express? <laughs> yeah, and I, like, searched, like, you know, I clicked the picture to see, like, where it is. Yeah. I can't tell if it's, like, um, it looks like it's inside a CVS. I wonder if it's, like, okay. one of those, like, red Like boxes. a red box? Yeah. So it won't let well, me search the Well, didn't, because we use red box a lot in the, like, 2010s. Yeah. Um, 
didn't they create something called Blue Box? And was that oh, was that yeah. Blockbuster? They did. You're right. I know it wasn't as big of a hit, I believe, as Red Box, but I wonder if that's a rebrand on it or what. So let me search up the one where Ant-Man goes. It would take us a day to drive there. <laughs> oh, man, I feel like cooler half and half. Like, like okay. Um, a bit of soul said, hey Dylan, how would you go about putting the tongue on an Air Force One low without removing the tag? I've been trying to figure out the best way since I'd like to keep the tag in the sock on our leg. I would paint it by hand. I wouldn't airbrush it. And since the tongue creases a lot, I would, depending on what color you're doing, I would dye the leather beforehand, too. Just because it creases so much, it bends a lot. The tongues are very bendy on Air Forces. I would uh, dye it just so that you don't see a lot of the uh, the paint cracking. One like semi-benefit to that area is it's covered up by laces. So I just think it's very susceptible to cracking. But if it does, it is covered by the laces. So there's that. Have you guys, uh, anybody in the chat watched? Any good movies recently? Anything coming out soon you're looking forward to? I haven't even seen anything coming out recently. Have you? Um... Kung Fu Panda 4. Kung Fu Panda 4. Arthur the King. Imaginary. I'm sure you know what that is. Yeah, people said it wasn't good. No. I don't know. I haven't seen previews for any of these movies. Bob Marley, One Love, Angels. What the heck are these movies? Patrick said, Patrick said, I'm slowly switching over to physical media. It's been kind of missing. I'm nice. waiting on the new Superman movie next year. I'm excited for that Superman movie. And Monkey Man looks good. Monkey Man looks interesting. What's Monkey Man? It's a, uh, like an action movie. I think the director's Dev Patel. Jordan Peele's producing it. It's. A, I, I feel like I would have a really hard time describing it in one sentence, but... Mm. It looks like a a good action movie. I want to see that poor thing. Oh yeah, I a lot of people about talking about that. It's very interesting. Yeah. I started rewatching Prison Break. I asked Brittany if she would watch it with me. She's never seen it. She backed out on me. Mm. So I'm giving it my own rewatch. So another fun fact about Dylan. Um, we'll watch shows together and then he'll watch the next <laughs> So there's, there's just like a lot of tension between us because he does that and I just kind of feel betrayed. So Brittany has not forgiven me for watching some shows I mean, I in the past. You guys to sign off on the comments. Is that 
<laughs> to start a show with somebody and then watch them behind, watch the next episode behind their back. I mean, come on, where's the loyalty? Creative Work Husband says just watched it on Damsel on Netflix. Mm. It was decent. Okay. And he also said he did not like Madam Web at all. And now I have uh, a personal vendetta against you. We saw Madam Web. Because Madam Web was really good. And I don't understand what their <laughs> whole, why everyone is being so crazy. I think it's the most hated movie I like I've ever. Good. I thought it was really good. I, I mean, it was like your typical superhero villain movie. To be fair, you don't watch a lot of superhero movies. You know Neither what? of us do. Neither of us did. Watch uh, like all those Spider Man movies. You watch the Spider Man movies. And uh, the one with the so many with uh, yeah, Avengers. Avengers. I've yeah. seen that. I, I mean, I feel like that's plenty. Um, so I feel like I, I have I, my opinion matters. Yeah. And no, I'm not saying your opinion. Madam Web. I liked it again. I thought it was really good. Our kid liked it. <clears throat> I hear the criticism of it. I see it. I think it's just a turn your brain off movie. But the thing people were most mad about is the the villain being dubbed the entire time. Oh my god, everyone's trashing Madam Web. I'm sad. Yeah, Those no, are it's right now. <laughs> it was really good. Yeah. yeah, and you know, and I think that I think that Dakota um, Johnson Johnson set the tone for this precedent because she had such a negative vibe towards the movie for her own personal reasons. But I think that it was a good movie. It was corny and cheesy, just like all the other ones are. I don't see why it was any different. But that's I the think. thing. Other people don't think other superhero movies are corny and they cheesy. They are, though. Sorry. Right. Flash, they are. Yeah, you're not, you're not going to win people over with the Madam Web take. Man. But see, I like bad movies, and I was totally fine with Madam Web. I loved it. That was a perfectly fine. Oh, I saw that too. ninety minutes there was, um, uh, preview for the Planet of the Apes. Oh yeah. Have you seen the original ones? I've seen the. Uh, I've seen. There's like a lot of different is, versions yeah. of it. So right. there's like a Mark Wahlberg one. I saw that one. I don't remember at all, and I know it's not very liked. But there's a recent trilogy that's damn good. Um, I don't know which, because you're right, there's like ones from like the 70s or 80s. Yeah, and I then Mark Wahlberg's like early 2000s, and that then there's like a the 2010s. I've seen, and I actually really like those movies, and I'm, I'm excited for the new one. Yeah, it looks good. Because I like the plot, I like the storyline, um, so I'm interested to see that too. Um. Alright. Oh my god, Patrick, y'all got a high pain tolerance for movies. <laughs> Funny. Uh, Pedro Martinez says, how much anime do you watch or know of? I'm assuming you would get orders on them. So do designs come easier to you if you watch them? Or does the customer usually have the design for you? So I actually don't watch any anime, Pedro. Um, I'm familiar with Dragon Ball just because like when I was younger, um, I mean, it was a huge show like on Toonami on Cartoon Network. Um, I remember I watched Dragon Ball a little bit when there was like the Maj, so this, I know Majin Buu is one of the characters on here, but I, I don't know if this is the right, right terminology or not, but I believe he's come back a few times. Maybe, maybe not, but I remember when there was like the Majin Buu saga. This would have probably been early 2000s, maybe 2003, 4, or 5, when I watched Dragon Ball for a little bit. But other than that, I haven't watched any uh, One Piece, Naruto, anything like that. My younger brother Daniel is a big fan of it. A lot of people tell me I would enjoy it, um, but I've just never given it a try. Probably unfairly, but um, I, I, I'm sure that I would uh, love some of the through lines in a lot of these stories and stuff. And I know there's some good storytelling in there, so I unfortunately don't um, watch a lot of it. So just when it comes to me doing orders, I wouldn't say I do a lot of anime, but I do a fair bit. I just try to familiarize myself with the general concept I'm going for so if you know on these shoes I'm going to be doing one shoe villains versus one shoe heroes let me make sure I don't get those you know mixed up and uh, let me make sure my layout for things 
make sense based off of stuff like that, where, oh, hey, that was an obvious error that you overlooked. Um, and I'll just double check either with the client who, if somebody's paying for something like this, is probably a really big fan, or even ask, uh, you know, my brother who I know is, is very familiar with all this stuff. <clears throat> There's another question from BN. Um, I'm always worried that um, my pillbox will chip away with wear. How can I prevent this? Um, one thing that you can do that helps is to dye the leather underneath. Um, so I talked about that in a recent video from the last, like, excuse me, six months or so. Um, I'm trying to think of the title of the video. Um, but it has a Jordan 1 on the thumbnail, these Jordan 1 Atmoses, and, um, I've worn the shoes a ton. I actually have them here. Can you switch to, um, just main camera, if you don't mind? Well, actually, this one's fine. If you're on the split screen, I think I can, you might just have to direct me if I'm positioned well here or not. Yep, just getting closer to it. Okay. So the toe boxes on these were white. They're painted black and they held up really well. The area where anything did eventually happen is the finisher was the first thing that failed. So the finisher has started to, uh, I'm not going to say crack off, chip off. I'm going to say almost like flake off. Let me know. I think do you feel like you're able to see that? Here, I'll do the, the cement print the looks in focus. Camera. Yeah. It is in focus. Okay, so you can kind of see here yeah. that little straggly. That's the finisher starting to rub off. Now, I imagine I could probably apply more finisher, but the paint is completely intact. So I'm good with that, even though the shoes are creased. And um, so what I did is I dyed the leather black underneath and... Um, then paint it on top. I'm trying to search up, let me see what the name of that video was. That video we ended up titling Want to Make Custom Shoes Actually Durable? Here's how. And the thumbnail is that one, in case you're interested in uh, checking it out. Okay, we are on to the highlights on Janimba. I'm going to label this. Can you go to the character screen first, please, Brittany? Thank you. Three, two. I need pink. Okay. You know, I just realized something, so I made a good point. Going back to Madam Web, because I'm really upset about that. <laughs> they, someone said that they had, there was a bad take yeah. on the actual Madam yep. Web, I guess, for series. And that's the stuff we don't know about. Don't, so we don't know, know if it's close yeah. to the source material. Yeah, no and idea. a lot of people said she was supposed to be like an old woman, right. I believe. Oh, yeah, I remember you saying that. And people say it was way too blatant that it was like a Pepsi promo, you know. What? Remember they literally the tower that falls at the end? It's literally a Pepsi sign. It's, people get really it. mad at stuff like that. Um did I, did I pull something out? No, but that's the charger. So plug oh, that. I'm not you know how to do it? Did I that's a laptop charger. It came up. <clears throat> yeah, when we came out of uh Madam Webb. And Brittany and my son Dexter, who saw it, said they liked it so much. I said, okay, just just don't tell anybody because <laughs> people are not going to be happy that you like that movie. Yeah, so that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know her backstory or anything. So as an outsider coming in completely blind, I liked it. I need some. So forgive me. Be nice, okay? <laughs> I think I'm going to need a little lilac. 
Mm -hmm. I'm on over. I wonder if any girls have tried. I'm sure they have. Using Angelus on their, uh, how it works on their nails. I try to really don't, but why would they do that? I'm sure somebody's tried. No, why would they do that? It would chip right off. And it, no. They wouldn't do that. I would break Is it in. thicker or thinner than, uh, nail polish paint? Um. I, I would say it's definitely thinner. I think nail polish is a lot thicker than that. Nail polish is thicker? Yeah. Okay. B said he loves Bert despite her taste in movies. That says a lot. Listen. That's for sure. And hey, she Listen, loves me despite my taste in movies. I have so. great taste in movies. Dylan <laughs> is the one. I have bad. I have admittedly bad taste yeah, in movies. I have great taste in movies. Okay, forgive me. I had that one slip up. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna bring my up to my nail cast and be like, can you can you paint my nails this Imagine. exact color? I don't think they can do that though. They don't ever mix colors, they only use them straight out of the bottle. Oh, well, like they'll do like a little like add white to stuff or Okay, then they would they then yeah. I'm sure they can mix them. What's your favorite awful movie? All right. Um, <laughs> gosh, I don't know. Because as soon as I say something, like, other better ones are going to come to me. I think... What's really bad that I like? Man. Did you ever see that um, Winnie the Pooh movie? I saw that. You did? I saw that. <laughs> Loved it. I didn't, Me but um, did no. Um, gosh. Favorite bad movie. Man, <laughs> Favorite bad movie. Gosh. Hmm. It'll come to me. What was that one with Lindsay Lohan? It was a Christmas movie we just saw on Netflix. We didn't even finish it. It was yeah. so bad. Yeah, that, was, that was a rough. That was a rough watch. Yeah, we were like on our phones most of that. Yeah. Um. This I think is gonna need a lot more mist. Yeah. Anyone but you wasn't good. I didn't like that movie. I thought you liked it. It was it was it was a good bad movie. Yeah, perfectly fine. I'm trying to think of what's a movie that offends people that I like. <laughs> I don't know. Galaxy Guest? Is that a movie? Galaxy... Maybe Galaxy Quest? Which I don't even know what that is. I mean, you could say it's like... a movie from 1999. Galaxy Quest? Never heard of it. Me either. Oh, it has um, Tim Allen. Okay. Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney. Sigourney. What did I say? Sigourney. Sorry, wow. Um, Sam Rock. That's a hard name to read. Sigourney. Wait, what is it? Sigourney? S Sigourney. Was it? And I said Sigourney? I think so. <laughs> I don't even remember. Because it looks like Journey. Yeah, no, it's hard to read. It's long. There's a lot of I letters. I thought that was her name. Because I've seen her in so many Oh, movies. she's in so I much never, stuff. I thought that was her name. Wow, that's, that's a wild name. Justin Long is in it. 
Damn, young Justin Long, Brandon huh? Wilson. Bye, Joel. Thanks for all the questions and joining us. He said it, John said it's a classic. He has a lot. Mm. A lot of good people in there. Yeah. Looks like it's a funny movie. <clears throat> Patrick likes to watch Hallmark movies. <laughs> I respect that. Like, I think people would say the scary movies are bad movies. And, like, those first two. Like, Leprechaun. Yeah. Leprechaun. But, like, scary movie. Like, the ones where they make fun oh, of. Oh, that's what Those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, people would say those are bad. And I think based out of nostalgia, I was just such the bright age for those to be. I mean, those are huge parts of, like, pop culture. The guy with the My Germs and stuff. Like, come on. Someone said 30 minutes or less. I've never seen that. I think that's a Nicolas Cage movie. I think. Mm, no. No? Yeah, it's Jesse Eisenberg, Danny McBride, Nick Thornton. Okay. I've never uh, even seen that. Maybe I'm just relating. 30 minutes or less. It's maybe. from 2011. Okay. Maybe I'm just relating to Gone in 60 Seconds. Maybe I'm thinking that just sounds like it, so that's why I said Nick Cage. Is this M O N I Z money customs? Uh -huh. Art said, What is nice. going on, my brother? Howdy. Special Officer Doofy, exactly. Killer clowns from outer space. That just, uh, <laughs> I showed it to my son recently. That, what? Yeah. No, That's the one they always have at Spirit Halloween, the clowns. Oh. That's Killer Clowns. Did he like it? The Popcorn Blaster. Oh, yeah. He liked it? Oh, yeah. They're releasing a video game, too, and he's been begging to play it. Or when it comes out. Yeah, Killer Clowns. That's a bad movie. <laughs> what was that movie we just saw? Cocaine Bear? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And weird. Cocaine bear. So dumb. Like but oddly, I felt like I had to finish it. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, awesome premise. All right. That looks pretty, pretty good might need to go a little bit lighter still we'll see there's a new leprechaun coming out there is yeah number nine there it's getting uh it's getting a reboot oh my god leave it alone it's getting a reboot jennifer aniston's coming back no it's not nah, you know how many millions you'd have to throw at her i think it'd be worth it don't you think if they paid her like 30 million i think it would be worth it I mean, horror movies can make their money back because they're usually such low budget that if they spend thirty million on getting her to do it, could they make thirty million back? I think they could. She wouldn't do it. Yeah, I don't, I can't, yeah. What was the last thing she's, I don't even know what last one she's been in. She's a part of this big Apple show that is like one of the, I just know it's like one of the most expensive TV shows ever made called like The Morning Show, her and uh, Reese Witherspoon. Oh, I want to watch that. Yeah. It has sort of mixed reviews as far as I know. Okay. Britney's favorite movie has Jennifer Aniston. 
Brittany's favorite movie is 2006's <laughs> The Breakup. I'm so impressed that you know what year it was. That's really how old that movie is? Yeah. 2006? Great movie. I'm looking that up. Oh my god, you're right. I love that movie. It's a great movie. That's a good question. How long does it take to pick the shoe for the Right My Sneakers? And do you contact the chosen people? Yeah, so um, if you are talking about uh, reviewing your customs, uh, which which I did post on our Instagram not too long ago that we were taking some submissions, it depends sort of which series you're talking about. I'm going to assume reviewing your customs just because that's uh, the most requested one. Um, I have not made final selections. I've just been busy with a few ongoing projects, and um, I have not selected yet. But yes, I, I would reach out to all of the people to be featured, discuss all the delivery stuff with them. And yeah, I should be doing that probably next week. So yeah, if anybody's interested in being uh, featured on Reviewing Your Customs, send me an email. Um, put Reviewing Your Customs in the subject line so I can categorize it in my mailbox. And uh, yeah, uh, two episodes that we're looking to do our first timers. So if you have painted a shoe for the first time and you have your first custom shoe, um, I would love to review those. There's so much that we can learn from your first shoe. And um, cleats. I want to do for the first time an all cleats edition. Patrick asks if there's a deadline. No deadline. Just I'll probably be selecting some point next week. So But if you're not cleats or first timers, you can absolutely still um, submit. We'll, we'll, I, I film multiple episodes at a time, so there will be at least one episode where it, it doesn't have a particular theme or anything like that. I'm creative. I am not a Friends fan. I've actually never have watched an episode. I just really love Anna Branson and the movie she does, surprisingly. <laughs> she was pretty funny in those Horrible Bosses movies. Yeah, she's I, like the touchy dentist. She, and like she's done movies with Adam Sandler. You know, I love Adam Oh, yeah. Sandler. Yeah, yeah. So. I haven't seen the movies they've done. I, I watched the... Um, I watched it when it came out on Netflix because everyone was talking about it. I know they've done two. I is it called Murder Mystery? Yeah. Is that the name I'm of it? Yeah. Okay, so I watched it when it came out. This is years back. And um I think it's one of those movies where you like how can I describe it? It's hard to categorize its tone or subgenre. So it's like it's Adam Sandler. Is it supposed to be a comedy? Is it supposed to be a actual murder mystery is it supposed to be a thriller and i think i went in a little confused and maybe with some preconceived notions you're just an adam sandler hater I'm so i um <laughs> i didn't love it i don't think he likes anything he's done i like some stuff adam sandler does we watched that uh that bar mitzvah movie that was oh yeah that was a good movie that was a good movie with his uh one or both of his daughters? I don't yeah, know if it was both. Oh, both? Okay. Mm -hmm. That was good. Well... What's funny is the bar mitzvah that I worked at, that I worked last year, made that Adam Sandler movie's bar mitzvah look small. So... I feel like that movie was like my one of my first times seeing what a bat mitzvah might look like, and then this one I attended. It was even bigger than that movie. It, like the bat mitzvah I went to, I was like, "Oh, this feels like it's out of a movie." Yeah, because the pictures. Yeah. Um, and from what you told me. Yeah. Because they even they created like a whole like a giant shoebox for you to work on. Yeah, 
It was like it was crazy. Bananas. I'm like, wait, and not not even that, not even that. It was in their home, wasn't it? Yeah. So their house was so big. Well, they, it it was they they built a a ginormous structure outside of the house. Which is bananas. Yeah. Okay. That you, that you have that much crazy. space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, your yard's that big to build another building in it? Like, come on. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, that's wow. I'm really sad that I didn't get to go to that. Um, usually I, I get to go to all the events you do, and I feel like I missed out big Yeah, time that was a cool one. With that one, That was a cool so. one. <laughs> Adam Sandler's Space Man movie was weird. I gotta look that up. I don't know what that is. Yeah, see, like, I hear something like that, and it just, like, I, I gotta be honest, it doesn't incredibly excite me. Like, oh, Adam Sandler is doing a space movie, like... I did not even hear about that. That just came out this year. I On Netflix, right? Yeah. I feel like I heard about it, and... Because his movies get these big budgets, because he's Adam Sandler, and... Wow. What, um, we just saw a space movie, didn't we? We saw a space movie? I was just trying to think, what movie was that? You're not thinking of Madame Web again? <laughs> what the heck was that movie? I mean, it wasn't recent. I don't know. I lost my train of thought. Hmm. In a new alien movie this year? Alien? Yep. That's with, um... There's a lot of them, but Sigourney Weavers. Sigourney Weavers. She's the... One of the best final girls of all time. Ellen Ripley. There's not many movie franchises that have had more iconic directors than the Alien franchise. Ridley Scott, the original, James Cameron, the second one, everybody's least favorite, the third one, David Fincher. So I'm excited, and I like this director, Fede Alvarez. What movies are you? Alien movies. Oh. You know if you've seen any? Yeah, I saw the one with the Sigourney. The original? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't remember it. Yeah. I remember some, like, the actual alien. Yeah, thing. when it burst out of the chest, yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, how many hours do you have in that shoot so far? Um, if I had to put a very loose guess, maybe, this will probably end up being like an 80 hour pair, if I had to guess. On uh, just that one. No, on the between the two shoes here. So I actually haven't shown the shoes in a while. So for anybody who's tuning in, here's where we're at so far. This is the uh, I have a Dragon Ball theme. So this shoe I have Janimba, and on this side I can't remember if it's Gogeta or Vegito. I think this one is Vegito. I hope. Um, the background took me a long time. It did, to be honest. Probably about 15 hours per character. And then over on this shoe, the left shoe, we have, I believe he's Super Boo Gohan Absorbed. And on this side, we have, that's either Vegito or Gogeta. I'm not sure which one's which. But both of these characters are 
pretty close to done. And like I said, they probably took me about 15 hours each. And this background was a whole lot simpler than the other one. So. That's where we're at. Vegeta was in blue. Okay, I, I need to remember that. So, Gogeta and Janimba on this ship. Gogeta is on the red shoe. Do you ever have time to make shoes for yourself or as a gift for friends and family? No. <laughs> why, why did you answer that so fast? No. I didn't have to think about it. No, I don't have time. That was so aggressive. <laughs> you know, I, I can answer this too. I have a lot of friends that, um, you know, will reach out to me and ask me, if Dylan will do a pair of shoes for them because they know and have already tried and attempted to reach out to um reach out to Dylan themselves to ask and you know he's just so busy he can't get to everybody. Um and it's just thankfully you're you know, thank God you're busy and you yeah can't take on a lot of these little projects. But back yeah. in the day you would. Yeah. When you had totally. time and you know, it would build up your portfolio absolutely so um, absolutely and i it, it, it's i i don't like saying it because it's definitely not meant to come across as too good for anything it's absolutely not that it's purely a matter of how busy i am and um because i enjoy this so much I enjoy it because I get to do new things that, like, there's some stuff that I love. I love doing primarily one of one stuff because it's always a new challenge. Like, doing something like this, repainting this character, if somebody says, inevitably, you know, when I post these and somebody will say, well, how much for that exact shoe? I have absolutely zero desire. I have negative desire to want to repaint this, you know? My hope is just that somebody sees this and then says, oh, I saw those Dragon Ball ones. How much for me to get a different um, character design, you know what I mean? Whether that's different Dragon Ball characters or, uh, you know, sometimes they see something like this and, oh, can you do a Ninja Turtles pair for me? You know, something unrelated, but, oh, I... You do really cool character stuff. What about from my favorite show or whatever? Um, Creator for Custom said, um, if you'd be willing to get on a call and discuss how to use the line work stencil on the Cricut software, like on Zoom, Discord, or FaceTime. One sec. <clears throat> One sec, because I got some colors stretching over a couple different panels.
Okay. Um, so yeah, in, in terms of if you needed help with something specific, I'm, I'd be happy to uh, answer some of your questions or or things of that nature. I actually do a fair bit of uh, consulting with a lot of different artists where maybe they want to chat for an hour or two, be able to do a FaceTime call, talk about, um, you know, something specific that they're struggling with in their business and things like that. So um, yeah, I, I do a fair bit of that. If it's just a simple question, I'm I'm certainly more than happy to, you know, answer those um, anytime without a without any um, you know any fear or any, anything like that. Um, but if you wanted to sign up for, you know, uh, hour session, couple hour session, anything of that nature, just reach out to me anytime. I think this color still is going to need to be quite a bit lighter. As I see it's starting to dry in some areas. I have a question for you. Sure. <clears throat> Who would be three guests at your dinner table? Hmm. Three guest question, eh? Yeah. I would go. Dead or alive. Dead or alive. I'm going. <laughs> I don't think I've ever asked you that question before. <laughs> I I th I think I've been asked it before, and so I don't want to have a totally different answer because I feel like for a question like this, like you should. No, I. Think that's you true. should want because to have that was what whoever you chose then was that what was going on in your life yeah. maybe yeah that for that yeah. era of your life so it could change um yeah i don't know i feel like i probably said like michael jordan my dad and mm. i don't know i don't know who i would have said who else I might have said? Michael Myers. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know what? I actually I, I like that you said that because now I actually think like a like a really good filmmaker would be somebody like a Christopher Nolan, a Denny Villeneuve would be would be uh, somebody awesome to chat with. That's a good one. I don't know if I have one favorite film. Ooh, Ben Affleck. Ah, yeah. I'm doing Ben Affleck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. Ben Affleck. I think he's a kick-ass filmmaker, actor. So, yeah, I would do Ben Affleck. Yeah, I'll invite my dad and Mike, too. There we go. Who would you pick? <laughs> um, I would pick... Florence Nightingale. <laughs> okay. Why? Because I didn't like you will never get closer to you like today. <laughs> um Why, what was she like the first to do? She's the one who like paved the way for nursing, like sanitation. Okay. Um kind of just like a basically she's like the what the role of a nurse is. When she started. Is she like considered the first nurse? I don't know her story. No, okay. First nurse is like she's just the one who put standards. In Revolutionized place. it. Yeah. Okay. Um. Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. And Adam Sandler. <laughs> what a weird group of people. It'd be, it'd be a movie. <laughs> 
Are you a sneakerhead? What are your grails if so? So yeah, I got into customizing because I had a love for shoes. Um, my grails... Well, first off, my favorite shoe of all time. So this, you know, you could consider it a grail. It's just a pair of... Uh, is the black cement Jordan 3s. That's my favorite shoe. But grails, if we're talking like a huge white whale, something that is just an absurd amount of money, is probably the Paris, Nike SB Paris Dunk Lows. Those would probably be, if I could get my hands on anything, or the, the Freddy Krueger Dunk Lows, those would be um, amazing to have. The What the Dunks, probably any of those Dunk Lows. SBs are the thing that I think... Um, really made me into uh just a, a super crazed sneaker fan uh let's see i think we still gotta go lighter you definitely gotta make a pair for yourself you have yeah i got some i have more than I can count shoes that I've made for myself. I but. think that, I mean, not, they're not the craziest thing ever, but like you have a pair of Vans that you wear all Oh, yeah. Time. Oh, yeah. Pretty, like you've painted on. Oh, yeah. And I think you've gotten the most compliments on those, too. Yeah. And it's like a, it was a simple design. Yep. That you did. They don't really look painted. They look like they could have came well, from, you I know? I feel like that's easy to um, accomplish with Vans. Yeah. Because of that material. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. They don't look painted, you're right. <laughs> Creator for custom says that he would have the Dalai Lama. Adam from Adam and Eve. Mm. And his 50s. There you go, that'd be interesting. <laughs> squad. What? I said that's a squad. <laughs> Patrick said, I sent a pair to my first influencer the other day. Yet, so I'm super nervous. Oh, nice. Tell us about it, Patrick. What yeah. kind of shoes were they? Who's the influencer? Good on you, man. You gotta spend money to make money, right? Yep. I did one last year. I did a pair for um, one of my favorite YouTubers. I did a, a video about it. His name's uh, Max Tuning. And... Um, he originally made like fitness content on uh, YouTube. That's sort of how he got his start. Still does, and now he has uh, a couple different businesses, and one of them is a sour candy company, and um, it's grown really big. So if anybody's familiar with the candy sour strips, he's the uh, the owner and founder of it and i've been watching him for a lot of years on youtube i've always said i wanted to do it'd be cool to do a pair of shoes for him so last year i just finally um i've sent him like i've sent him a couple dms in the past saying hey you know what's your shoe size can i um make you uh a pair of shoes and um i never never saw them unfortunately and so um, he has an, a, uh, an assistant, and I said, well, I'm going to reach out to his assistant and uh, try to get his shoe size, and I was able to. And she helped me set it up that I could send it to him. And he, um, it's really cool. I see him uh, post them. He has them hung up in his office, like with this really cool display. And so sometimes when he posts, pictures in his office and things like that. I get to see him in the background and stuff. It's really, really cool. So. He posted them on his uh, Instagram story and tagged me. So it was really cool. Okay. That color's looking good. We're moving along here. How do you exactly 
exactly color match the character. Sometimes it's difficult to get the right color as the character. Totally. So that is most likely the topic I will try to be talking about when I, I'll have a video, a standalone YouTube video on these. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll just try to talk through mm -hmm. some of my methods and stuff. But, I mean, even as you guys can see, for anybody who's um, been tuned in today, that it just takes a while and you end up fine tuning things. And I might look at this color, which is, you could say, the highlights of the character. And I might say, well, it's still not light enough. Oh, I need to add a little bit more. I want it to be a little bit more pink. I want it to be a little more warm or something like that. Um, which I very well might say once this color is dry. And um, there are some resources. There's a really cool website if you search up uh, Blick color mixer i did a two minute tuesday on this topic probably a few months back it's a video i think it's called create any color in seconds and there's this really cool resource online where you can upload an image and then with like an eyedropper tool you can select a color and from there it'll tell you what paints you would need to mix together to make that color now the only issue is it's not Angelus paints, it's it's by Golden Acrylics, so their colors are definitely different. But at least you might be able to click, let's just say this shade of purple from the character, and it would tell you, oh, it's it's actually quite pink, or it's actually quite blue in some cases, or whatever. So that can be a good resource. Um, but it just comes with time and mixing a lot of bad paint. Truthfully. Um, Patrick just joined in. <clears throat> um, hands are up wanting me to do a pair of CB Air Maxes to match the parachutes from the original Jumanji movie. Oh, that's, that's cool. cool. Do you remember what those look like? Mm, the, what kind of shoes from the Jumanji yeah, movie? Sure. What happens in the movie? Do right? they get stuck in the river? What happens with the shoes? When they're... Well, the beginning of the movie okay. is like they they this family owns a shoe company. Oh. And then there's um this man there that okay. one of the workers he's like he he wants to introduce like a Jordan looking a shoe that looks like a Jordan. He's oh. Like, hey, I think that these will look uh, not Jordan. I said not Jordan. Maybe they're Texas. Okay. Um. He's like I think that these are the new thing. It's yeah. Like, cool and like yeah. They they're making like leather shoes or something. Yeah. And, us down put that away throw it away yeah ended up getting the, the actual shoe he created got stuck in like the machine or something oh okay let me see um that's funny because i feel like jumanji is maybe like one of those tv movies where you can hop in at any point but like for some reason i can't oh it looks like that think of the beginning oh okay yeah 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 does that look familiar to you? I know you haven't seen that yeah those are from the 90s movies. yeah that's i can't i don't know the name of that shoe but air or something yeah, I would forget that that was a part of the movie because, like, you know, you, you see clips of it and it's always of the one that they're playing the actual game. Yeah. But at the beginning of it, it's actually pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, it's funny. Like I said, Jumanji is one of those movies where you feel like it just starts off with the kids getting dropped off at... How does the story go? Do they get dropped off at... Are they at, they're getting babysat? Or they're at an aunt's and uncle? What is, no, what's so the story? The original boy who was part of the parish family. Okay. Um, he finds the game. Okay. And he introduces it to his friends. And his friends are like, oh, what the heck is this game? And they play it. Okay. And then they end up getting sucked into the game. And then, so this is all, it takes back in, like, the past time. Like, I don't know, it was the 60s or whatever, whatever, whatever time frame it was. Okay. And they all get sucked in, but they ended up all making it back out of the game, except for, um, 
This is the Robin Williams movie? Yeah, except for Robin Williams. He gets stuck in the game as a kid and he ends up staying in the game until he's a full-grown adult. But um, but the, his friend ends up making out of it. And, and yeah, that's the movie. You need to rewatch it. It's wow. You don't remember that? I'm probably butchering the storyline. I remember that. <laughs> no, I none of that is and coming then, so to me. So the game gets the the parents are so upset because they lost their son. Okay. And then no one believes the girl because it's like crazy. Like, what do you mean he got stuck in the game? Where's my son? Blah blah blah. And then so they take the game and like they throw it away or whatever. Oh, that and then is. And ends up finding a family in the future. Okay. Now many years have passed. Okay. Like Twenty years have passed, and then a kid finds the game again. And then the whole storyline happens all over again. So now remind me, there's a brother and sister. And what is their relation, if any, to Robin Williams? None. They just happen to find Okay. The How about the woman so to Robin Williams? Is that, that was like his little girlfriend. Like they were okay. Friends. All right. And but like they ended up like falling in love. But like they were just friends. And she's stuck in the game too? No, she got out of it. She ended up getting in it. Like she ended up like she got like she ran away in time. So when you meet adult Robin Williams, yeah. He's in the game? Yeah, he had been in the game for 20 years. Holy cow. For that, is, that, is, that is not making and then so like when And so when the kids meet Robin Williams, when he finally gets out of the game, he's like, what What year is it? Where's my mom? And Where's he's a kid? Dad? No, he's a grown-up. He's okay. A grown -up, but his parents had already died. His parents are gone. Oh, that's sad. The house that he, was, that he was living in, um, the new kids are living in it now, and it's like already like it's like worn down and abandoned practically. And then he finds the the girl, his girlfriend, and she's like, "What? You're so it's a good movie. You didn't watch it." Yeah, man, I feel like I've seen maybe I've just seen like the main middle part of Jumanji a million times, but that ending and that beginning are not sounding familiar. I watched that movie so many times as a kid, and I never understood the plot. Like, I, I always, like, would somehow skip that, or, like, ignore that part. And yeah. And wait, wait until they got into the actual movie. Sure. But, like, now as an adult, I'm like, wow, that's actually a really cool storyline. And then the, the whole, the Rock movies, the, the Rock and Kevin Hart, are those just remakes? Are those sequels? What, what, sorry. The Rock movies? The Rock Jumanji. So that that one is like a modern take on the movie. They didn't follow the storyline. Okay, so it's a remake. Yeah. Okay. Patrick said, "Y'all gotta do Jumanji movie night." No, we do because that movie's so good. I think De I think Dexter's old enough now to like that yeah. first one. Oh, someone said, "Don't tell him much to me." I'm sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, I should have warned anybody who hasn't seen the movie. That was gonna ruin it for everybody. I'm sorry. <laughs> she directs the movie. She knows the original script. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It wouldn't be the first movie Brittany's uh, ruined for me. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. So I think I told this story in our last uh, live stream too. Yeah. But I'll tell it again. Because I still haven't <laughs> forgiven <drama>. her. <laughs> Brittany and I are watching Seven. Probably about four or five years ago. <laughs> And the entire time, I hadn't seen it. Had heard good things my whole life. I'm watching it, and I'm saying, from minute one on, I'm like, Brittany, this movie has a grip on me that I feel like I don't even know where it's going, and this is already like an all-timer to me. I'm a huge David Fincher fan, too. And it feels like... Fincher. Well, I feel like after seeing that, that made me be like, okay, I need to see everything this guy's done. Love Gone Girl. I think that was the first one I saw from him. Um, so we're watching Seven. Spoiler alerts, if you've never seen Seven. But we're getting to the end of the movie. But at least like five times throughout the movie, I'm telling Brittany, man, this movie is... This is the real deal. This is... This is a banger. And we get to the end when they have Kevin Spacey in the back of the car. And then that's when they get out to like the field or desert. Is it a, whatever it is? Mm -hmm. Not desert, right? Yeah, is it the it desert? Was the field. It was the just, yeah, the field, whatever. And Brittany says, huh, I've seen this movie before. Her head's in the box. 
<laughs> and I'm like, I look over at her, just in pure shock. How that we're like two hours in? What do you mean you're just thinking now that you've that you've? Oh my god! How are you just now figuring out that you've seen it? No, I have been telling you throughout the movie. I'm like, oh, this movie looks so familiar. I feel like I've seen this movie. I said that to you. I, I don't know. Seen. And then at the very end, you're like, I've seen this. Sure, heads in the box. And it got uh. It got presented to me two minutes early or whatever. It was still awesome, but... I'm really sorry. Boy, it could have been uh, even better. What a great movie. Sorry, sorry Clutter Wave. I missed your comment. Um, had to step away for a while. What is this tool you're working with, Dylan? I'm sorry. I don't even know what time you commented that, Clutter Wave, but... Yeah, let me know. Is it yeah. just is it just this brush I'm holding, or uh, did I have another tool? We were, we were, I was like in too deep, and then G recap. So I. creative work custom he said um just the same four to five hours so far and just the <laughs> and that's just the purple skin shape yeah <laughs> i know see man i wish i was fast and i won't lie that i definitely am, uh i'm a terrible multitasker so like live streaming um definitely slows me down just to you know stop and think and answer questions i'm still just trying to you know paint at the same time but um, not a good multitasker so slow down a little bit if i were lucky i might be onto the red if i were working by myself but it still would take still takes a long time <laughs> me said does Brittany know my brother he he told me Bruce Willis was a ghost in the sixth hour. Oh, that movie man. That never hit for me because mm, of it. <laughs> yep. That's one that you don't want to be spoiled. That's fun. Um, dang, I kind of want to finish No Country for Old Men. Did you watch mm, that? No, I haven't seen it, but I know I it's... Uh, yep, yeah, I know it's considered a great one. I need to see it because I know uh, Javier Bardem's performance in there is considered one of the best ever. Did you watch Code 8 Part 2? I don't think I know what that is. I'm going to look it up. Someone asked, um, going back to horrible movies, what's everyone's opinion? <laughs> I just asked you because I feel like you watched like years of scary movies and you're like, that's how I'm going to um, oh. oh, it's a Netflix movie. Code 8. Or if Robbie, I don't know. Robbie ML, do I know who that is? Code 8 or 2. Go to the cast, let me see. Who's Robbie ML? The first guy. Oh, okay. It's an action thriller? Huh. Let's see. I think you're pretty. Do I think it's light enough? I think it needs to be a little. Sometimes you got to look from afar, you know? I think it's got to be a little lighter. Did you ever watch Killer Bean? Killer Bean, I have not seen that one. <laughs> have you heard of it? I've heard of it, I believe. <laughs> I don't know what the exact cover looks like. I hope it's a 
Let's see. Let me see. Killing me now. Yeah, Killing that. me in the center of the mission and being found. I, I'm, I'm, I think this is the movie this person's talking about, but it looks weird. I need a refill. So, tell me what kind of brush are you using? Okay. I gotta refill my white. Go ahead and drop a like on the stream if you guys haven't already. Oh, um, what am I using? So this is just a, uh, did I leave that pack out? No, this is just, uh, the Michaels detail brushes that you can buy in the value pack from like Craft Smart. They come in like a four pack. They're called liners or brown brushes sometimes, but a value pack. Four of them. It's like five, six bucks. So that's what we're using here. Housemaid89, congrats on your bears getting some of my eagles, Bayard, and Swift. Mmm, yeah. Hope you get to do some work for them. We did, yes. The bears are, it's an exciting off season. We got a new quarterback coming to town. Yep, hopefully I'll get to work with some of them next year for, uh, maybe throughout the season or for, uh, my cause, my cleat. It's pretty crazy, but I think I've worked with the Bears for, I think, five or six years now. Um, that's one that I wish I could uh, teleport back in time and tell young Dylan to. He'd be like, what the heck? JC Texas Art. Dylan, when did you watch your first? When did you watch your favorite anime and why is it Dragon Ball? Ah, so I uh, unfortunately haven't watched uh, any complete series of any animes or anything like that. Um, I did watch a little bit of Dragon Ball when I was a kid, probably about 2003 ish era, I'd say. Um, but that would have been the last time. So, I've never, uh, I've never completed any animes. I need to give one a try. I know somebody was really recommending One Piece, but I think there's like a thousand episodes, and I, I got commitment issues, man. Signing up for something like that. 
<clears throat> Man, I'm going to butcher these names, but... Um, is this the is it the goal to match your reference to a T? I think I'm missing the vision, but the coloring and shading for Janem, Janemba yeah. is in a different style than the Boo, Vegeta, and Gogeta. 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 Let me see. That's Gogeta, I'm sorry. It's a I think I'm missing, but the coloring and shading for Geneva is different. Is in a different style than Boo Vegeta. No, so interestingly enough, Patrick, it's it's the exact same. I mean, so if I just look at um, uh, Boo here, for example, let me make sure. So I would have I have like this main pink that I laid down for the majority of you know his head and his arms that you see there. And then I do, you know, lighter and darker shades of it. So I create like the darker pink, the lighter pinks, and um, I'm just doing that same exact process of, of cell shading for Janimba. And same thing with um, Vegito here. You know, I have the skin color. I know it says Goku, but that's because I took, um, I did a Goku pair last year, had the paint. And uh, then fine-tuned it to match this image. And then, you know, I create the different shades. So, yeah, it is, um, it's definitely the goal to, um, is the goal to match your reference to a T. Yeah, so you can see my reference on screen. Of course, like the PNG image that you're seeing on screen has colors that um, look a little different. But I also have right here me that I'm using as a reference, an iPad nearby. And that's how I'm, you know, looking at the colors and, and trying to match them. So maybe this might look, again, like the iPad screen is so bright that it gets a little blown out. But yeah, that's what I'm going uh, based off of to match. I like this question. I know you can't on live, but what would you listen to when you're painting? So I actually like to watch movies. For the most part, um, I listen to uh, I listen to some podcasts as well. But I'm not a uh, I really don't listen to a ton of um, music or silence when I paint. I like something that I can sort of get lost into, like a movie. Especially movies that I've seen before. You know, I love to rewatch movies while I paint or a, a TV series. As I mentioned a little earlier, I just restarted uh, Prison Break that I saw years back. And then, good majority of the time, I just love to uh, to rewatch some of my favorite horror movies and whatnot, and then I'm I'm one of those people that likes to then go and listen to podcasts and watch YouTube videos of people who have reviewed the movie or talking about the movie more or learn behind the scenes stuff on movies. I'm super fascinated with that. Name the podcast. Don't be shy. Oh gosh, uh, podcast that I listen to for just general podcasting. I like uh, I listen to maybe like a third or half of the Joe Rogan episodes, uh, and then sports podcast. My favorite one is Bill Simmons podcast. But then on YouTube for for movie stuff, there's a there's a movie reviewer Cody Leach that I really like. Good morning from Australia. Australia, very cool. Probably the next day there. Good afternoon from Illinois. Yep. Rico Slav, do you have a favorite stand-up comedian you like to watch? Ah, man, I don't have one set favorite, but I'm trying to think of maybe whose who's stand-ups have made me laugh the most. Um, gosh, 
No, I don't have one set favorite. We actually don't. Like, we don't watch a ton of stand up. Which is or, so funny because yeah. my friend's sister, she yeah. watches a lot. They and they go to a ton. Yeah, and she's always recommending comedians for us, but um, yeah. we probably don't. We should. Yeah, we should. We always are looking for things to watch. We know they have a lot of specials. I know, on especially on Netflix. Yeah. Do you have any recommendations for us? Yeah, let us know. Let us know. Oh, yeah, but, like, just people that I'll see on TikTok, like, some of their bits are funny. Like, I think Andrew Schultz is funny. John says it's Wednesday, 7.45 a.m. Damn. That's so weird. It's not Wednesday, it's Tuesday. Yeah. Patrick says, definitely don't watch One Piece. The pacing is frustrating. If you have commitment issues, Shining Boots or Full Metal. What's that? What do you oh, mean? Full, I've heard some people recommend Full Metal, too. The podcast? Um, is no, it's anime. Oh, One Piece is an anime. Gotcha. And th there's like a thousand episodes. I'm surprised you're the first person that I've heard say the mentioned the pacing i actually thought people say that it's like a i don't know i feel like i've heard a lot of people say it's like a breeze to get there or... Did you ever watch the Comedy Central roast? Oh, yeah, we watched some of those. We watched, like, I know we watched, like, the Bieber one. Who else did we see? They got rid of them because Creative Workhouse Wings opened their bridge and said, Yeah, I don't, do I don't think they have. Who, do, who else did we see, like, a roast of? Did we see a roast of maybe. I remember the Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber, maybe Pam Anderson, really? maybe Bob Saget, maybe. R. Was, R. was there one of Donald Trump? Or was he always just a guest? Yeah, we saw some of those. Yeah, Bob Saget, that's crazy. I don't know why, but like I, I don't like those. They make me feel really bad. I know it's all in good fun. Yeah. And like they signed up for it. Yeah. But it hurts my feelings. Yeah. <laughs> I think we saw Caitlyn Jenner. Oh, uh, see, I think okay, Caitlyn Jenner yeah, got roasted. Like those are just like easy targets. Yeah. Like, don't be mean. Don't be mean. Way said Marquise Brown Lee is pretty good for one of the comedians. Okay. What is your must-have item on your desk when you're painting? Like, what do you have to have every time you paint? Like, you can't, you can't do it without this. And I'm not talking about the obvious things, like get your paintbrush and the paint. Like, yeah, I mean, I guess it's a toothpick. I'm gonna tell your iPad. <laughs> oh yeah, my yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can't paint in silence. I can't. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, my iPad. I, I need entertainment. Um, something to listen to. Something to listen to or watch. Um, do you yeah. have headphones? I do like my headphones because then I can get really locked in. Sometimes I'll tell Brittany, unless it's an emergency. Of course, I got to put my headphones on and I got to lock in. I got to go. Uh, I got to just get into it, you know? One. Yeah. Those headphones stress me out. <laughs> and then, yeah, Brittany will be like shouting. And I'm like, listen, you got to call me. You need to. I've thrown things at your head. Yeah. I, I, I got to be locked in here, okay? Custom Creations by J Mart. I stress myself out with True Sky and Wild as paint. And oh, yeah, that's paint. I can relate to that so bad. I needed, I had to stop listening. Yeah, Brittany had a true crime kick for a few years. Oh, my God. I realized, I'm like, oh, I'm, I feel like really anxious and scared all the time. And I'm like, oh, I think it's the podcast I'm listening yeah. to. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I think that thing that we saw that people recommended on TikTok is, like, kind of true crime, Brittany, the, like, Peacock show. Mm -hmm. Let us know if anybody's seen it. I want to say it's called Apples Never Fall or Apples Will Fall or Apples, something Apples is in the title. And it's a Peacock show. Just came out and people are saying it's good. I just looked at it Sorry, I, I think it's like apples never fall. All right, I'm good with uh, yeah, that. Apples. apples never fall. Let us know if you've uh, seen it. Um, I think I missed one spot. Let's see. Colorways, shout out to the wifey hanging in there five hours. Oh, she's a real one. Man. She's a real one. <laughs> Drop a like on the stream for Brittany if you haven't already, guys. Come on now. Adam Marshall, they're the best there is. Awesome work always. Thanks, Adam. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, thank you. I think Adam's joining us from the UK. I believe. Adam, can you confirm or deny? All right. Uh, let's do. The purple is actually like a huge chunk of the character here. So as we move into the red, there's a there's a little bit less to do. Just a little bit. That red color that we have here, this was actually pretty tricky to make. I ended up actually needing a lot more neon orange than expected. Thank you, B. Inspire her joy for Madden Web. Yep, not letting that go. Let's see. We're gonna get this red ready. 
plenty of that skin color made. To be dreading the eyes, honestly. I drew Dragon Ball a lot as a kid, and the eyes are the hardest part aside from the obvious feet and hands. Well, thankfully, I don't have to. Uh, I mapped it out to not have to do hands or feet. No, not necessarily. Um, okay, so let's take a look. <clears throat> Creative work. Um, did you hand paint the base colors for this before lifting the line work pencil? Um, ask me the question again. Did you hand paint the base colors for this? before lifting the line work. I did, yeah. So if you were to go back to the beginning of the stream, um, when I had just purple, red, and um, white laid down, I have the entire line work stencil laid in, and then I would hand paint the purple sections, hand paint the red sections, and hand paint the uh, white for the gloves area, and then peel off the stencil. Okay. What colors am I going to need? Probably going to need red, maybe brick, scarlet red, maybe terracotta. Sometimes there are certain colors when you have a lot that are just like completely off your radar. So like this one, it's I can tell that the paint's actually old, so I don't even want to use it or it's dried up. But there's this color autumn red, which I think would really come in handy here. But I don't have any. I'm not sure if I have a backup. Um, so I think I'll have to be using some other ones. Let me just check if I do. Hey, John, popping in for a short while before I head off to university. What's up, man? Coming in from Australia, too. Man. Let's see here. Let's go with a little bit of red. some terracotta. <laughs> no lame customs. Yo, Dylan, what up? I did my first character art thanks to you, remember? I was one of your students. The shoes look dope as always. Oh, that's awesome, Nolan. Yeah. We were just, I was just saying how, uh, funny enough, Nolan, I don't know if you caught it, that you're one of the people that recommended a watch one piece to me. And I know your wife got through a lot of it with you. And she was saying, look, I didn't even intend to watch this. And he had it on and it ain't bad. <laughs> Hope you're doing well, man. One Piece? Is that, what is that? It's, um, you said that he's like a pirate, I believe. Oh. You've definitely seen, um some of the images from the show.
Uh, that is looking close. Feel like it still needs to be a wee bit darker. We'll add in a little bit more of this terracotta. Lay that in and see how it looks. Monkeys. Is that the world famous pirate says that he hid treasure and if someone finds it, they become the king of the pirates. Mm. I don't think I've ever heard of this. Mm. Is it on Netflix? I want to say it's on Netflix yeah. now. Yeah. And they just made like a live action adaptation of it. And I want to say people liked the uh, live action. I think it was well received. I know my brother liked it. Interesting. Him and Dexter were watching it. What the heck? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> my son Dexter is going to get a lot of his uh, pop culture knowledge on, on certain things from... Uh, Thankfully, one of his uncles is very well versed in that entire world. All right, let's lay this in. Let's see how this looks. Ooh. Oh, first try might be good. Oh, that's nice. Might need a little more brown, we'll see. Always gotta let it dry. I have a question. All right. If you could take one crop from any movie set, Oh, what would it be? damn. Okay. All right. I'm trying to convince myself that it's not the original Myers mask. Oh, that's a good one. But, um, I'm just trying to convince myself that it shouldn't be, even Why? though that I think it is. And I think that's what I'd want. That's perfect for you. So, even though it's not in good condition now, it's it's. You seen must, it? Um, I don't think it's been seen in a long time. But um, so the story about it is, uh, mm -hmm. it was used in '78 for the original. They went back three years later to make the sequel, and it was underneath one of the producers' beds. What? And she was a smoker, oh, and oh. the mask got um, uh. Not ruined, but the shape of it, the actor who played him in the second movie, he had a different shaped head, so it ended up um, changing a, a little bit, is how I'll phrase it, and um, now I don't know, I don't know who has it now, but I don't believe it's in, uh, it's a latex, so I think it's deteriorated, Dang. kind of, I over time. You know? One thing about you is I can ask you some random ass facts about me. <laughs> you will somehow know that the mask was underneath somebody's bed yeah, and they were and a she smoker. was a smoker. Deborah that Hill. So funny. And um Yeah, but that would be a sick prop. That would be a cool prop. For sure. I agree. I'm trying to think. Dark Knight's another one of my favorite movies, but I'm can't I don't know a prop from there that maybe his mask. Uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd yeah. be cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, okay, let me think of the something from the Power Rangers. 
Mm. What would be a cool prop? Of course, maybe a helmet or something. Um, a sword. I don't a know, sword. Something like that would be a sick prop. Or... I'm saying from the movie. Oh, okay. That would be that would be the cool. The new movies or main? No, the the '90s movies. Okay. Yes, you know. I would want um, the dudes from the Ivan. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh my god, that'd be um, so cool. I would want the—I don't know if it's a—it's not necessarily a prop, but I would want the the dresses that um the witches wore from Hocus Pocus, the original. Oh, that would I'd be cool, man. Um, and then I'd also would want the vacuum. Um, huh? The vacuum? No, I she writes. Oh, okay. yeah. That'd be cool. That's a good play. one. Um, I think that's it. I say I can think of right now. Those are good ones. I'm surprised you didn't say like you know, he's praying in his name. Ghostface? Ghostface Knight. The phone? Or the phone, the phone. yeah. You know what I really want? Huh. I really want a rotary phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a good throwback rotary phone. <laughs> Absolutely. They don't make them like they used to. Superhero Mount Rushmore. Superhero. Um, yeah, man, I'm boring just because I, I like I haven't seen all of the Marvel movies and stuff. Don't know all the characters, so I mean your basics, Batman, Spider Man. Oh, is that a movie or show? No, Superhero Mount Rushmore, like who are your four favorite superheroes? <laughs> Sorry, you you've been you've been I stuck have, down I here. Haven't... For hours. I would say I said three. Batman, Spider Man. Um Superman. Gosh, like I don't have a fourth that's coming to me. Like I can't say Iron I haven't even seen the Iron Man movies. I can't say Thor. I haven't seen any of the Thor movies. Um, So I only have a three-headed Mount Rushmore. Oh, that's what you concluded? Yeah, I just said I, I, I just haven't seen enough to pick one. That I've only got Batman, Superman, and Spider-Man. Um, mine's Madame Web. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Does she consider this? I guess yeah, she's a superhero. <laughs> yeah. Who's 
Jones a horror guy. Has he seen When Evil Works? Oh, holy smokes. You want to talk about a movie that'll mess you up. These Argentinian folk, man, they're different. It is oh it is one of those. <clears throat> it's a shocking movie. I look it up. Oh, my God. I, I don't even... I don't watch trailers, uh, especially for horror, for horror movies, because yeah. um, they give away a lot, and I love to go into stuff and truly be surprised, and When Evil Lurks is one of those movies. Don't watch it. You have to be like a... You, you got to be into weird stuff to watch that movie, because it is dark and depressing. But the... Uh, I believe he's Argentinian, the filmmaker who made it. I can't think of his name, but I'm hoping uh, I didn't come up with this, but somebody else recommended it. I think it's a great idea. They should let him do the uh, the next Exorcist movies. Get out of a creative rut. I feel like you have um, <clears throat> definitely gone through like when you have like tunnel vision yeah but you see like i feel when people are asking that question yeah. they're more saying get started How and you, get out of the creative? you know like they're like okay i have somebody ordered a dragon ball shoe and i don't know what to do i'm just pretending i've been searching for things for days i'm just pretending that's mm -hmm. the situation mm -hmm. whereas when i get into a rut if I'm painting a portrait yeah. and it's just like, man, this is just not coming out as I'm just stuck. They just take so much longer. It's so hard to do. Um, I'm just struggling, you know, whereas very luckily or thankfully, I just don't run into a lot of situations where I feel like, mm -hmm. oh man, I, I'm just not sure what to do with this um, design. And I definitely feel a part of that is trying to come up with your own style because then in a way, no, literally no matter what theme comes your way, you can put your spin on it. So truly, no matter what, you could name anything. You could name a cereal and I would, and say, Dylan, how would you make a frosted flake shoe? And I would say, okay, well, let me think of what are some of the, uh, what are maybe some of the staples that I like to do with a lot of my designs? Is there a way that I could do, does a gradient make sense for a Frosted Flakes design? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Um, how about, oh, they got Tony the Tiger. Let me do something with the, the tiger stripes, you know? How can I incorporate the tiger stripes into the shoes? That's something that I would love to do. What are some other textures or things like that? You know, could I have milk spilling from the toe box onto the quarter panels? Um... You know, what are what are things like that, staples that I might like to do with any type of design, and how can I incorporate that into this given theme? Um, so trying to have your own style, because then that's almost like a guide for you in any situation, goes a really long way. Um, and then other than that, like just when you're stuck, look up... See what other people have done. I know I mentioned it earlier, but for my process, let's say I'm doing a... Let's say I am doing a frosted flake shoe, truthfully, just because I think that might be a weird one. Let me see. Has anybody else painted uh, custom frosted flake shoes before? What have they done? And, um, okay, if they haven't, has there been... Um, maybe, like, something I'll search up sometimes, too, is frosted flakes wallpaper. And then, you know, you'll get like computer backgrounds of Frosted Flakes and some cool random stuff might come up where that can give you inspiration. You know, maybe it, there's been some fan art that's been created to where you can draw something from. Um, search up stuff like Frosted Flakes merch and see what people have done with that before. And so that's how I go um, about trying to come up with ideas if, if I feel like I can't can't find something. Hopefully that helps. But I think I think I really do think having your own style starts to become a guiding light for you. Excuse me. Rico Swab wants to know 
Have you ever heard of Hector with George with um Joseph Gordon Levitt? I just looked up the trailer for it. Husher. It's H E S H E R. Husher. No, but I love George. Uh, JGL. It's a thriller comedy. Damn. No, I haven't. Read me a read me a premise, would you, Britt? Okay, so. An anarchist takes things up after moving uninvited into the garage of a troubled youth and the kid's father. <laughs> That's it. Okay. <laughs> so it's um uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt, Natalie Portman, oh Rain Wilson, oh um yeah. Color me intrigued. Two thousand ten. Interesting. JGL had rising stock in 2010. What? He was a rising star in 2010, oh. so he was taking on a lot of good projects. Dylan, have you ever won a contest? A painting contest? I have not. I've only... No, I didn't. Just like in general. Oh, no, no, no. Nope. No contest that I've won that I can think of. Have you? Yeah. What? The, the like, Instagram contest? Oh, you won, you won like a giveaway or something? Too. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Oh, my comments. I guess mine was lagging. I could tell everything pop up right now. Mm. Um. Comments. 
Kai Ah, from France. Hello. Hi, what is this? It's beautiful. Howdy, man. He does some uh, mind-blowingly good anime work. Oh, really? So. Cool. Um, Patrick asks, um, have you worked with any wrestlers that are big on sneakers and some wear fashion? Yeah, there's there um there's a lot of big sneaker sneakerhead wrestlers. I know Mosh works with a ton of them. I haven't, I have not. But yeah, he's doing. He does tons of wrestlers. Super cool. Especially, I know he does like a ton of female. Seems like even more female than male wrestlers getting really cool custom Jordan 1s and stuff. Rachel Swab says that <clears throat> Hesher movie is almost super underrated. Mm. Not kid friendly, but okay. thousand percent recommend. I'm gonna add it to the list. Just Melted says hi. Howdy. Welcome. Thank you guys for hanging out with us on this beautiful... Is it really the first day of spring? I actually need you to fact check this because... I, I googled it. Can you... Why does my brain say that the first day of any season is always on the 21st? When? March, March 21st, June 21st, September 21st, and December 21st. First day of spring season, March 19th. Can you Google, is the first day of spring March 21st? And just see what Google says to that. Okay, that's a really, okay. So the northern half hemisphere of spring or vernal equinox. Can, the equinox, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can land between the March 19th and, and March 21st. Okay. Depending on the year. Gotcha. Yeah, so I always thought the, that's what it is. The equinox is on the, uh, the I've 21st. I've never even heard of that. How do you know that? I feel like that was one of those, like, remember you have, like, random posters around your classrooms mm -hmm. that say stuff? Yeah. That's where you got it from? I feel like that was one of those random posters mm -hmm. where it said, like it's just, something that stuck just to ingrained you. in your brain that the equinox is on the... Leroy universe. said maybe because of the leap year, it's set to back a day, maybe. Hmm. I don't know if that's anything to do with it. Hmm. Yeah, I always thought the the twenty first was the equinox, and that was the season change. So this is a lot harder than me for usual guys, because usually when I paint, I I paint like this, but that doesn't work well for a stream, <laughs> and for me to keep the camera. And I'm sure there's plenty of parts where I've probably been out of focus or out of frame. Forgive me. Um, but also painting from much further away is so much harder for me. Oh my god, this is a good, this is funny. Carlos, the masterpiece. How much would Posca need to pay you to paint a pair with only Posca? <laughs> Excuse me, guys. I could not be bought. <laughs> so, funny story. I'm sure uh, any NDAs I've signed are uh, are past. Last year, around the fall, I got reached out to by Postcode to do a uh, 
not directly from Posca, another company that searches talent, all this stuff, and they asked me to do a video for Posca using their markers. And so, um, um, I knew that I couldn't because, um, you know, there's, there's so many times where I, I told people that I just, I think the way that they're used by others, I'm not against the markers. I just think the way that they're used can lead to unwanted results where people paint the entire shoe with the Posca pens. And um, I just think that's going to lead to a, a cracking shoe. So they had said, okay, well, is there anything else you could you would be willing to do with the pens for a sponsored video? And um, we ended up saying that I was going to create, um, how would you describe them, Brittany? Like sneaker like cutouts yeah yeah like a styrofoam yeah sneaker cutout like a silhouette a silhouette sneaker. and we made a, a a video where it was like family diy night or family arts and crafts night and it was my wife and my two kids and we all had these cool cutouts and we all did some artwork on these cutouts with the Posca pens and um yeah it was uh it was cool and I didn't have to um you know go against my word of of saying uh, I told them up front that I I they wanted me to do um a video using them on shoes but you know I had to hold firm on that it wouldn't be right for me to accept money when there's videos of me publicly saying, hey, these should not be used on shoes. So. Yeah, we ended up doing this sponsored video for them. Got paid and everything, and then they ended up... Uh, not even... Uh, wanting to not even using the video unfortunately but i think it was this cool just a little little fun instagram reel tiktok type video of just family arts and crafts night um hey lawyer rodriguez hey john quick question how do i promote my business on instagram so more people buy my shoes I would say try to be on places, uh, on more places than just Instagram. Try to be on TikTok. Try to be on YouTube. Try to be in Facebook groups. Anywhere that you can post your work. It's free, almost everywhere. You know what I mean? So try to be on as many places as possible. And, um, you know, you're your own biggest promoter. And, um... I talked about this earlier in the stream, so there's definitely some playback on it um, with more detail, but try to maximize every project. You know what I mean? If you did one cool pair of shoes, the worst thing you could do is get one Instagram post out of them and just think to yourself, well, I don't want to, you know, bore my followers or uh, feel like I'm posting the same thing over and over. Just try to maximize it and show different parts of the process. You know what I mean? Show the process. Show yourself doing the process. It goes a long way because you just have to, you have to throw a lot of darts at the board and hope that one sticks and hope that you just happen to be seen by somebody at the right time. Sometimes it takes just the right connection to um, completely change your business.
Uh, it kind of looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit more of this. Scarlet red. <clears throat> Need just a drop of chocolate in there. Just a drop. Hey, Leroy says, hey, Dylan, I just wanted to say thank you so much. I had a heart attack in 2022. My goodness, glad you're doing, hopefully doing okay. I'm glad you're still here with us. The doc said I had to find a way to de-stress. I started watching your vids and started my own biz. Underscore heart kicks. Thank you. Very, very cool. That is incredible to hear, Leroy. So glad to hear you found a de-stressor for yourself. And, uh, you know, appreciate you tuning in for the vids. Guys, um, since Leroy did it here... Go ahead and drop your Instagram handles in the chat, and uh, we can hopefully go and check out some other amazingly talented folks and artists here today, once you're done with this, of course. Patrick says, would you consider using Angelus paint markers? I, uh, I have tried them. I just was never the biggest fan of the, um, essentially like the consistency or the flow of the marker. So it didn't really work well for me. Um, I just was never able to get them to like work basically as, as intended. You know what I mean? Even for outlines or for simple stuff it just didn't work um as well as intended really so it ended up just being a bigger headache for me and um yeah but i know some people have had success with them i just haven't had any success unfortunately so i have wanted to um, get good at using markers for a long time because some people make them look super easy but I just haven't found uh, you know I, I thought the Angelus ones might be sort of that that bridge for me but just didn't work out that um, I tried you know I, I, I tried different um, consistencies as well since you have to uh, measure out how much too thin you're using and things like that and um just didn't work unfortunately but i know some people use like postcodes and things for details outlines things of that nature and i think that's where they sort of can really come in handy um but even then i i haven't found any markers that i thought were better than just trying to do it with the paintbrush or um you know a toothpick or anything like that really so That shows no thank you. Let's see. I'm going to stop thinking about me. This is by the way, Eloy is my dad. Oh, my dad's account right now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, you can only read what's in front of you. Patrick says, did you do 
a video in the future for networking. You can call it a sneaker customizer guide to networking. That's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. We appreciate. Yeah, please, <laughs> please. If you guys have other video ideas, stuff that um, you know, maybe you feel like we haven't covered, absolutely. Please feel free to uh, to share with us on topics you think maybe we haven't covered. Um, Kay said, um, Angela's pens were good with dye on Tim's, but other than that, I couldn't get them to work either. Yeah. Same. I don't know, they have fun. Yeah, they're like empty paint markers, and you mix the paint with too thin, and then you no drop it in. Then they Physical they came concept. out like probably seven years ago, but um, I just never, they never became a staple for me. Right, concept phenomenal. Looking cool, now starting to see some of that red, some of his skin come to life. What's the biggest oh no moment while customizing? I once smelt a, a bit of the mesh and an Adidas NMD. Oh boy. Yeah, so I've melted quite a few shoes as well. I melted, uh, burned a hole in the mesh on some roaches, NMDs, um, twice the netting on LeBron 9 Elites with the heat gun. Yeah, I've unfortunately uh, melted a few. Um, I've only ever had to throw away or completely discard one shoe that I messed up. And it was a pair of Kobe 7s, and it was literally like my within my first 10 orders. And um, the customer wanted like the Grinch theme on Kobe 7s, and the base shoe I had was black. So I'm trying to paint this like neon yellow, neon green theme. And um, I was not able to, no matter what I tried. Um, 
because neon paint obviously just wasn't going to work against a black base. You have to do quite a bit of work um, in order to make that happen. Now it would even be difficult, but then with cheaper paints too, I don't even think I had Angelus yet at the time. I was so desperate. I went to buy safety spray paint to try because I was thinking, oh, I wonder if, I don't know what I was thinking, but I gave that a try. And that's when I completely ruined the shoes. And uh, I told my customer, hey, man, you know, unfortunately, I was not able to make this work. I'm going to go ahead and, and buy you a new, uh, new base shoe. And um, we can either switch the theme or if, uh, you know, you're not interested in anything else, no hard feelings, man. That's the only shoe I've ever had to completely throw away. Um, to follow up, is there plastic in the meshing? No. <clears throat> and do you have like a um a specific type of detail brush that you use? I'm using these right now. These are uh, Craft Smart, the cheap Michaels brand that you get in a value pack. You can get like four of these for like five, six dollars. So. Nothing special. Nothing special at all. I'm going to grab a drink real quick. Stand up. <laughs> Get the blood from one. Have you ever tried using different paint? Yeah, so I have um, some Chicard paint, used Alpha 6. When I first started, it wasn't even as commonly known that Angelus was the paint that you should try or consider. So I just started with cheap acrylic paint. So the other day, Brittany and I were at a Costco and <laughs> you guys have probably seen this. Maybe you've tried it. Maybe you've heard of it. But I just want to also put my stamp of recommendation on it. <laughs> as soon as we walk in, we see these Breathe Right strips. And um, Brittany says, oh, you know, you were mentioning these. I'd been telling her for a few months. I want to try these strips at night. They open up your nostrils, prevent snoring, and help mouth breathing and things of that nature. So I tried them two nights now, and they are phenomenal. I uh, see why Alex Hermosi wears them all day, every day. Kind, yeah. kind of tempted to, to do that myself. I had a feeling if I told the story that Brittany would say, who's that, to Alex Hermosi, and for anybody on the internet. He's like this huge... So I don't know what category you put them in business, self-help, um, fitness guru, dude, who's like super rich and just makes uh, really like fast paced, short form content like Gary Vee, you know what I mean? Um, and he's just this absolutely ginormous muscular dude, but he's always wearing the nose strips. Yeah. Yeah. Cheaper than a nose job, I guess. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> I, I highlighted color ways of comment. <laughs> Fasten today. Grinding away right now. It's not usually like this. No. Um, I'm sorry if you can hear me chewing in the background. I was eating peanuts. So. Um. How do you get better at shadow work with anime characters? That is, um, I will have a, a standalone YouTube video probably coming out, I don't know, sometime in the next month on these shoes and most likely specifically talking about that. And that's a lot of what we talk through and, and have been doing today. So I've definitely talked through a lot of um, my process and how to go about it. So I'm going to try to condense a lot of that into a, you know, six to 12 minute video um on these shoes in the not too distant future have you ever worked with um gold leaf on shoes no i have not okay so there's a question um from kemba okay hey bro nice to see you live again one of my future projects is going to include gold leaf okay Do you have any glues in mind that you know would work good for shoes um, and he also had a follow up. I don't know if gold paint can give it that gold shine metal pop I want. What do you think? So, gold leaf, I haven't worked with it since like fifth grade, a Tutankhamen project. Do you, You're so weird. It, do you, it, do you know what the consistency is like, Brittany? Mm -hmm. What is it like? Gold leaf is a very, it, I would, I would describe it like a butterfly's wing. Very fragile, very frail, very easy to rip. So it's not paint? No. Gold leaf is like, it's like little, it's like pieces of foil, but they're so thin and like they okay. crumble very easily. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I cannot say that I know definitively what um, type of glue you should use. I mean, like an incredibly strong glue that people use to choose is something like a barge cement. But would you use that with a gold leaf, or would that not make sense to you? I mean, you you've worked with bar cement. Um, no. No. I with the gold leaf. Uh, it's like you have to put like a. Like a mod podge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over on top of it or below it. Okay. I have a base and then put the gold leaf on top of that and you seal the. Okay. Gold leaf. I don't know if that would be great for shoes. Yeah. Wearable shoes. Yep. Yeah. I don't see that working out too well. Wear creases and bends and all that. Yeah. Yeah. But go, I mean, gold paint can. Do yeah, I mean, you can get pretty good. The Jacquard um, paints are really good. For example, do I have any gold? I think if I had like an all gold shoe. But these Jacquard paints, they have uh, metallic, let's see, is that in focus yet? True gold and solar gold. Those are, um, these are amazing gold paints. The solar gold. Is that like kind of more orangey one? But these are really, really nice. And then you can use, rather than just a matte finish to make them pop even more, you can go with the more glossy finish. So you can do pretty, pretty good stuff with this. But I understand you might be going for the look of a gold leaf. So. <clears throat> um, Misha's back. Had to leave and come back. Love the way the details are popping. Thank you, thank you. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, Andrew, you asked this question earlier, and I was actually looking up some places for you guys. Um, Andrew said, 
Um, talking of food, my wife and I are going to Chicago next month to see Mike at the Chicago Theater. It's a comedian. Okay. Um, any pizza places I should check out while there? Taking the train from Detroit. Ooh, so that's fun. nice. Um, but yeah, my my father-in-law actually just um recommended Pequod's. It's here. I'll put it in the chat how you spell it. <clears throat> P E Q. Yeah. U O D S. Okay, I had it right. Pequod's Pizza. Um, it's they have the best deep dish. Yeah. Oh, which I feel like that's the only kind of pizza you should have when you come here. Um, and then, but if you were looking for like, if you want something safer. Yeah. More common. And there's more locations. You have your Giordano's and your Lumalnati's. Oh, not Giordano's. I don't like Giordano's. Go to Lumalnati's. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. Um, but if you want to risk it for the biscuit and you want to go for the highest of highs, that if I had to bet money on, I would say Pequod's. Um, I would. I don't think they take reservations at Pequod's. No. You have to, they take your reservation in person. Yeah. Like, because usually there is a long wait. Yep. But it is worth the wait. Um, so, yeah, definitely check them out. I was going to tell you, if you were looking for a restaurant, like a sit-down restaurant, um, A Chevelle is really nice, too. Mm -hmm. It's like a higher-end, like, burger place. Um, very good food. Very good burgers. Um, and that was, like, all I could really think about that was near where you're going to be at. So, hope that helps. B B said, um, I've tried the Jaguar airbrush ready paint and it's not bad. No mixing. I just per prefer most of the Angelus colors better. Alpha paint has some decent color changing paint. I've used a lot too. Yeah, um, I think uh I, I would agree, just like with Angelus, I prefer the color selection, no doubt. Um, I just think the like metallics for jacquard specifically, like if you just compare golds, I think the jacquard gold, um, is a little bit more gold than, uh, you know, your Angelus gold and same with their silver. I just like their, their metallics mainly more. Said, I want to try Jack Hard, but I'm a, I'm a brand loyalist and it feels illegal. Yeah, man, it's good to try. It's okay. Yeah. No one has to know. Yeah, no, then <laughs> ain't no one going to be mad at you. <laughs> Angelus won't be mad at you. Right. <laughs> I won't be mad at you. Can you mix um, Jack Hard and Angelus on the same canvas without cranky? Crank Sorry, cracking or peeling? Um, I, I guess it sort of depends on the question. If your question is, can you use Jacquard and Angelus on the same shoe? Or can you mix their paints together? Like, can you mix um, Jacquard red with Angelus orange, you know, um, to where then it might be a different answer? I can't speak on that because I don't know, like, the chemistry or science behind it on why it would be um fine or not fine to do so but um can you use them on the same shoe i would say yes can you mix them together i can't say with certainty if that would be chemically or scientifically a, a no a major no-no or a not big deal Tyler Way said, I'm just hoping Liquid Kit, Liquid Kit comes out with more paint. It's that new chrome they have. It's pretty nice. I actually haven't even seen that. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. 
some good folks that are over at uh, Liquid Kicks. Jeff is the owner. Great dude. Went out with him one time here in Chicago a couple Christmases ago. Nisha, um, have you gotten to experiment anywhere with some of the solar color dust, solar UV shifting dust, since the BCF experiment? Um, I don't believe I've tested any further ones. I have not, um, but I had a ton of fun playing with some of the ones I did last year. There was one, one to me that stood out far and away as my favorite one. Where is that shoe? Uh... There was one that was called like an oil, it was either called oil slick or oil spill. And to me, it was, it created one of the coolest textures, or not textures, excuse me, sort of one of the coolest effects that I had, that I had seen before. Sneaks, custom sneaks. Oh, hey, man. Hey, Dylan. What's up, fam? This custom is looking so sweet. Thanks, dude. Hi, Neeks. And Nisha said, those um, slicks were clean. I love that look. I was just curious if the issue I had with UV changing powder with me or if others ran into the same issue. Oh, what was, uh, what happened to yours? Did she say? No. Was it that the um, UV eventually ran out? That it wasn't as strong? Because I, I know people did mention that. I want to say I saw somebody like reach out to Solar Color Dust, like sort of uh, customer service, and I can't, it might even say in the listing that that is like to be expected. I can't remember, but I I don't feel like I'm making that entirely up. That sounds right, from what I remember. Um, Rico said, "What are your thoughts on shoe trees?" And which ones do you recommend to be owned, Denny? Um, shoe trays. I don't particularly have, um, you know, one that I really recommend or that I use on all of my shoes or anything like that. Um, Angelus, for example, has some. Uh, who else? Rejuvenator has some. So yeah, I can't, uh, I can't say any other brand that I, uh, swear by or anything like that on shoe trees. Um, Nisha responded, it was supposed to be white to charcoal. Okay. And then it ended up cream to brown. 
Yeah, that sounds nothing alike. Huh. I wonder, is there, like, were you maybe working on a different, uh... What type of material was that on, Nisha? She said that she posted a video of in the Discord today. It looks okay, oh, okay. After, after I fixed the white shoe to cream. So it's definitely, it probably has a lot to do with the base, like, you know. Yeah, that's what I was curious. Theory. Yeah. You know, like, I, I the only way I know this is if I want to get chrome nails, like a hot pink chrome nails, and I have to have. A light pink base, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then on top of that, to put the chrome on, that's not Yeah. Idea. Yeah. Very similar for shoes. Like, if you yeah. want a neon, a neon pink, you're best to lay down a nice light pink mm -hmm. base. Whereas that neon pink isn't going to pop on a black yeah. Air Force. Dang, yeah, unfortunately it does sound like there is a little bit of a layer of unpredictability when it comes to those, uh, She said that she did them on some hey dudes. Ah. Those are like the um, staples for dads. Shoe staples. <laughs> the dad shoe of Disney. But it was an experiment, so no harm done. I was just entertained. <laughs> I mean, that's the best way to find out, right? When things, how things are going to work out. Yep. Trial and error. Yep. You know what I just realized? I'm literally sitting here watching paint dry. You got the best job in the world. <laughs> She said, ironically, the brown actually works better for the team anyway. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, so this is from Indian Tartar. I airbrushed an entire shoe the wrong color. Now I'm afraid I have to either get a new pair or use acetone, acetone to take the paint off. The left shoe was supposed to be red instead of blue. Dang. Wow. Oh, we definitely had that happen. So you definitely don't want to just cover it up and paint blue on top of there and whatnot. Um, so depending on, you know, what shoe it is, let's just say, let's just pretend it was a white Air Force One and you did it entirely red or blue. I can't remember which one you said you did which. But um, if you were to acetone all of that off and get it back to a very smeared red so into the white leather. It's supposed no, to be the left shoe was supposed to be red and he painted it blue. Okay, so you painted it blue. It depends on the shade of blue, of course. But, you know, you acetone all that off. Now the white leather is stained very blue. Um, you could absolutely then airbrush the red on top. But what could happen that could hurt you is if when you're acetoning it, you acetone off like into, into the midsole to where you might stain or tint the midsole to where it's no longer a perfectly clean white midsole. And then that would be hard or impossible to touch up or clean up or make look factory again so that's the part where you might really hurt yourself but other than that if you were able to keep it off the midsole you can just acetone off the upper for sure sorry that happened been there yep Uh... 
<clears throat> we have another question for a problem from the interpreter. Um, he said, I've been having an issue with my Patriot Microfiber Airbrush. It's like when I go to change the color in it, every time it acts like it doesn't want to come out fully. Maybe it's a cleaning issue? Yeah. Um, it probably just sounds like you need to run more cleaner through it. Um, once you pour the cleaner inside the airbrush, what you want to do as well is cover up the tip with a rag and backflow um, your cleaner and whatever paint is left inside. Backflow all that together and it'll just make it easier to spray out. So when you do that backflow, you're just, you know, funneling everything together and then mixing it with the cleaner, which is, a, you know, just a liquid water and whatever you mix it with or if you have airbrush cleaner. And um, that'll just make it hopefully spray out anything that you have left behind. And you'll know that you have enough cleaner, um, that your airbrush is clean enough. Once you pour airbrush cleaner or even water inside the gun, can you see the bottom of the cup or can you see the needle um, without it turning into a muddy red or whatever color, muddy blue, whatever you have inside the airbrush? That's how you know you've run enough um, cleaner through there. All right, good there. We got to make this next color a little bit of a darker red. Hmm, we're going to go. Scarlet red. Maybe a little of this terracotta. No. I go chocolate instead. Um we will do a little terracotta. It's got some of that orange in there. And then a little bit of that chocolate. Quite a bit darker still.
Let's see how that works. Um, mm. <clears throat> Charles asks, have you given any thought to finding a manufacturer on Alibaba and branding your own shoe? Um, I have not. Um, in terms of footwear design itself i don't know if that's something i have any passion in i've never been somebody you know i definitely didn't grow up drawing my own sneakers or anything like that um i love sneakers but i've never thought about having my own so it's not something i've just given any thought to i feel like somebody like mosh who you know has absolutely made uh the transition from not only a sneaker customizer artist but somebody who has a really cool shoe as well is you know as far as i know i feel like that's something he's been thinking about for a long time or always wanted to do and i just can't necessarily say the same very cool nonetheless Um, have you tried the glow in the dark paint from Angela? Last time they brought it out, it didn't really have a. It didn't really have a last glow to it. Oh yeah, lasting glow. Oh no, yeah. Uh, no, I have not tried it yet. I do have some here <laughs> that they sent to me, but I have not had a chance to experiment with it yet to test. Uh, you know how strong it is, how potent it is, and whatnot. Haven't necessarily had a theme 
or sure to do it with, so. Maybe those Frankensteins. Maybe those Frankensteins. Geneva is Something that I have to figure out that I'm a little undecided on is how I'm going to achieve um, the glows that's like on the side of his arm there. Because it's not necessarily as simple as just painting, you know, like this lilac color right alongside his arm there. So, even on the, you know, on his purple um, suit or whatever it might be, there's still almost like this glowing purple edge that I'll have to uh, probably get creative with the airbrush. you have one quarter what arcade would you use it on <laughs> what arcade game oh man probably like the uh there's one that was really there's two that come to mind for me that's what the question is right arcade game probably yeah. you think yeah um there was a simpsons one that was like i up to four players that was a really fun one from the 90s and um there was a really cool ninja turtles one as well but i'd probably go with the simpsons one was it like a video game Arcade game yeah. like Marge had a vacuum. I remember. Yeah, I've never seen that. And where, um, where did you play this? This is like, you know, where they literally had it sometimes, like in pizza parlors and oh, okay. stuff. And maybe at you know your your haunted trails or Chuck E. Cheese's, maybe. But I remember it being at a random places like pizza parlors, maybe movie theaters, whatever, maybe the mall. Um. That was that was a cool one. <coughs> How about you? What comes to mind for you? Arcade game. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I don't, I don't really remember ever, Love I, I never spent time in arcades, so yeah. I can't even. Oh, come on. Yeah, no. I don't know. I don't know, does a claw machine count? What kind of prize do you want? Um, like a stuffed animal. Like a cute plush animal or something. And then an iPod Touch? No. The ones that are much harder to win? Yeah, those are probably impossible to win.
feel like that crazy taxi was taxi was an uh, arcade game, wasn't it? Was that an arcade game too? Like you could sit down and like drive. It wasn't just a PlayStation I'm game. Almost positive that you could like sit and like turn the wheel and stuff and play that crazy taxi. Oh man! Can anyone confirm or deny that? Because I feel like that's a real. That was a real. I don't remember. So you're saying like the games where you actually sit and drive, like yeah. there's a steering wheel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm almost positive that Crazy Taxi was one. Hmm. was a PS. No, but I would say it's electronic section of the for my mom shops. Tried out the demos. Oh yeah, they were demos, right? Like it wasn't Where, what is this? What um, is this following up to? Like he would say at the electronic section. Okay. Oh Sears. I Sears. Sears, okay. Yeah. Well my mom shop. Tried out the demos. You know, they would have the Yeah. Man, they don't do that anymore. Where they would have like the game station stuff so you could play like Nintendo. That or was awesome, that. yeah. Oh, because Rico asked, did you have a Pizza Hut that had a PlayStation when you were a kid? Yeah. Not a PlayStation. No, I've Not never Not a PlayStation. Where, where, do you, where do you live? <laughs> where was it? Not a PlayStation. That's no. sick. Patrick said, if you do an update tutorial on the planes, the glow in the dark would be a great thing to use for the video. Ah, that would be. It's funny because Flames is one of those videos that I know is a, a two minute Tuesday. And it's so funny because there's such a weird balance that if I do a two minute Tuesday, almost without fail, I get asked to do a, a long, longer version of it. And if I do just a longer version of a tutorial because I talk so much, it ends up being um, the watch time might get a little screwed up because um, it's hard to keep retention and, and attention as well for, you know, maybe a 12 minute tutorial on something very specific. So there's a very tricky balance to this entire YouTube thing of trying to explain stuff with the most detail and at the same time um, keeping it as... You only want to make the video as long as it needs to be, basically, you know? So, however short of a time you can do that in is going to be the best thing, but there's just a tricky balance to strike with it all. Patrick asked if there's any pickups you're looking to get this year. I think the Black Cement 3s are coming out again. And what's funny is they came out in 2018-ish, maybe. And I still have a dead stock pair from then. But um, I think any time that shoe releases, I'll pick up at least one. Even if it's just to keep... Um, to keep on ice, as the kids say. But other than that, I'm not sure of anything that's uh, releasing that I know I for sure want. Patrick could confirm that that crazy taxi was an arcade game. Oh, it was? Oh, damn. Nice.
Crazy Taxi. That was a lot of fun, man. I actually like Simpsons Road Rage better, but same thing. Same concept. Yeah. You know what's funny about those games? Like, I never actually played the game. I just wanted to drive the cars. I just drive the car. Just drive around the town. Yeah. Did you ever do that? Or did you just, just no, I just wanted to win the game. Oh. Uh, yeah, I actually didn't even know what the premise of I didn't even yeah. know there was a point to the game. Yeah. I thought you could just drive around. Open world, drive around. Yeah. That's funny. Hey, so you should try 10 Minute Tuesday where you give us a normal two minute video, then elaborate for people who want to know more for the last eight minutes. Yeah. Uh, I, I definitely have my share of two minute Tuesdays that have, have gone past the uh, the two minutes. That was the running joke for quite a bit. But yeah, it's, um, it's just a, a tricky balance to try to strike. Frozen one. The overhead thing is frozen. Go to uh, main cam. Do you see my hand at all? Mm -mm. No? Alright, let me unplug the HDMI and plug it back in. Alright, so let's see. What are you saying? It's just like, it's just frozen where you were last there. Okay. Let me just restart it. Maybe it's tired. Camera's been working overtime. <clears throat> Let me try this blue up thing again. You're a soccer fan, correct? You haven't watched Ted Lasso, if so what do you think? I mentioned it all in a week. We haven't watched Ted Lasso. We, a few, quite a few people have recommended that to us. Maybe that's one we need to start, Brittany. Because yeah. I know, I know people have told you even as a not sports fan, you would still like it. I saw you know? clips. I've seen clips of it, okay. and it cracks me up. It seems like it's really funny. So, anything. Oh, sorry, I'm not even... Hold on. Frozen. Go to, um... Here, let me try something. There's like a... Let's see. Oh, my God, camera's at lunchtime. <laughs> it's dinner time at this point. Because my hand was there before, right? Mm hmm Yeah. Are we back? My hand there? Yeah, you're there. Okay. Mm -hmm. My wife could care less about sports and love the series. Okay, good. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe we'll give that one a try. Is that that's an Apple show though, right? I, don't know. I think because we don't have that damn Apple. 
Yeah, we, it must be because I feel like every time the other person's gonna watch, you never see it. Or maybe, Netflix. or maybe it's, it might be Amazon. I guess we'll see. I'm gonna find out where that's from. How are we doing on time? Yeah, Five, oh my god, what the where did the day go? What on earth? I didn't even get close to doing the black line work. We can go for about another half hour, guys. What on earth? Character stuff takes forever. You talk too much. Damn. <laughs> I can't even dispute oh, that. Oh, yeah, it is an Apple show. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. But I just got the week trial and finished it. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, noted. Josh said, I thought you can't paint on the bottom rubber. I do not recommend to do so, Josh. It's, it's ticked off. Josh, right? where is it? Yeah, it's, Josh. It's Josh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so yes, this one, um, this one is colored. Maybe you saw that. Um, there's a black sole here, but the shoe came that way. I can't remember the name of these, like Fusion Red, Jim Fusion. Maybe it's like the name of this colorway. Good base shoe for this. It worked out. A day to remember just announced another tour today, Brittany. Oh, yeah? July 25th. July 25th, huh? What is that? What number of concert would that be if you attended? I don't know. We've been quite a few times. Yeah. But, uh, another band that I know you've heard me listen to a bunch of times is touring with them that, uh, story so far. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It said Northerly Island. We haven't been to a concert there. No. That's the one that's on the lake. Okay. Is it outside? Yeah. It's summer. Yeah. I don't want to go. I'm just kidding. <laughs> When's Paramore going on tour? That's what I want to see. Good question. Why don't they tour together? They're too big. That would be awesome. Oh, no. This one died on me. What is it here? That's my, uh, I guess I could use my phone. Everyone's saying it's lunchtime. Yeah. The devices. I don't know why it's plugged in. Uh, Carlos, this is a, uh, this is a commission piece. This, uh, we actually have the uh, the future owner of them here in the chat too. Super cool. Uh, I saw a question or a comment from uh, Carlos. Let's see, do I think that's dark enough? Do I need to go darker? Mmm, a little darker. Jeff. 
Josh says, I'm about to do a Boston Bruins commission. Two players cut team logo and insides will be a pick of the garden. Good luck, man. That's a cool theme. What kind of uh, shoe are you doing that on, Josh? Ones? Has anybody been here the entire time? Me. Has anybody besides Brittany <laughs> been here and listened to me the entire time? No breaks. God bless you. Does, uh, Brittany, if you go to, I'm curious how long it's been. Yeah. Um, if you go to, like, the studio on the Google Chrome there. I tried to Maybe like in the top left corner, does it say how long we've been going? It says 22 minutes ago, but I got to refresh. Okay. <clears throat> Seven hours ago. Seven hours? Sweet. So Rico has been here since the get, and Carlos said it started three hours. Damn. At the three hour mark. So. Shout out to you guys. <laughs> yep, I'm sure I had to, I had to let him know. Been here since the very beginning. Um, Josh is doing those um Boston Bruins on a. Yellow, black, 1985 Air Jordan 1. So it's been a long time since, Brittany, and, you know, I didn't tell you, hey, I'm going to do this and start a business with it at first, but the first time I told you I was going to paint my shoes for myself, what do you remember thinking, feeling, saying? What do you remember? You want to, when you wanted to paint your own shoes? Yeah. Just read me comment from your dad. He said, pop ahead. <laughs> <clears throat> what do I remember from you painting a first shoe you said? Yeah. Um, can you be honest? Yeah. Like that's for posers? Like that's fake? The first time I saw you painting a shoe, I thought it was fake. I thought it was weird and I was very closed minded about it because I've never seen anybody do that before yeah. and then I thought like well it's not going to last why would you do that you can't even wear them why did you why did you think I wouldn't be able to wear them uh because I just figured like oh like if you they're going to chip they're going to crack okay you thought that right away yeah why because um, I know I knew you were using cheap <laughs> Okay. And obviously, I wasn't thinking, oh, there's a process to this. I didn't like that. Wasn't even on my radar. Yeah. I just figured, I'm like, well, yeah, obviously, duh, you can't paint shoes. Yeah. It's not gonna last. Yeah. Um. You're actually wearing them. Yeah. So, yeah, that was pretty crazy. But okay. they, they ended up looking really good. Hmm. Yeah. For the first time seeing a custom pair of shoes. Sure, yeah, I guess it's first pair like, of I have stuff. nothing to compare it yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, really oh, yeah, cool. you did change the color of them. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fair enough. That's okay, Andrew. You're at work. You're excused. He said he's... Uh, He's, uh, he's catching us on and off while he's at work, but it's oh, really cool. snippets of the progression. Oh, yeah, totally. I'm sure you have been at some points. You're like, dude, barely? <laughs> Still painting purple? I know, right? <laughs> Does he never look? Uh, 
I remember that was hilarious on the Chunky Dunky live stream that people would hop in after four hours and be like, what the heck? The shoe is white still? <laughs> Papa DeJesus, always showing love. Oh, yeah. He gets a big old kick out of it. I checked everything. I think he's in it. <laughs> What a guy. Um, Jay, Josh, I had found a pair of Celtic Celtic kicks I did on Throw Teens like two years ago, I think. Hmm. You might have to refresh my memory on maybe something that might stand out about them, Josh. Trying to get them to come to my mind. Seven hours? I can't believe that, dude. What? I can. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Seven really has, it really hours. Has, what on earth, man? Hours, that is, that's like a school day. Yeah. Why am I so slow, man? Why doesn't this get easier? I think it's because you're not able to hold the shoe how you want to hold it. Yeah. <laughs> How's this look first stream, guys? Yeah, right. <laughs> no, you know what? I um I thought that we would be able to I almost thought we had a big breakthrough. When I was talking with my video editor recently, there were some videos that came out about like Ray Bans glasses and that you could stream with them. And I think they only last so long. I think the quality is only so high. But I was like, pretend my glasses were a camera and I could just stream like this. Oh, my God. That would Game be so changer. glorious. You know? Game changer. That would be so freaking cool. Yeah. One day, we're probably not far off from that. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this. If you'd like to uh, to see more of this in the future. I have definitely wanted to do more of these live streams since uh, our last one. At the same time, me just wanting to provide the most value possible. I didn't want to do just another... Um, you know, theme like the Chunky Donkeys or something where I prep the shoes start to finish. I wanted to do something entirely different, like paint an anime character so you can see, you know, a, a different part of the process. So I could be talking about different things throughout the stream. So that's sort of my own um, pickiness of, of wanting to make sure, you know, I'm able to uh, share a different part of the process with you just to maximize the value that I'm offering. <clears throat> All right, we're good with our dark red color. Let me mix our the GoPro on my head. Yeah, why not? 
Um, looking good. Are we looking good? Josh responded, fuck the shoes he did. He had three old and new parquet flooring on one pill box, a basketball texture on the other, trophy and inside pad mm. for each championship. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sure if I saw them, Josh, they would uh spark spark my memory, but I see. Well, this is a good follow-up question. How many pics and videos of customs do you think people have sent you over the years? Oh, well, I... Millions. <laughs> she's not joking. Millions and millions and millions. Yeah, I so mean... don't be offended, Josh. No. It makes it seem so many pictures no. and, like... No. Of different, you know... I, I Truthfully, hundreds per week yeah. of emails and DMs of people just wanting to show me their work or... Um, receive feedback or or anything of that nature yeah and dylan's got his very best to respond to everybody i do um andrew said he was hoping that you would do another live so uh, yeah this was this was so much fun thank you guys for being here truly a breeze that's why um when i say seven hours what the heck it's it's because I really am enjoying myself. I wish I could uh, stay and do the finish off. Uh, finish off. We we actually are, even if it doesn't, it may not seem like it, considering we started with purple, red, and white, and we still have purple, red, and white there. I truthfully am very near being able to do the uh, black line work, which is, you know, essentially the last part. We haven't done a uh, a side by side in a little bit, um, Brittany. Could you please guide me on that? Maybe pulling up the uh, side by side with the character and just showing where we're at. Uh, yeah. Sorry, this one, right? I I, I can't see. Oh, I thought you. Because mine's like twenty seconds behind. Okay. Um, you want it? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, you guide me on. Should I? Lower the okay. shoe, higher the shoe, good? Yeah. Okay, so you can see we have uh, three different colors for our cell shading for the purple. Um, two different darker purples, then this color is the base that we originally had, a lighter color here. We have two different colors of our reddish-orange so far. Oh, I got an idea. Are you able to, like, tap on, and I'm not sure what it says, but, like, the character, mm -hmm. and maybe make it bigger? So I can make them really big and side by side. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Am I too high or am I good? No, okay, cool. Um, so what we have left is, pull it up so I can see as well. For the gloves or wristband up, that he has, lift it up. Yeah. Okay. Like, not like that, like you can't see the gloves. Oh, I see what you mean. Perfect. I see what you mean. Yeah. Um. For the gloves, I have to do two different shades of sort of this mist color. We've got to go create sort of like the mid-tone and the shadow. And then right now what I'm working on is right here on his, I'm going to say his bicep. I need to create that lighter shade of this reddish orange. And here's where we're at so far with that. All I did so far was mix in a little bit of um, white from his regular skin color. I'm gonna see where that's at. It feels like it's gonna need a little bit more orange or yellow. It doesn't feel like just a lighter version of that.
You must have jars and jars of custom colors. I do. Misha said, um, there's definitely value to your lives. I think it's a great reminder for many that it does take and fast take time. And it's okay to be patient because I know some of us, me, I'm some of us, I uh, well, <laughs> think we're being stupid slow. Yes. Well, thank you, first off, for the very kind words. Greatly appreciate it. And I could not agree more. Takes time. Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah, because like you could just like post these shoes as soon as you're done, and it's like, like oh, it's just them up and not taking any time. I can't believe we have like a finished pair in front of us, you know. And I mean, just uh, like how cool for. This is definitely not the case for most people, but how cool in this exact situation for for the first time in my career, that my customer is, you know, my client is getting to see them made. And hopefully, he'll be able to, um, I mean, he's a super cool dude that I've chatted with a bunch, but he'll be able to have a, a different level of appreciation for these shoes, I believe, because he gets to see how much went into them, you know? Josh said, uh, ye old toothpick. I've used single tattoo needles as well. Interesting. Oh, uh, yeah. I use, um, airbrush, spare airbrush needles all the time. Where does one purchase tattoo needles I'm, from? I'm curious if a tattoo needle is, uh, um, maybe even sharper or something, or would even be a better sure. tool. So they're going to be babies for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, buddy, man. Almost in your hands. I'll be done with them this week. Sure about that? <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm undecided on what I want to do for, uh, like, how I want to photograph them and stuff. Because part of me loves just going to capture them in some real world setting, some type of cool gravelly texture background. But there's another part of me that really enjoys like a just a clean studio shot where I can change the pick whatever color background I want and things of that nature so I'm a little unsure um Rico said I'm gonna DJ Khaleesi because he hasn't seen the video before. yeah he, he has he sits courtside at NBA games yeah. and he brings a pillow for his shoes no he doesn't yeah so does his, his shoes well they're for when he's sitting his shoes aren't touching the floor Huh? Yeah. Wait, so how does he does he walk in with different shoes? I can't remember if he changes or or if it's just meant to be funny and be a DJ Khaled joke. Um oh, that so his awesome. shoes I can't remember if he changes them or if he'll actually walk with them, but he has shoe pillows. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> only DJ Khaled, man. He's a character. I guess he got it like that. Yeah. He got it like that. Okay. There's not that, there's not an overabundance of these reddish highlights that I have to do. <clears throat> he said, look him, um, look up him in Miami. He has people carry him to the stage. What? Oh, okay. That's bananas. His feet don't touch the ground, eh? 
lost touch with reality, I guess. That's for sure. All right, I definitely feel like there's a tint of, gosh, I'm going to, I'm going to add, I'm going to put some yellow in there. Line that up. Oh, there we go. That yellow. That yellow was the trick. Let's get a little more of that. So I think when I was starting out, for example, a, um, I'm not going to call it like a lazier version, but just a simpler version of doing cell shading and character work like this would be something like taking the purple skin, the not skin, but the purple color that I had, you know, for my foundation and then just creating a lighter and darker version by Maybe mixing in just black for the darker version and mixing in just uh, white for the lighter version and being good to go from there. And you can achieve highlights and shadows like that, just mixing in white or black. And, um, you know, that's definitely how I started because, you know, without knowing color theory, without being super familiar with color mixing, you know, that's just how I would go about it. But as you start to really fine tune things, you can say, okay, even though I'm creating a highlight color of this right now, of this being the original skin tone color, even though I'm creating a, a, a highlight version of that color, I'm not going to just mix in white. It's actually a little bit more yellow. Just And it, it's not a matter of, well, what do you think it might be? It's a matter of, um, well, what is the reference image telling me? And just when I look at this image... When I look at the skin tone versus the highlight color, to me it doesn't look like it's just a lighter version of that color with white mixed in. I can see it's slightly tinted. And um, so that's why I added in a little bit of that yellow. It ended up working. I wasn't sure if it was yellow or orange that I needed, but I tried the yellow, liked how that looked. And we're looking good from there. All right, this coat here is going to be my final final one for the day. And I'll give you guys a, a nice close-up to share where we are leaving off. I'm going to try to get really close as I paint these little dots right here. And you can see the old color versus the new color with a little bit of that yellow added. Is it in focus? Are you able to see? Yeah? Okay. It's a weird angle for me to paint it, so I might be going outside the lines. But just that yellow there. That made a big, big difference. All right, I'm going to show a 
share a close-up of where we are leaving off with Janimba. Hopefully I'm saying that right. <laughs> but looking good. Really just have to do, he doesn't have a ton of expression on his on his face besides um, his eye. I'll try to uh, show you here. Yeah, thankfully his uh, his face is, is very, very simple. Just need to get his eyes in there. And he's looking good. He's looking good. I'll show you the other side. Got Gogeta here. Just got to do touch-ups on his hair and his eyes as well. And then I'll show you on the other shoe where we have Vegito and Boo. The two shoes together. Thanks for joining, Josh. See you next time. One, two, and that's where we are leaving off today. Can you switch to uh, just webcam, please, and thank you. Thanks, proper behavior. We're good. We're on that uh, one. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us for another uh, special edition episode of DCF Live, where we just painted uh, a character here for the last seven plus hours. We got pretty far along. I was not able to get to the black line work, but um, I will have a separate standalone video on these, which is going to be condensing a lot of the things that we talked about today into a more uh, nicely wrapped package and just showing the final results of these. So make sure you stay tuned for that. We will also be having our course recap video coming up very soon for the next uh, or for the previous DCF experience where we'll also be announcing the dates for the next one. That should be coming. That video will be coming soon. And then our next course is likely probably going to be somewhere maybe two months from now, maybe May or June, something like that. That's when we're uh, shooting for our next one. So hopefully we're able to catch some of you guys there for that as well. And uh, I just can't say thank you guys enough for, for tuning in hanging out with me today. A big thank you as well to my amazing wife, Brittany, for producing the entire show, making sure that everything went nice and smooth, switching the camera angles constantly, and uh, really just being here for me. So thank you guys. Hopefully everybody has a great rest of your day, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank See ya. You